At this point, we can see how many people have fallen on the battlefield, their shields are broken, swords were used to the point that they were destroyed right when they were used. Everywhere is devastation, constant cracks in the ground, as well as corpses and blood. The people who survived shouted that if the monsters broke through themselves, then they were all just finished, that the wounded should be carried to the rear as soon as possible, because if they didn't do anything about it, they would definitely lose. They were sure that the monster would be too much. The girl who finally opened her eyes realized that they were doomed, that in the end they were only waiting for death, but the man who treated her said that there was no need for such a depressing atmosphere, because he was nearby, so they would definitely not discard their skates while he was there, he asked they look at the fact that they heal early, but the girl, turning away from him, said that she was not talking about that at all, that isn't it obvious that they are just all going to die here. Our, apparently, main character, look at the monsters said that the monsters are actually really themed, but even in spite of all this, he is sure that everything will be fine with them. The girl started shouting, saying that the guy is the highest rank, is it really not clear that this is his death milk? But he will be left alone, but he is only a healer, nothing more. The characters, turning away from her, and also looking at the monsters, said that of course it's also, that he's just a healer. But where is he going? Why is the girl now looking at how he looks at the monster, is he really going to go against them in battle? The girl asked him to turn on his head so that he would not commit stupid acts. Taking my hand, I told him that he understood all the risks of his actions, that everyone was worried about him, but he didn't need it, because he was definitely not an easy target, and also that there was no way he wouldn't leave them there and die, so I asked everyone to wait until he was ready to deal with all the monsters. An aura began to gather around him, and he said that he would be back soon. There were footprints on the ground, everyone was looking at it, and he just had it all go ahead, everyone came back to him, and also asked, is this really the same young? Everyone thought that he was dead, that he was probably dead, but it was already too late. Even the main character who jumped into the thick of the monsters started to cut her head off in the very second, no one believed it at all, they thought that he was just an ordinary healer. But his abilities were too high back in 2032, the world changed beyond recognition. People appeared in the spheres, a completely new generation of people. Someone even called them heroes who were called upon to rid the world of evil, and someone really could not understand where they came from. Their capabilities were beyond human comprehension, and the goal was to clear the dungeons. They did not imagine themselves so, someone just hunts monsters, or simply put, hunters. In turn, they represented a whole world that was parallel to the earth. In my opinion, everything in the dungeons is an integral part of the hunter's life, because the creature from there is the main source of their income, and for humans, monsters were a source of problems. Already, monsters appeared suddenly, such as magma beasts, or other elements. They were staying at the portal that connected the dungeon's ground. And in the past, ordinary people without the ability had no chance against them, it seemed that now the earth is doomed, nothing can save it. That's what many people thought, they ran away from problems, one way or another, they died, but that was before the hunters appeared. As soon as the hunters appeared, they immediately began to fall on the head of the monsters, destroying them. Their goal was to hunt, and not count the population, this was their problem, but nevertheless their help was very useful, and for ordinary inhabitants they quickly became heroes, who also became their saviors. However, for our hero, then all these global changes, the hero did not start anything. At one point he came to the doctor, as usual, for appointments, but the doctor told him that he had an end-stage disease. Our character didn't understand what it was, he asked again, but only then did he realize that he was terminally ill, and any day could be his last. He was returning home by minibus, closed off from the whole society, on his whole body there were spots that were definitely not typical of people. At one point, his sister called him, he picked up the phone, where she asked if he had been to the doctor. Even the main character replied that he had just visited him, that he was on his way home. He replied that he was already near his train station. Sister sent him to say that she called to say that she was going to be late at work today, that they were sorry, so that if he didn't wait, then he should eat himself. He was clearly unhappy with all this, he was unhappy that his sister was constantly driving herself to this that she'll soon just die of fatigue. But the nurse said that everything was fine, that she could handle it, so that he wouldn't worry, but what did the doctor say to him? She is the main character, it is clear that most likely all the countries will want his problems answered that the doctor did not tell him anything special, but we understand that the terminal stage is something very bad. The doctor understood that this disease in our main character is simply unknown to science, that every cell of his body seems to be saturated poison, it's just amazing that our character was still alive up to that point. Our main character's hands were shaking, his voice was shaking, he asked the doctor if he had any chances at all, and it all happened very suddenly. But the doctor looked a little at the floor and said that unfortunately this was all, which clearly made it clear that most likely this disease he simply could not be cured. As soon as our overcoming eats hung up, 
he couldn't figure out how to tell his sister all about it. But what surprised him the most was that now the people around him started acting strange. They started looking at each other, they thought they couldn't figure out what to do. Everything was actually true, because now it was clear that judging by the notification in the phone, the opening in a row was recorded right in the very areas where our main character was. These people had been gone for a long time, people just got used to the fact that they were not there, but now it was really bad, because as soon as our protocol officer looked out the window, he noticed a huge monster. All the people in the car realized that finally, they didn't know what to do there. But it was too late, because the monster with its tongue pierced the window and then killed several people. This language immediately rushed through our main character. Everyone was horrified, because this language just passed through a person. The dead body fell to the ground. Many people started shouting and trying to get out of the bus. They were in a pee panic. But now we are transferred to the sister of our main character. She was asked to finish and all for a break. The sister replied that now she will quickly finish the same run. She said that she admired her, even though she said it all of a sudden. But usually girls her age were more busy with dating and entertainment, and she was working overtime to pay her brother's hospital bill, and that she felt really sorry for her. The sister, despite all these words, began to smile, saying that all this is as simple and bad as it seems, just her brother is the only person to whom she can worry. The girl started to smile, saying that family is really all they have, so even if the world is against them, the family will always be on her side. But my sister wasn't listening to anything anymore, she was arranging something, her smile fell off, she also dropped her coffee, the woman asked what was wrong with her. But now it was clear, because on TV they started talking about how in the area where Seong was brother opened the gate, immediately her mood changed, and she began to worry a lot. By that time, our main character was trying to get out of the bus, horror was also evident on his face, he thought that he would not succeed, because he simply could not get out, tentacles, or the monster's tongue grabbed him by the leg. He knew that the monster was strong, but who was he kidding anyway, he was doomed from the start, but where are you even these hunters that people were talking about? After looking at the phone, he noticed that the nurse constantly writes to him, but our character only asked for forgiveness, he wanted to pay back so much for everything that she did for him, but it goes without even saying goodbye. All he could do now was stare at the monster that was trying to invite him. All he can do is bite his elbows at his own helplessness, he just can't sit around waiting to die. When he took the glass, he thought that those who died in battle with monsters were awarded a medal, and their families were paid an allowance. That's the last thing he can do. He immediately took the glass and started shouting at the bridge, telling it that if it wanted to eat it, then it should go over and eat it, while calling the monster Rusty. He knows that this will be his last gift for his sister. The monster immediately ran into him. He again slept a huge tongue and all in the direction of our protagonist. Our character is basically air, now he was hanging right over the monster's basia, saying that the monster just doesn't deserve such a tin can. It can't just live and eat who it wants, but what about all the people it killed, what will happen to them? But not for long did the monster have to have fun, because now our main character immediately jumped into his stomach, while holding the same piece of glass in his hands, flying over the monster's body, he also stuck glass in his eye. But what happened at all? Did his attack actually work? Why did the monster just stop making noises? But that wasn't really the case, and all our main character did was just make that thing even angrier, as he watched the tentacles wrap around his arms and then his body. What had he even hoped for? Did he really think it would help a bit? He just hoped that the from the association would at least give his sister some money, but the frog immediately devoured him, and he immediately ended up in his stomach, thinking about how he spent his life, thinking that everything was for the best, because his life was meaningless anyway. He was sorry, but the last thing he saw were those memories of his sister. He thought about how his sister had always looked up to him and supported him, but why did this happen at all? Why did it happen like this? Why exactly he deserves all this? At that moment, he realized that he did not want to die. His heart began to beat too fast. Something happened, and the frog simply tore up. In place of the frog, only the body of our main character lying down remained. At this point, we can see the report from the scene of the parade, which opened around 12.30. In this case, it was simply unprecedented, because not only did this sudden catastrophe entail significant destruction, but the head also allocated a special task force to take this situation under control. All the forces were focused on protecting the population from monsters, but how do people feel about the Glory Guild in general? Many people say that you can rely on them, that their life has become calmer, many were sure that they were protecting them from monsters, that these guys know their business, thought that they deserved the title of national heroes. The head of the guild expressed his condolences to the affected citizens and their families and made an official apology. At the same time this head of the guild made an announcement that first of all he apologizes to all those who were lucky enough to be in the affected area that they are making every effort to resolve the problem as soon as possible, so please take shelter in a safe place and not go outside. At this moment, we could see the sister of our main character, 
who was rushing through the region through tears. Then the head of the guild said, through a smile, that their guild glory will be famous, that it will be famous for something that will always come to the rescue. At one point, our character finally woke up, but did not understand what was happening, because he saw that he was definitely swallowed by a monster, but why did he survive? He knew that he was very dizzy, his ears were ringing, and he could hear a voice behind him, but could it be his sister's? He thought it was all hallucinations, and two distinct ones, but it was definitely a voice. Of course, he had no idea what had happened, but he was pretty sure his sister was somewhere nearby. He started shouting that it was too dangerous, so decided to find her as soon as possible. He ran to the head, which all the throat was trying to call him, trying to find him. I thought that my father would probably take it there, but as soon as I looked there, I noticed that there were a lot of monsters, which is going to be a huge pile. She thought that she should run, but just as she was about to step back, she stepped on one of the pieces of paper, which attracted the attention of the monsters. She immediately started hurting the monsters while shouting loudly. She prayed from the side that she needed to get faster, but it wasn't enough. It couldn't be that the road was destroyed now, but did she die there now? Did she die alone? She couldn't figure out if he'd managed it, made it, or even if he was still alive. But then I realized that I can't give up, that she should drag him to save, even though now the monsters were jumping right at her, the toad almost ate. Already opened his mouth, but now our main character appeared, who immediately began to feed the toads, and also throwing them aside. He was clearly complaining about the fact that the glory guild didn't show up at this time, so he took one of the beams as a weapon. Now, as well as a person, quite ordinary. It was an uneven fight, but John was sure of his victory in the first place, the Dark Toad were weak, their strength was not physical superiority. Secondly, he found out that he was stronger, he didn't understand why he was confident, but he knew for sure that he really felt different after waking up stronger. He knew that the last thing was that he was getting excited. It all started out as a simple curiosity, because the poison of the Dark Toads was quite powerful, so he should have died right away. But instead of dying, the damage on his body suddenly began to heal itself, so then he realized something that he hadn't imagined. He was smiling now, looking down at his hands, knowing that now the F couldn't do anything to him, because their yak didn't work on him. That was enough, the toad still had a lot left, but if he continued to crush them one by one, then victory would definitely be his. However, by the time our protagonist relaxed his guard, a huge toad appeared behind him, which immediately threw him aside. The whole country started to worry, she asked the toad not to touch his brother, but it was too late, now our character was near the wall, he just felt sorry for him, he understood that he had passed out again, that something had happened. However, all he could see right now was the large toad that was positioned in his eyes. He was lucky that he didn't die right away, but now he could see his sister trying to hold on. Our character asked her to run away, directly to him, so that he would help her, but the sister told him not to go to her, because there was no need to save her, he just needed to run away. The sister, looking at how the paw of the same monster is now rising in her direction, turned to her brother, asking for forgiveness. It was getting late, and now there was a huge drop of blood in the cloud. Someone like her, who was so selflessly cared for by fellow humans, shouldn't have died like this. She's the main character, running up to her started asking her woke up, gets up, because did she really choose to fight because of him, why did she choose all this? He started talking about how he was going to die soon anyway. But what is this? What is this purple snake? Why did it come out of his body? But we already did not care. If this snake can kill all the most monsters that were around him, then he agreed to everything. He also ordered these snakes to kill this toad, which he immediately did with me, piercing me right in the stomach while our protagonist asked to burn him in hell. At this moment, there was a woman sitting on one of the publications that he was watching the whole battle with, and she said that this imp that she was watching now was clearly good, because who would have thought that he could summon that very scarlet viper? All she could think of was that this kid was very visible, but it would be better for him to hold back the force, because there would be a real hunt for him if they found out, but they shouldn't help him, because he was barely coping. By then, a lot of monsters immediately surrounded him, they were bigger, stronger, more and more of them with each passing moment. He knew that he couldn't die, or rather let his sister die, because of someone like him. After all, she was the one who risked everything for him, their sacrifice would definitely not be in vain, he would definitely come back for her. Our protagonist, putting his jacket on her body, began to walk towards the monsters. His breathing was weak, he couldn't stop, the monsters around him were making it impossible to escape, he had no choice, he would have to fight if his sister survived, he would have to worry about what would happen to him. So he immediately headed towards the monsters, while assuring himself that everything would work out. But how as soon as he tried to take one of the punches, he immediately started coughing up blood, is this really a side effect from the snake he summoned? Why did he show up now, why did his body just not move? Because at least he should have tried. All he was looking at was the tail of one of the snakes coming straight at him, and he was hoping that he would be able to survive, at one point. 
the same woman who stopped the monster's attack appeared, saying that the imp was just too much, because why exchange such a powerful ability for small fry? She said that just such an amount of black ether is fraught with consequences, while looking at it, introducing herself as Kirill. She said that she would like to chat with him again, but first they need to clear the way, she asked not to get upset, while immediately taking him by the scruff of the neck and threw him aside, said that he should attract next to his side. She is the main character, Despite her realize that this girl just took and easily threw it with one hand, she was definitely not normal. But now she saw that this girl was rushing across the field with incredible speed while mocking those very monsters. She, climbing on their bodies, began to mock them, constantly striking and then dodging. She'd talked about how these monsters reeked of weakness, but had they really lost sight of her? As soon as she said that, she immediately rose up on top of the toad's head and then delivered such a blow that the monster simply tore apart in one blow. This huntress was of the highest class, definitely not less, she was very strong. She also began to envy the main character, he also wanted to, because it was a shame this strength would be enough to protect a loved one. The girl who had been fighting us for a second immediately appeared right behind him, asking him why he was so cast, is something wrong? Our protagonist asked her what she really meant, because everything is so simple. But the girl, looking at him, said that his sister would survive, that Tom should not worry. Our main character looked at her with hopeful eyes, but the girl continued to say that the sister was lucky, Newman heals, or she would have died already. It was precisely these words that his sister would survive that were not just a joke, not even the scars were left behind. Who would have thought that battle hunters were able to heal, it was just unbelievable. This girl was just incredible, she saved not only his life, but his family. Our protagonist immediately burst into tears, thanking her for saving his little sister. But the girl of course asked why he didn't let her go, behaves as if he himself has one foot in the grave. She asked me to look at his pug, maybe enough drama already. Our main character didn't understand what she was trying to make him think, but the girl said or whatever, that he was making her repeat herself, saying that he would still survive, so that he wouldn't worry. However, they should be here to chat as soon as they are dealt with by monsters. He also asked her to stop, so as soon as the girl turned to look at him, he also gave her a question. She same protagonist said that if it's true that he will survive, then can he become as strong as her? His face regained a better hope, he said that he got it, that life passes him by, that all he does in this life is just hiding a point, smiling said that if he wants to become so much, that is now the salon teacher will show, she wants to show him her only one an ability that she can control, huge storm immediately admitted, it's not clear what it was made of, whether it was lightning, or poison vapor, she said that this is the level to strive for, now it was clear that this rain was very strange, the hunters were strong, it seemed that this was a well known truth, but he had never seen such an overwhelming force, because someone simply took off all the monsters with a wave of his hand. Rain, which resolved all the monsters around, getting rid of all of them at once. But can he also? Of course, the girl assured him that he could, that he would become the greatest hunter in the world. By this point, we can see that our main character is hanging upside down, while turning to his teacher, asking constantly if he will die. The teacher first asks him not to call her so formally, they will ask him to switch to you. Of course, he was still scared, because he could see that there were many daggers flying right in front of him, which clearly scared him. A few seconds later, as soon as it was over, his teacher was laughing very hard, although our main character actually thought that he was going to die. The boss continued to tell him that he had warned him that he would not die, while wiping away her tears of joy. At the same time, he said that he wanted to stuff him with this, this is called black ether while attracting a certain sphere to him. Our character didn't know what it was, he was obviously surprised, but the girl said that it was a black fira, because if he didn't know what it was, then he hadn't even heard, but did he hear anything about dealers? Of course, he had heard about them, because they are quite famous, they are a class of hunters who are considered the best of their time. After one incident they did not disappear from sight for long, now people despise them, enemies of humanity, or traitors, but he did not miss anything. But at the same time, our main character realized that most likely one of those villains was standing in front of him, but she said that it was quite a long time ago. Our character started waving his hands and said that he didn't want to mean anything, but the girl told him not to worry, not that he was wrong. Of course, she could see that it shocked him a little, but was it really not scary at all? At this point, we could see that the sister of our main character was lying in another room, completely whole. She still saved him, as well as his sister. At first, he thought that she was crazy, I mean, compared to other people, I mean, other hunters. He asked for forgiveness, because he thought that he was hurting her, but the girl just said that there was really nothing in it, and even a little pleasant, because the very people to whom she went they actually consider themselves simply abnormal, it would be better to say just special, their originality becomes apparent when they fully awaken, is he hinting? 
Of course, our main character didn't understand what she was talking about, so he just said believe her, this is something he doesn't want to know. It's just that usually hunters die extremely rarely when they wake up, the mortality rate is less than 1%, very low, at that time, they lie like Mo just like her, while the point is awakened and the reasons are always the same. Poison is constantly synthesized inside each such person. They get worse and worse, there is no money, and when the concentration I've reached this certain point, then they just explode, this force rips apart the host's body. Our characters, looking at her, said that most likely this is exactly what is happening, but the girl started laughing, said that he quickly grasped the point it turns out that all this time he felt, all this pain that he went through was just everything then he woke up. She congratulated him, and now he belongs to the same class as her, he was handsome, in short, he was the best, someone was being born now, he was very surprised, but now it was too late, because the girl took her hand and said that now we need to do business, and more precisely, for a short walk, they went out on the roof, where she began to say that as she said, but inside everyone like her, poison is synthesized, but now the question had to be asked, how do they live with it? She replied that I was shooting them at the same time, and now she asked her to excuse me, while throwing. Before that, first the delivery syringe hit directly in the chest of our main character, and she said that the power of healing poison exceeds all reasonable limits. So you just had to imagine how he sleeps he eats and all that, and the healing power is active all the time, no matter what he does. There's no way to get rid of them, but their bodies have adapted. Every second they neutralize the poison, spinning it into a black ether, but is it really safe? The girl said that this is all true, and also that she has a gift for her new student. She thinks that the second one can nail him a little, but still thought for a long time what is missing and decided to start with mobility, although he lacks confidence. But this is another time, so, she still admitted that this is half a lecture of his own black ether. So as his trainers she will show everything. She first said that you need to do a little first. Then I was pushed a little. I said that as she didn't say that what was sent was that one unique skill of hers. Of course, the girl was a little shocked, but then immediately left the answer. She left it so quickly that everything he found the protagonist showed that he became even cooler. She had just incredible skills, but still screwed up somehow. Now, as soon as our character is already tired, he said that how can he do this without any physical training? Do you really have to think that he is so strong? The girl, as soon as she came up to him, asked, so what is it? Can he try it first? And then he will be steamed at the expense of all this. What if it turns out that this is all easier than ever? But our main character was only upset even more. He said that girls are much easier to talk than him. He said that she is just incredibly strong. She does not understand how he feels at this moment. Many people have told him that all this time he was a moron of a downtrodden kind, a geek of fatherlessness and all that, he only heard all these words in his life and know that it sounds like an excuse, but still he is just corny scared. The girl at that moment told him that she was wrong, this style of training really does not suit him, she should have taken all this into account, but from that moment on, she told him that he would prepare hard, even the main character did not understand what she was talking about, but the girl said that the most important thing in it is his emotions. She began to take him by the scruff of the neck and said that he should concentrate on the very tips of his toes, and then direct all his strength and emotions there. She immediately pulled him right over the precipice, while our main character said that it was no longer funny. But the girl continued to look at the sky, she said that you are a great day to separate again, and just took and let go of her hands. She said that if he didn't come out, he would just die. All she said was that he should try to push off the wall and jump to the next high-rise building. But it was easier said than done, he knew that he would just be smeared on the ground if he didn't do something. That he should at least try, he also started concentrating on his toes, concentrating over and over again, he got a moment before a lot of voices started popping up in his head. They said that he was a f that they felt sorry for his sister, that he would have fallen out long ago if he were here, and so on, that he was just a useless piece. As if he was getting how he was born, maybe first he will try, and then he can steam later. It was these thoughts that now appeared in her mind, she had a strange aura on her feet, but clearly angry, but still he managed it despite his tears. How do we land now? The girl who was next to him said that he did a good job, but he insisted that it was impossible, but it was not so difficult. She gave him her hand now, and then came back to her room and said that everything was so much easier when someone's life was at stake. Immediately, the teacher began to peer at our main character, which caused him incredibly strange uncomfortable feelings, could she take her hands off him? But it was already too late, the woman continued to dig into his eye, clearly continuing to push more and more. Our main character asked us to let go, asked us to just talk, I think that the teacher went nuts, but in fact the teacher just wanted to test her invention, or something that was in her eye, something strange, and a little later we realized that this is a prototype device of the very class that we need, which now belongs to our main character, 
Just a portable device, however, isn't this a passing technique that is used by this hunters. This feature allows you to register a new user, check the capacity, confirm that a living organism belongs to those very rare people, and also synchronize with the user's body. The girl said that everything is true, but this device is different from all that others use because the Glory Guild may have never seen such a device before. They thought that there was an attacking type, mining type, collecting type, lenses are divided into types that have characteristic abilities. That turns out to be a very useful item, but can't you really pass it along in a normal way? Whether the girl in front of him was going anywhere because she was clearly in a hurry. The girl sighed a little and said, while closing her eyes, that our character has quite a high class, that he noticed everything. She replied that it was true, that he had noticed everything exactly like that, because she was actually being followed, that is, it would be hot if she was discovered, she immediately turned around and said that she did not have to linger. Our characters, after thinking, also repeating these words to themselves, thought a little, and the teacher, I went to him and ruffled his head a little, told him to find Dr. Jin. She said that he was the genius who still needed to be looked for, as well as her companion. He's the one who keeps him up to date. The device will help you find it, so you just need to follow it. At that moment, the teacher held out something in her hand and said that it would be her last gift for her new student. At the same time, she placed a sphere in his palm and told him that that was really all. She even thought that she was finally able to give him everything she wanted, and then, after talking to him, she also said that it was time to say goodbye to them. But why does he always pursue such a person? She's the main character, turned to her and said that this is the first time someone else is taking care of him, which he is very grateful for. He just didn't understand why she would go so far for someone like him, but one thing he was sure of was that one day he would pay her. She's someone she owes her life to, so if she doesn't mind, even if he has to work hard, if it helps her, then he'll do anything. But the woman came back without a smile and said that this was all not true, that it was not worth doing this, because it was too early for him to think about helping, he first needed to gain strength. Strong enough to keep from falling into despair at the sight of his enemies, just as strong as he was, because strong enough to protect every single one of his own, that was what she had asked he to promise. She is the main character, looking at her, and also in his fist said that he promises to fulfill all her requests, which made us very happy. At the same moment, the woman started to highlight I boy's legs said that looking at his expression, she believes that he will succeed, she was now abroad, free as the wind. Her last words were that if fate was kind to them, they would definitely meet again in an instant of the body and all the outline of the girl disappeared. Those were actually her last words. Now, in his life where there was nothing, even she was gone, but now there was a purpose. Of course, by that time, a lot of news had been raised in the world, some areas are now, and another one was successful. People started to clash, and why the Glory Guild only saves those who have money, the townspeople were clearly furious. Naturally, because of what had happened, the criticism of the Glory Guild was gaining momentum. Especially strong are the fires that broke out on the internet. People are silent that now they will definitely not escape responsibility. They did not believe that in their world the rich always live and the poor die. There was a huge incredible amount of malicious comments. A few days after the incident, people started supporting the people of fame again. After a few more days, the criticism disappeared completely. It was some kind of nonsense with me. There must be a limit to the D that one person can give out, our character thought, while going outside. And then leaving the letter to his sister went off somewhere. He saw that very handed him a strange thing, but what is it anyway? Of course, it looked like a monster core from the outside, but then how to use it? After looking at it, he immediately found the name, it was called. Of course, the teacher said to hold him and remember how he felt when he used the poison step, so it's worth a try. After activating this sphere, something started to happen, the core entered his body. The status of the black core was changed, the level of ether rose by 37 and then even to 100%. The user's level of black ether has increased significantly, with a total of 1,500 energy consumed, and the absorbed ether can be used to strengthen the body. Our main character understood that the level of ether had increased, meaning he still needed to absorb ether to become stronger, but in that case, I wonder how strong he is now. The system immediately told him that he was almost the weakest hunter right now, but if he continued to consume such a large amount of black X and then managed to accumulate the required amount, who would be able to obtain a body that matched an S rank hunter? But can he really become the strongest hunter in the world? He believed that the girl was right, but once he thought about it, he noticed a noise with a strange one. He heard a huge man shouting at some girl with a child, telling her that he was already tired of repeating that he was forbidden without passes. The woman couldn't believe that there was now a roadblock without warning, that her child was sick, once the citizens got there should be a priority. As generally guys like them have the right, they haven't even been correctional. But as soon as she said this, this man was just incredibly angry. He told the girl to close her mouth if she didn't want him to break her through the point of the child. Also the girl was very scared, 
but the man kept saying what people from above say, and she should do, that she will take responsibility if she poisons or infects other people. Clearly, the man liked beggars who thought only of relying on others. Now our protagonist approached this man, said that he had never seen such a thing before, that they were not only against this place but also against fate, so as not to dirty their hands when the gate was opened, and now they want to save face. At the same moment, the man turned his head in the direction of our character, where he saw just his. Our protagonist went on to say that the guys themselves said they didn't know anything when dozens of people were dying here, but now they've put on a whole show that they're just pathetic cretins, but doesn't he agree? Our main character was smiling, looking straight into the face of the bald thug. Thug, despite his surprise, started to raise his voice again, saying that they didn't even know each other. But our character just started saying that they were acquaintances only because most likely his company, which works for the Glory Guild, is familiar to everyone in Korea with the patch on his shirt. The security guard immediately started looking down on our character, asking if he really took turns telling him that, despite the fact that he learned something by mistake. Looking at him with his eyes asking, will he really hit him? Of course, he now ran into a fight for the first time, but now the guard was not all, he immediately raised his stick and rose in the direction of our main character, said that he should learn the rules that people have established in this country. It would be untrue and claims that he is not scared, but as soon as the stick was supposed to reach from the face of our main character, it just missed. The bald man thought that it would hurt, that now the person who made a little joke about him will now be punished, that he will now think of it as a lesson in etiquette, with which he is not familiar. But as soon as the man looked a little to the right, he noticed that our main character was able to grab him with his hand for his baton, and then a little pressing immediately began to break it. He told the uncles that he understood that anything he did not undertake after his strike would be considered self-defense. Now, he wasn't going to hide anymore, even though the bald man was scared. He asked how our main character did all this, but Jian, that he had never learned to fight, that he had an unstable stance, shortness of breath, and the punch he made was nothing like a beginner's punch, but even with all these facts that could help him interfere, his body was special. As soon as the punch hit the guard's face, he immediately leaned to the side, he was clearly knocked out with a single blow. She's the main character couldn't believe that he was finally able to do all this with his own hands, he still couldn't believe it all. He cut off his hands for a bit, and then realized that he had become a little stronger. Baldi, who was already still conscious, shouted, or rather tried to pronounce the words that he needed help, but she was the same character, despite him only breathed out relief, said something like stop, while calling just Christina's voice, but does this person even know that people were shouting, when did the gate appear there? They were the ones who shouted for help, waiting, because they believed that the guys from his company would finally be able to come to their aid. But only in vain did our character deny the air, he also turned around and told the woman that now she can go wherever she wants. After a few seconds, we could see that our main character was walking up to some phone bunt, asking his assistant if he was in the right place. The assistant immediately replied that it was all right, that he was confirming everything. The most interesting thing was that the payphone was suspicious, but as soon as he went inside, he picked up the phone. He realized that the phone had not worked for a long time. This was not unusual. First of all, you need to find something that will stand out against the background of this repeats. It was at this moment that he clicked on the red button to be there. It glowed in a strange way. Some sounds began to be made. Did he press something wrong? At the same time, our main character looked under his feet and noticed that there was a hole where he safely fell. The flight turned out to be unsweetened. He hit his back hard. As soon as he got up, he immediately began to hold onto his tailbone. Was he caught in some horror movie and why was he constantly being tormented by someone? Did he even deserve such a special reception? He started to look around and think that it must be the same Dr. Jin, I'm sure he also went, but as soon as he looked at them, he noticed that there were strange splashes. Constantly checking the clubs on his hands, he saw that it was blood. It seems, but he miscalculated the place. At the same time, the system that was located in this building began to shout that an authorized re-entry of the zone had occurred, that it was necessary to switch to defense mode. It was our main character who was the violator, the system started talking about eliminating this person, and immediately the poison gas began to spread, but why do all this is necessary? Jungkook thought that Dr. Jin was a close friend of his teacher, did he betray her, or did someone attack him? Of course, our main character thought that everything was bad, because he inhaled poison, that now he would be dead. But as soon as he realized everything about this, he remembered that he did not have a color, that he could rest on his chest, it even refreshed him. Now there were footsteps, someone had definitely found it, was it really the enemy? It was a certain person who put on a gas mask, who thought that now the person who got there would die as soon as possible. He came out of one of the doors thinking that he was very tired of those very people from the association, showed his huge beard, short brown hair. But there was no time for hesitation, our character immediately decided to attack first, he immediately knocked the doctor to his feet and began to ask, because what the hell?
did he attack him for? Well, as soon as our character looked at what he did, he noticed that this doctor just passed out, just lost consciousness. In fact, he fell and immediately fainted. After a few seconds, they were finally able to talk, the doctor realized that the teacher, or rather his friend, helped him, now he understood everything, but if it comes to that, then he strongly asks to let him go. We see that our protagonist actually tied him up with ropes all over his body, which was extremely uncomfortable, in fact, such a huge pig was hard to breathe if it was wrapped around. To say that he will do nothing, he does not know that he will immediately throw out commas as soon as he loosens the rope. The doctor, while continuing to be nervous, said that he was not bandits, he was a great Dr. Jin. But why would he need traps then? If it wasn't for my father, he would have glued fins together long ago. The doctor, a little embarrassed, because did he really tie him up too tightly? What will happen now? But the doctor said that if he was so interested in the trap, that's how he designed them. You know, the character who continued to unleash immediately stopped this case, turned to the doctor, said that he was not joking, while looking directly at him. But the doctor, having also looked at him seriously, asked him not to misunderstand him. And to begin with, it was worth saying that usually people can't get there, the only thing that always comes is the same girl and other hunters. Dr. Jin realized that he needed to explain himself a little, so he started off by saying that it was still a bit embarrassing to say that he was actually a really talented and incredibly brilliant scientist, and that he was described in the newspapers as the genius of the century. Naturally, many people need his help, in the past it was quite difficult for him and a flood of obsessive cretins, he just could not sleep. These were difficult, unstable, but very interesting times for him. Only one problem still bothered him, the people who were chasing him were getting bigger and bigger, every night he would wake up and then run away from the people who were trying to kill him. Assassins from other countries, a dubious organization, even association hunters were targeting his life, he was constantly running away and asking for help. He didn't even think there was much of a reason to do it, either because of his money or his technical skills. But even under the pressure of constant attacks there, he constantly survived, but over time he realized that everyone around him was aimed at his life, even the police officers he tried to contact. Since then, he limited any contact with people, and he also began to develop paranoia. And he also began to live in huge places, like this, where he is right now, I don't know how they find him, but they keep coming, and he also makes sure there's no bloodstained space in this room. Our character also said that at least it frees him, but even stopped not thinking about throwing out some cheap trick, but why did he decide to tell him his biography like that? But all the doctor said was that the only reason he'd told him about it was because he was the one his girlfriend had sent. He trusts her almost as much as he trusts himself, but what is she doing right now? In fact, if you think about it that way, how did the meeting go? It was one rainy evening, when the doctor started running away from one of the assassination attempts again, a girl came up to him and asked him what he was doing in such a place, was she really abandoned too? If the two people were similar in some ways, but Dr. Jin was sitting on the floor at that moment, he remembers those very past moments. He realized that there was a person in front of him right now, just like her. It was a huge coincidence, who would have thought that a student would look so much like a teacher? Of course she didn't understand what the main character was saying, because he thought that their only similarity was that they were both from the same hidden class. But the doctor only said that the girl had the same spots as him, which was very strange, although you can't admit it. But she actually was incredible and beautiful right now, and then the doctor immediately got up and said that he would show him everything. Here it is. But what did he think that was inside his body? Who immediately went for the doctor said that he didn't know anything, that he didn't think much about it. But the doctor said that one drop in his poison can kill a hunter of quite high rank, that he has surpassed the concepts of biological and chemical weapons, so green is his verse. It was incredibly strange, because his body was definitely of a lower rank, but did he really become stronger than the awakening? Well, he also had no illusions. He had heard that high ranks didn't even count as humans, they were so strong. But the doctor who started driving out passwords on his door started saying don't be so happy so early, you're capable of being out of control useless. If they leave everything like me, then he's bound to become a ticking time bomb, so the doctor opened the door and said he'd have a lot and a long time to train. Now a huge complex has opened up in front of him. The doctor said that his marks are symptoms that show that he is not able to control his poison. They will pass if he starts to control himself. He personally trained the same girl. So just do not so. He will change beyond recognition by the time the doctor finishes training. At the same time he ordered me to run. At this point, the doctor immediately began to encourage our main character, forcing him to run again and again. He constantly stood aside and continued to shout that our protagonist was doing great. That he could do anything. He further pointed to the side and told him not to relax the stance because really he wants to start all over again, all your training sessions. The doctor immediately cheered up and said that if our main character is so much slack, then he needs to put on weight, while I constantly call him
Our protagonist could no longer stand on his feet, veins appeared on his face, sweat ran down in huge streams all over his body, and the doctor continued to support him, telling him that he could do anything. At one point we can notice that our main character can actually pull huge weights. The doctor continued support him by saying that he just has to overcome himself, because this is his self-esteem, he is obliged to do all this. Now, as soon as they were done, that doctor told him that since he could now lift such huge weights, there was a need to strengthen his poison. Seven days after coming to this lab, a lot had changed. The doctor now constantly came in unannounced, went without a mask in his circle glasses, still shows what clearly life in this isolation set on him not in the best way. The first change was that he took off his infuriating gas mask, which we might have noticed earlier. Our main character even thought that he had started to trust him, now it was possible to notice that the doctor actually had a second chin and even a mustache. Our protagonist couldn't believe that this doctor looked so flawed right now. The doctor was offended by this statement but said that he had the right to insult him, otherwise he would train for two hours more. When he was young, he could have been a handsome man, so what happened to him? The doctor, who continues to drink his cocoa along with marshmallows, said that our character coped well with running. The second change was that his sister woke up. She said that she panicked the moment she woke up when they found him next to her. It was obvious that she was yelling at the top of her voice, and after all, he put all his acting skills to her to believe him. The third change is a new device that the doctor was able to braid. It first looked at his body, and then suddenly produced a new device that looked like a cube. However, there were other features of this device, it was a much more advanced version of the one his teacher had given him. The time he spent developing it was just incredibly small, only three days, and the biggest changes were with his body, of course he was very tired, maybe he should give up training for a few days, that's what he thought. The change that has occurred in his body since the start of training was just incredible. The spots have changed, and the effort that he put into changing, into training, has played into his hands. The doctor immediately started clapping his hands and telling our character that he knew he was handsome, but he looked too much like a handsome man because his body started to have muscles. It looked like the doctor was very surprised, but why so suddenly? The doctor immediately began to tell us that you need to look at your body and face. If you were not a man, he would definitely go on a date with our main character. The doctor definitely said that he was very infuriated that such a handsome man simply did not realize his charm. Even the main character who couldn't believe it all just looked at him with a face full of questions because he thought that he really wasn't that handsome. But I still decided to agree with the doctor while watching the doctor continue to eat canned food while washing down the Coca-Cola. Our character asked him if he is bored at all while sitting on one of the sofas and starting to increase your broadcast. But the doctor said he shouldn't be bored. Our protagonist, still on him said that he was alone for a long time. How does he even manage not to get bored in such an environment and all these canned food that he eats that I get tired of him? But the doctor, pointing his name with wooden sticks to the side, said that actually he is not alone. Something you believe that does not allow him to be bored is on the shoulder of our main character. Our character immediately looked at his shoulder. He couldn't understand what was going on. But as soon as he really turned around, he immediately started shouting. He saw a certain creature that was now sitting on his shoulder. So the main character started shouting and the doctor said that it was his friend. The doctor began to say that the creature's name was Pori. He said that this is the most charming creature in the whole wide world. It is one of those monsters that people of the class of our main character tamed many years ago. Even if it bites someone, all they will feel is a slight prick. Maybe it's because he's so weak, but the doctor doesn't even want to think about it. The most amazing thing about it was that it could absorb its master's poison. He also attached himself to our protagonist two days ago, and he never noticed at all. Our protagonist, looking at the creature, couldn't believe it was some kind of joke, because why couldn't he have noticed it earlier? During all this time, his sensitivity had increased several times, yet he hadn't even noticed it. But the doctor said that this is not surprising, because he knows how to completely hide his body and presence. At the same time, the little monster showed that I have it disappear. The doctor continued that this was very surprising. He didn't even think that this individual was an ordinary monster, because he had invisibility abilities. But that's not all. Of course, this is the most rare ability, it is considered rare even among the strongest hunters, but where did he get this ability? At the same time, the doctor said that he was very pleased that our main character was listening, but why did our protagonist decide to rest at all? At this point, our character noticed that he was actually lying down, and it continues to concentrate her ether. Dr. Maud immediately told him to get up while his legs were still intact. Of course, our body wanted to rest, but the doctor caught it. By that time, we are transported to some strange man who started to press one of his employees, saying that it was time to make him forget about someone. Why should he even waste his precious nerves on all this? 
The man understood, because his boss clearly started to press him, after a few seconds was made an incredibly cute smile, said that he would be happy to work together further. Then he asked if his employee knew where Maria was. The man immediately roused up, starting to look at his boss, and the boss began to drill him with his gaze, he realized that most likely Maria was locked in the healing room again. This was the secret of the glory guild. The girl continued to scratch her hands until they bled, begging for forgiveness. The person who represents the guild is her, Maria. She was constantly locked in a special room to the point of endless self-flagellation, and she did it for one reason only. The boss came up to her and asked her how long it was going to last. But the only reason the girl did this was because she felt guilty, because of her inability to protect someone. But the man came up to her and said they'd done everything they could, but he'd never get used to it. She was pushing the boundaries of self-flagellation, and it would have ended very badly for anyone else because her healing abilities were too high. The girl, looking directly at the boss, asked, right with tears in her eyes, they did everything they could, this was the face of the glory guild. She was the best healer in the world. Immediately, the girl starts talking, then shivers that a lot of innocent people died, more than 500 people died, how can the guild leader say that they did everything they could, they didn't have the right to say such a thing at all. The girl screamed, they say through tears, that all these people, why did they sacrifice them? But the head only said to Maria that this time everything happened too suddenly, that she knew that nothing could have been done about it. The head immediately presented his hand directly to his face, which was clearly giving him a headache all these conversations with Maria. Maria at that moment said that it was possible to send her there, or divide the teams in half so that they could save everyone in time, that even if they were a little late, they would get there at least a little earlier. She screamed that she could have saved so many more people. But the guild leader only said that the monsters that came this time were not the same as usual, he didn't know who killed them, but they weren't even easy to deal with. He looked at her, too, and then she probably cried on purpose because she was disgusted with him because he just wasn't good enough for this. Maria, noticing his tears, started up. And the guild head continued, saying that he was too weak, that he made the wrong decision, it was all his fault. Point Maria looked at him again said that he didn't mean it. She was clearly shocked by this behavior, but the head started to tremble, feigning tears said that she didn't the only thing to suffer, because he is also a person, that all these incidents are driving him crazy. Of course, well, we understand that the guy just wanted to throw up, that he had to do such things, that he had to help Maria calm down every time. He looked at her and said that he knew that it was very difficult for her too, and asked her to try to come to terms with it all. If she can't, then so be it, but does she want to visit the Hunter Examination Center? He immediately started looking at Maria with an incredibly sweet and kind face. Maria immediately started asking about this examination center. Of course, she really didn't understand anything, but at the same time, the head started to say that it was the Hunter Examination Centers. It was she who needed to recruit new talents to save as many people as possible. Would she be able to help him in this? It was obvious and clear that the leader was constantly manipulating her while showing that he wanted her help. The monsters that appeared in the same area were stronger than usual, so the woman immediately agreed to it all, and the leader said that he owed her. But who the hell could have dealt with them so quickly, especially the very crater that formed in the very place that our main character made was frightening. But what will the doctor do when he finishes training, or our character? Our main character said that of course he would become a hunter, and most likely the doctor thought that he would choose a knight, but our main characters made it clear that he would not be a knight, because why would he? But the guild leader at this moment couldn't believe that there were such strong people that he didn't know about. And our main character at this point continued to say that he was thinking about doing something else, and not a chivalrous duty. The head of the guild was also sitting in his office at that time, constantly twisting a pen in his hands, he saw some very gifted guys there, but there were no healers at all. It was at this moment that we understand that our protagonist wants to try to become a healer. He's not going to be involved in creating more innocent victims. He wants to do what his teacher did for him and his sister. Everyone understood that healers are rare, watering if some poor people die, but if earlier from one of the heroes, it would be a huge mistake. In this, in everything, they were sure that our main character would become a hunter, he should visit the hunter examination center, which I was going to do later. The doctor who said goodbye to our character in class, saying that he would miss him. It would seem that only nothing has passed, but he managed to get attached to it. Our main character immediately supported him, said that the doctor should not be upset, because he will visit him, and also do not forget to eat well, because his canned food will definitely bring him to the defense. The doctor, through a smile, said that of course he would observe all this, but as for the very creature that should go along with our main character, it's time to say goodbye. The doctor, looking directly into the creature's eyes, said that it should take good care of our main protagonist. The creature immediately patted its chest, which should have meant that it actually heard the doctor. At this moment, or rather a few hours later, as soon as the main character returned to her home, as soon as he opened the door, everyone immediately jumped out to him, who began to pull his ear, asking him, 
or rather counting out, because why did he to leave, leave a pathetic piece of paper? How did he do this to her? Our protagonist asked her to let him go, now he can explain everything. He couldn't breathe, but after a few seconds he immediately passed out. After many hours of explanations, our main character was on his knees looking at the floor, telling his sister about everything. The sister understood him, but Leon is confident in the person who saved him, because not all hunters have a decent way of life here, does he even know which organization it belongs to? The sister definitely doubts even that she called his real name. How could they trust someone they didn't know anything about, plus such a strong person didn't have a single reason to save them? My sister also said that everyone took the help of hunters to ordinary people when she did, but this woman went overboard. The sister exhaled, she is the main character said that she is not so bad. The girl started saying that it doesn't happen that someone does something good just like that, but we already know this, she started saying that if he gets something, then one day it will be time to give something back, she is just afraid that the price she will pay for it will be too much. The price will be too high in the future. The girl exhaled and then asked if she really wanted to take her away to become the hunter that everyone was talking about. Now we could see that right in front of him was a message, or rather an application for the hunter exam. Our main character decided to agree with his sister, saying that all this is so, but the sister immediately told him that it had to be done. This surprised our character very much, so he asked her why she allowed him to go to the hunter association. But my sister just said that she didn't see anything wrong with it, because whatever he did, but it was his choice, she had no reason to stop him, much less forbid him to do something. Our protagonist fell silent, he lowered his head, covering his face with his hair. He realized that this had always been the case, and he immediately turned to his sister, saying that he had thought a lot about everything that had happened. He came to the conclusion that all this could have been prevented. It is our main character who wants to save people. He doesn't want to give what happened next in the very place where he almost died with her a point. He doesn't know if he can do it or not, but he wants to at least try. Our main character understood that it was she who was worried about him more than anyone else. But Sister Lyshell smiled and told her husband not to worry. She was sure that he would become a greater hunter than anyone before him. She made a fist and told him that he had to fight against the whole world, and she would stand behind him, supporting him in all his decisions. Along with that, she believes in him more than anyone else. It was very ironic, but still the words about the great hunter clearly hurt him. Already the second person predicted this to him, so our hero did not smile and said that he would do everything in his power, and then immediately lay down on the floor on one of the pillows and said, starting to look at the phone that the entrance fee for the exam is $50 million. My sister's face immediately changed, and she asked if it wasn't dangerous for hunters, so I think we should have worked in a factory or something. But our character also started saying that if it's about money, then let her not be afraid, because he will try to earn it himself. The sister was shocked, because where would her brother get so much money, is he really going to sell his organs, did he know that prostitution is prohibited? But my brother just started shouting that it wasn't so. Well, our characters decided to go to work. He dressed in his usual clothes, put on the most ordinary trousers and sneakers, and then finally came to the right place. A purple aura was emitted from this place, and now we understand that this place is called a dungeon, and it is here that its realities will come to life. This dungeon was poisonous, not only the dungeon itself is poisonous, but also everything inside, these are the most unpopular types of dungeons. Usually, both hunters and people prefer to avoid them, because there is a restrictive zone, a zone of destruction, everything around is generally fenced, access is very limited. The problem is that the larger the restriction zone, the more problems there are. But our protagonist only breathed as deep as possible in his chest, deciding to jump right there, into the portal. Inside the dungeon, as soon as he got there, he noticed a lot of dragons, a certain lake. The whole parallel world, as if it is around some kind of hit, or run out. Sure enough, he could feel the air around him being saturated with poison, this exposed the effects of a poisonous fall. Other hunters wouldn't even be able to get cheaper here, but he is the one who can, it doesn't apply to him, and the exam doesn't have much time, he hopes that he can quickly find what he came for. At one point, he noticed movement in the bushes, and a certain monster immediately headed towards him, which he didn't seem to notice from our character. It was a deadly monitor lizard that was a venomous type, the difficulty was equal to, it was weak, so our main character would be able to survive, and the other level was slightly higher. Another level implies other types of attacking abilities, such as Nestelli, the element attribute, and Poison, something beyond the physical. In other words, the difficulty of this guard comes from the strength of its poison, it is either equal or weaker than in an level, that is, but our character thought so. However, why was he so nervous, why were his hands shaking so much right now? He asked his body to stop shaking, he started holding his hand in the other hand. He tried again and again to convince himself that he wasn't afraid, but it didn't work. At one point, he remembered the same monster that came straight at him, remembered the sister who asked him to run away at that moment. All this was incredibly distracting for him, 
But then that little monster appeared, the same baby who calmed our character down a little. But couldn't he have been worried about him? Our character immediately calmed down and started looking for something in his pocket, because thanks to the monster, he returned to normal. The monsters that were around must have already discovered it. Right now I'm approaching it. There were two, three of them. They became more and more. It didn't matter. Our main character finally managed to find the very cube that the scientist gave him. He realized that he could kill everyone, no matter how many they were there. We immediately understand that our main character, as soon as he received this item, asked about its purpose, but the doctor only said that he thought that he would need a weapon. He just needs to squeeze it in his hands and shout out the words, move, our character asked again, still did not understand what was happening, but right now we understand that it will be activated. He remembered saying that this device only had the shape of a cube when they were active, but as soon as he said the code word, it would change. Its functionality was infinite, it reacts to its ethers, increases its output and changes at the will of the host. In an instant, this cube took the shape of a blade, the original device of Dr. Jin, the genius of the century, but when he decided that it would not be more than a dagger, it was called an echo. In any case, our protagonist decided that he would not lose, now the very hunt that he had been waiting for for so long began. In an instant, he used Poison Rain, his new ability, which he was able to immediately cut down his enemies, then he used Poison Step, which he used to cut down everyone else. Now he was covered in this vile blood from these animals, but it couldn't be helped, was he being scolded by all the countries for trying to make money. Immediately, he continued to absorb all the monsters that he could neutralize, he was smiling very much. Because the user's black ether level was increased several times, he was laughing with happiness. He thought that there was a buffet in front of him right now. He was incredibly happy, thirst was red in his eyes, I was mining in bulk, now he he knows for sure that this dungeon was just created for him. He immediately ran to the monsters he met, they no longer had time to run away from him. Counting this monster that he just beat up, it already turned out to be 50 monsters that he killed in all this time. He even thought that today he would definitely be able to score 300 points. But the more he looks at it, the less he understands, because one hit was one corpse. He understands that the number of progress Etha is closely related to the strength level of the user and the dungeon. But still, the monster died before it even had time to fight for its life, the synergy of the device with the poisoner was too strong, and indeed a terrible thing. Because all the energy of its poison and the blade po, there was one rule, whoever this blade reached, but he would die with one blow. Our character began to feel incredibly strong at being the best, did this mean that most likely his teacher will also have one hit, who knows? Maybe he is already one of the strongest. He decided to open the status window at the same time, because if the dungeon makes him so strong, then you should not forget to watch your friend's progress. He immediately opened the status window with an incredibly hopeful look. He thought that he would finally be able to look there and see the very last rank, something very high, because physically he was closer to the upper classes than he was now. At the same time, he opened the first version of his device, Advanced Lenses. It said that he was already able to invite 160 energy points. His physical level was at the lowest class, almost at the lowest, and the healing level was quite high, even almost the last rank. He thought, he thought back at home, that this device is incredibly ugly, why is it so useless? But then I decided to ask myself, who cares about his physical level? He's going to be a healer anyway, laughing like a madman. However, maybe it was time for him to go home, he was incredibly upset, and so much time had passed, the item he came for was still not found, it was all a waste of time, maybe, but in the next dungeon, he would be lucky. At one point, he began to feel a certain unease behind him, he was sure that there was some kind of creature behind him that was on a completely different level compared to the monsters he had met before. At one point, a certain dog that had an incredibly long tongue immediately came out not bad, it was a leper hyena, with a poisonous attack type, even without looking. You could tell that its level was much higher than the rest, the lenses even said that the skills of this creature were much higher than the carrier's, it was a boss. He wasn't done up to another level, after all his self is stronger than anything here, the physical level is still a challenge. His physical level was down by a whole two ranks, if you compare it to how I came out as a child against an adult, no, the difference in strength is even greater. He looked at this monster and wondered if it even had a chance, and he immediately asked the little monster to hide for a while, because all you had to do was calm down, you had to focus. The physical level of this boss was much higher, but if he could keep an eye on it here, it would be much easier. At the same time, the monster sped up, in an instant it was behind our character, our protagonist understood that he needed to defend himself, but only then realized that he was caught. In an instant, the claws of this monster hit him in the arm. Why is it so painful? Is it really that bad? He didn't even see him move, so it turns out that he died here. At the same time, as soon as these thoughts began to hit his head, he decided that he should not die here. 
He immediately began to shout that he had lived in torment for so many years, he definitely could not die from some bosses in such a place. But the very thing that now sat down in front of him just sat on the spot. Most likely this hyena was waiting for his poison to act, this is its main mistake, because now he has a chance to win. At the same time, our protagonist looked at him, shouted, which surprised the monster very much. He waved a finger, clearly summoning the hyena to be the one to die at his hands. Hyena had to be drained first, and then his high healing status would have to be trusted as well. Of course, healing poison is two opposites. How do they get along in the same poisoner's body? Because usually for poisoners, virgin land is just a survival method that cleanses the poison in the body. But the most interesting thing was that when the healing power goes beyond neutralizing the poison, and also when I am completely under the control of the body. Then and there was simply no need for healing, so where do the remnants of healing power go when they disappear? Of course not, all of this wasn't the case, after all the healing just meaningless circulates had lost their master, so Professor Jin was well aware of this, more than anyone else, which was the reason why right now our main character was able to attempt a strike, he only needed to piece together these disorderly flows in his body to concentrate the poison healing into a single whole. Our protagonist laughed, smiling at the same time, more precisely, the question is, because where is the monster going, he is definitely not finished yet. The limit that our main character's body will reach is transformed into the third original device Professor Jin, our main character. Exuding an incredible aura, said that a circulator had just appeared, it was right next to his heart, so it was worth starting the second round. The healing was completed by that time, our main character took out his dagger and held it straight up, letting the monster know that in fact he was ready to fight. Now both characters were rushing right through the air at an incredible speed, the monster continued to strike, and our protagonist continued to shoot in a split second. He was actually looking at what it was like to be beaten up after being permanently cured. As the fight dragged on, and his monster only held up better than he'd imagined, did he really not appreciate it so much? The attack started again, more than an hour had passed, the hyena was still not tired, or rather, it even continued to hit accurately. Even the main character couldn't even deal a single blow to a standing one, his wounds only multiplied, he's even afraid that he won't achieve anything just by pulling this creature away. But still he's starting to get used to its movements, the fight was unequal, but still not impossible, the reason why this foam was so much what was bold was that she understood instinctively the importance of fortitude in battle. Our main character was pretty tired, his hands were shaking, he just had no right to show it, because as soon as he showed that he was tired, he would just die. At this point, Hygiene continued her attacks, with a single blow, she slammed our protagonist right on the ground into a tree. It was idiotic because the man had sent him flying with just one punch. The most pathetic truth was that the situation he loses, but still, looking at the smug face of a hyena, it was clear that he is not even trying the point of even the main character immediately accelerated, and then tried to strike directly for genius, but he immediately decided to jump aside, this time our hero took exactly, because his teacher said, that no matter how strong the enemy is, we cannot fall into despair, but the teacher was too strong, if it had any enemies, which drives her into the abyss of despair, then there is someone much more powerful than the one that now stood in front of our ports the point of even the main character. Harkov some blood, he realized that he had no right to lose, he also used the healing once again. He was sure that he had sworn to himself that can withstand the test that will be able to win. Until the enemy exhale he will stand on his feet, he taught himself what he needed to keep. At this point I remembered the doctor's words that our main hero can call upon the viper, which was able to call a little earlier, the doctor was surprised that our main character actually called, but the miracle is not so easy. Of course, the mind was incomprehensible, the doctor asked not to call her again, because it was just a miracle that he was able to survive that time. This power is far beyond his understanding, but it was a miracle, it was this word that fascinated our protagonist so much. The notification came that he continued to fight an opponent that was several times stronger than him, that the black firework training was finished, he understood that he still had a lot to learn. But at this moment, he realized that he could endure, he would endure everything, despite what the system was telling him, that there might be problems. The physical level of our main character immediately began to increase dramatically, he grew up, something will not change, although he thought that he would certainly die of pain. Finally there was a new return of the mad dog from that very area. He immediately took a step that made him understand that he became stronger, not just faster, but his speed increased significantly. Nogi Da was still able to dodge even though he was standing up. It was as if another league had started, but just once, this attack that he was now using wasn't his last chance. If he used even more black ether, it would be very difficult for even his own strength to deal with the poison that was circulating inside him. You need to put all your strength into the next attack, to stand. But how can he even hold these ethers in his entire body if he rearranges the concentration of the comma focusing on the attack and then turns off the password? Then only one hit is enough, but if he just goes head on, you will not be able to control the speed and harm yourself, so do you need to prepare in advance first the rack? 
it doesn't matter if he can't control it, he will hold this particular stance, he will break through his opponent without making a single unnecessary move. In an instant, however, no more time was used as the main character rose forward, he was thinking that all he needed to do was skin the thing in front of him with one precise blow. At least he'd exhausted her for a reason, and in an instant Nashiri was right next to his body, then the hyena's head flew off his shoulders. It wasn't fulfilled that almost all of his clothes were torn, he would definitely come to an end, but let's hope that the next dungeon will have a simpler monster. At this point, we are again transported to one of the caves, where there are all sorts of spiders and other creatures. But how often do people go in for sports, because it is enough for a person to get two runs a day to slow down old age, as well as avoid unnecessary stress. This was quite surprising, but what about our main character, of course he trained regularly, thanks to this, he gets energized for the whole day. So you could miss the fact that he was currently being chased by a huge spider that was the size of a huge skyscraper. Even the main character was clearly scared, and why again? Was he wrong to think that this was the end of his suffering? Well, even here it will be a hyena it was a grand victory over the enemy, who was significantly superior to his opponent. But his victory was only a humiliation, because as soon as he left this dungeon, the video showed how people looked at him, calling him naked and scary. He understood that he was very embarrassed and asked everyone to turn away from him because he was not specially in this form. At one point, one of the girls said that this is the same boy who saved her from the guard that time, reminded that they met at the checkpoint, and so on. She immediately expressed her gratitude and thanks to him, she slept to get to the hospital without worrying about anything. Our main character, who clearly did not want to contact anyone, immediately said that she was mistaken, made a mistake, he apologizes, then also turned away. Our character only felt humiliated, he was fine, but I still told them to turn away from him, that he would die somewhere in the bushes. Well, as soon as he got home, and then there was much more disappointment waiting for him, there was his sister, who was clearly not happy with her brother himself, because not only did he tear all his clothes, but also walked naked on the street, she was sure that she would break her brother's back, I call him an exhibitionist, she tried to give her brother as much space as possible, and his spine almost broke. This day was incredibly terrible, because every time he remembered, the tears came out on their own. If I hadn't done all that, then he wouldn't be crying like some winch right now, so this monster that was chasing him down. Not only did it look just disgusting, but also because of her huge size, every inch of her disgusting body was like under a microscope. If our main characters could finish her off, then he would be given for being able to save a huge number of people. So a moment later, the spider immediately threw our main character into a rock. Because of this, Eight Paws said goodbye all day, but at one point, he was able to find the very flower that was called the mystical bronze sunflower. Our body was very happy that it was still able to find the very flower that it desperately found. Its feature changes its color depending on the difficulty of the dungeon. If it was hard, then it glowed gold, if medium, then silver. And if it was easy, then it would be a pink flower, respectively, he found a flower of lower quality, a bronze sunflower. Well, do people really think that it is worthless because of such low quality? Then this person would not know anything about growing grass, our main character was sure that he was now rich, because one such flower costs at least 10 million rubles. And its price, if it was of the highest quality, would reach 50 million, just a crazy amount for such a flower, all the minced meat was always inside. The healing properties of this flower are compared to the abilities of a healer of the highest rank, even the bronze flower had a huge healing power. And the gold flower is known for creating unimaginable miracles, but these flowers are found only in poisonous dungeons, and they grow near the boss's lair. And this is the monster that was now in front of him one of the biggest skids in S that you can think of. Our programmer almost forgot about it, because he did not fight with this vile creature and just ran away from it. Most likely many people may think that this is all because this creature is damn strong, but in fact it is not, because he can finish off anyone with his dagger in his hands and the size doesn't fit well with this cave, everything is much simpler than with the rest, so is it really because of its disgusting appearance? This was partly the case, but still not, because our main character had no idea where this flower got such a fig feature, but if you leave the dungeon boss, the bronze flower will simply wither with it. It turns out that he needs to take control of the boss, and this is only then to pick up the flower. Unfortunately, his skills don't allow him to pull this off, either death is fueled or mercy is a point he can't go at it with his bare hands, so it seemed like he was at a dead end. But then the system came up with ideas that told him that you need to use a non-lethal mode, but a dream. This was the second mode of this blade, which allowed you to take control of the player, put him to sleep, or paralyze him. Our main character did not understand what it was, but the blade immediately told him that this is the user mode of Dr. Jin, for those whose skills are based on attack. The doctor thought through all this at this moment, in fact, he was the owner of his business, but something else was important, because why did our protagonist find out about this only now? But the blade immediately answered him, or rather the system, that he was not asked about anything, he had nothing to do with it at all. 
That's how the system made a reservation, but still our main character needed to be calmer, because now was definitely not the time to break down because of some even though the system continued to indicate to him that his breathing became faster several times, at the same time our main character indicated on this blade and shouted that you need to add to it properly. The system immediately told him that our protagonist's blood pressure was jumping, but our main character made it clear that the system needed to as soon as possible. At that moment he immediately looked at the very monster that was standing right in front of him. He shouted and said that he should listen to him. What exactly our character's name is Hyasum. At the same time, our main character immediately went into battle directly on this spider. As soon as he carried it through, he told the spider about why they actually called him Mad Dog. Right now such a mad dog had hooked his opponent. But did his assistant really call this ability White Sleep? Because if so, then it was actually quite a good ability. Our main character was grinning, and then, looking around, I realized that if I was asleep, it means that now I could go for the flower. As soon as he looked at the carcass on the decree, he noticed that the spider actually fell into a deep sleep, so if it came to that, then it should start dot at the same time. He began to approach the very flower that seemed to show that he was afraid of our protagonist's approach dot immediately jumped monsters like, which was clearly something very happy, but our main character, he said that this is food, that you need to get back under your shirt, you can't even turn on this strange face. Our character, the graspability of flowers, realized that in the future, when this good boy grows up, he will only get better emotions, I wonder how the doctor and the teacher were doing at that moment. Because they so strongly insisted that he find this flower, they all let him understand that the main thing in this business is money. The doctor said that he had to find the bronze sunflower, even if he had to risk his life. Dr. Jero was proving that it was actually worth taking risks for this, and the woman, his teacher, was saying that any component that relates to treatment is related to poison, so that's it. They were both trying to prove to him that opposites always attract. Our main character only realized this at this moment. However, at the same time, we realized that he didn't understand anything at all, that they, the pros, can only give out something cool, although they don't understand anything. But the girl, hitting him on the forehead, said that he would understand everything himself. At the same time, our character realized that he didn't want to catch up with anything. But why did she hit him at that moment? Women are such terrible creatures, as the monster confirmed. But the sale of the flower is still very difficult. Why can't you sell some store? He was too lazy to do all this. The moment he came to the underground economic center of the black market, our protagonist better told his monster that if he sees someone suspicious, then immediately you need to tell him, you can safely bite them. Immediately, he went a little further away, where he noticed a lot of strange people, some had no teeth, but this place was clearly not very good, like a huge Many even wanted to rob our main character, because he looked rather weak and frail. It was amazing that all the suspicious personalities of this world were gathered here. At first, it turned out that absolutely everyone was going to beat you, but they thought it was obvious, because there were lower-ranked knights around, so who would win? Of course, from the outside, be unusual people, who, who is endowed with great physical strength, would clearly have an advantage, but what if we are talking about hunters? At the same time, it was noticeable that the tiny low-level knight was an unsurpassed assassin, although the outcome of the battle also depended on their skills and experience. Adapters are nothing more important than ranks, and when you don't have a scout-type device, you always run the risk of finding yourself in a similar situation, judging by the enemy's appearance. Now he's starting to understand a little bit of it, to put it simply, but the black market is completely lawless. Without a weapon, there is nothing to do here, and it's normal to start suspecting that something is wrong with that guy. Our main character decided for what he should find just further, thinking that early somehow the guy is not so strong, but he is glad that only I am wrong at his expense, as well as avoiding him. Now our hero was standing near a showcase with intelligence-type devices, the functionality is much worse than the first model, it is not even able to determine the level of the hunter, and the price was simply exorbitant, as much as 20 million. Our protagonist better returned it to its place, but there is a chance to drop it. He understood that such a useless pile of metal costs 20 million, is it really here that all the money in the world is spinning? Seriously, who would buy it for 100 years? He could buy one, as many as four boxes of Ramon. However, at that moment, a boy ran by, asking if his boss was out of his mind. Even the main character thought that the boy actually noticed that this device is much more expensive than it is. But the boy began to say that he sells this device just for free, for the first time he sees such prices after the disappearance of the legendary scientist. Immediately the boy bought one, it was either the wonders of the black market, but it was not up to that, but now it was necessary to find where they sell flowers of the sun. He immediately began to turn his head around in search of a store, but did not see anyone selling them here, he asked first to find the dragon, but noticed that the dragon at that moment was clinging to a certain girl with red hair who was trying to escape. Our main character also ran up to her and said that he was very sorry that his dragon started biting her, 
He wanted to immediately heal her, but the girl immediately fought back and started running away. Of course, the girl was very strange, because it was noticeable that she was disappearing into the shadows, that most likely all the people of this area gathered in one place. Our protagonist immediately looked at his hand, where he noticed that his bag was missing, which could mean that the girl finally coped with her task, she stole a bag from him. But the main character realized that he needed to get out of here as early as possible, as soon as possible. For a moment, it bounced off the ground, and then it started rushing somewhere, a girl who ran around the corner thought she'd lost it. She said he was green, and he was a total wimp for bringing a bronze sunflower in a regular bag, which this guy doesn't do. But as soon as she went to the side, she immediately bumped into him. I looked at him and asked him who she called a weakling. She couldn't believe how he'd found her, but it didn't matter now that the monster had helped him. He immediately said that he wouldn't go around, so he probably asked for a package, because if he gave it back now, it would leave the whole thing. The girl also said that she thought he bought it, but still she couldn't stand up to him in a fight, so she immediately handed him the bag. However, as soon as our main characters wanted to take them, the girl put the bag back, saying that she wanted to make a deal with him. She was born and raised in this place, she knows every nook and cranny of the black market, there are places that ordinary people have never heard of, such as the store where they sell sunflowers. The association controls the flowers of the sun, usually associated with it, transactions are prohibited, and besides, they are not rare enough, so not everyone knows their existence. Our protagonist immediately asked her, because what does she want in return for this deal, is it really something big? But the girl, after looking at him, said that she would advise him a great place to sell, and divide the cost 6 by 4, he is 6, and she is 4. At first, our protagonist thought that this girl decided to f*** him, but still does not seem like a bad person, so I would not want to fight with her. Of course, he tried to intimidate her a little, and I ask her if she's trying to trick him, because he wanted to spare her, but I think it's better to finish him off. Well, the girl at the same moment began to scream and says that it is necessary without a threat, because does he think that he managed to find her if she really wanted to hide from him? But our main character told me that most likely the place that her familiar bit is itching, of course it was itching, but she is no longer able to poison this monster. But she does not know this. So our main character continued to threaten her with the fact that in her place he thought, because the abilities of his pet are beyond possible, he is able to kill even a knight of the highest rank. Of course, in the black market, the one who is left in the f*** loses, the most important thing in such battles is to look strong, and this is exactly what was happening now. Although it's not the real Scarlet Viper, it's definitely enough to make the enemy believe his words in this way. Fear will shine through him, his thoughts will become confused, and he will begin to connect bits of information together, thereby further convincing himself of what his opponent needs. The girl at the same time burst into tears and sat down on her knees with words that she was spared. Immediately, our protagonist dispelled all the aura. Of course, he pretended to be calm, but in reality he realized that he had gone too far. He also approached the girl and said that his name was Young. He is glad that everything turned out that way, and the girl introduced herself as Bai Su, or the daughter of the black market. He came up and said that since they were friends, she should take him around the market, to which the girl agreed. At this moment, our main character was only wondering where he was brought, now the man in front of him, who was holding the meat of one of the monsters, also asked the same girl, because he was curious about who his little cat brought with him. The man who had fangs instead started saying that surprisingly, but he turned out to be an extremely entertaining young man, our main character. Looking at the whole picture, said that he had not yet introduced himself, because he had just been introduced to the dealer. However, the man who looked at him with a lion's gaze as well as an incredibly muscular body replied that he was the most powerful person in the entire black market, he called himself the father of the black market. Our protagonist kept repeating to himself about the most powerful person, after all, is it really he who runs this place? The man, through a smile, said that you might think that this is so, but doesn't it seem strange to him that he came all this just to make a deal, but suddenly such a high-ranking person presented himself to him, and it was for some kind of deal. But at the same time, the man said that his precious little daughter came to him because she was worried about something, shouldn't he put commas as a father to deal with this situation? Of course, he was very surprised and interested, because what kind of person did she bring? Why did she go to him in the middle of the night? Saying that he came to visit or that our character understood you think that most likely the daughter of the black market is actually the daughter of the father of the black market, but it seems like the man he looked restless. He didn't even look bothered to call her that. But only through a smile did the man begin to pick again that he needed to stop talking, because he himself knows that the one who is left for a fool loses on the black market. Of course, she is the main character understood that the black market and all the cases, but it was still too much. Of course, the man continued to laugh and then that our protagonist does not know how to keep his emotions to himself, does not even know how to hide it, while laughing, and then continues to eat meat. The meat that he ate is actually the meat of the monster that he got in that very dungeon. 
the main character that thought he was a separate monster, but this is already beyond his comprehension, however whatever it was. But she also said that the main character exhaled that still need to solve the issue. It's better to deal with this as soon as possible and leave as soon as possible. He immediately asked the person sitting in front of him if he needed the bronze sunflower that he obtained from the dungeon. The father of the market was immediately surprised, because at first he did not even want to believe his daughter that a person brought such a valuable thing with him and usually in a package. He also said that they had a big shortage of supplies recently, and he got a flower of good quality, so the father of the black market agrees to this application. He didn't think long, he was probably one of those people who are well versed in goods, so our main character was glad that they decided everything so quickly. But at the same time, the man looked at him and began to behave strangely. He said that he would first have to kill the very thing that was right under him. A moment later, a poison shadow appeared right in front of him, but where did it even come from? However, at this moment, the person started to say that he was also not easier to deal with, but this flower was quite difficult to get, yet it was still under the control of the Hunter Association. Usually flowers are obtained from the most suspicious places, and accordingly, you will not get rid of them later, but it's quite another matter if he got it himself, said that if he was his own. Then it turns out that he managed to defeat the boss, so he will definitely be able to finish off the usual hygiene. This is obvious, but there is no deal if he loses the rot. He had no love for scammers who could only scratch their tongues, so at the same time, the father of the black market asked if our main character wanted to escape, and yet he decided to make a deal and risk his life for this money, which he wanted. The man saw that our protagonist did not have a weapon with him, so if he was going to give up, it would be better to give him a lesson as soon as possible. The man continued to laugh, he was sure that our main character would not want to resist hygiene, but at the same time. She also the main character got into her pose and he asked, looking at the black market boss for a bit with a gentle look, because how much will he give for a flower in general? In an instant, it was noticeable that this hyena was already lying on the floor dead, and from our character and met a strange energy. The main character clearly made it clear that the conditions had to be met first, but then the black market boss started laughing even harder. He started saying that he was now incredibly interested in seeing what would happen next. He started shouting that his daughter had brought a very interesting special person. The character immediately repeated his question, because how much is the black mafia boss willing to pay for all this? My daughter immediately began to say that our main character should watch his tongue when talking to her father, but at the same time the boss of the black market got angry. He asked, after all, did he give the word to this person at all? He started shouting, and meeting an incredibly aggressive energy, this pressure was so huge that our main character couldn't move. However, the black market boss, as soon as he showed what he could do, told the guy that he was standing in front of him, that he had forgotten a little, but it wasn't just pressure, it was bloodlust, you could definitely tell that the black market boss was just crazy. Just because his daughter interfered with their conversation drains his bloodlust so much. Our main character was speechless, because the bloodlust of the person sitting in front of him was able to injure him, how strong is he anyway? However, it was noticeable that the daughter was already passed out, she would need to be patched up after all this. The boss immediately began to ask, because the beginning was not stopped, it seems that they were discussing the amount that is due for that very bronze flower. Now it was clear that in front of our main character sat the most crazy person he had ever met. But how much to offer this person? This person immediately said that he would give as much as 60 million, it was in this instant that he became the kindest person in the world. The black market boss first thought that it was not enough, however said that he even offered more than the usual price probably starts. It even the main character already blurred everyone's appearance right in front of him he said that his face had changed, not because of all this, but because he immediately said that thanks to a good deal. How could the daughter of a new man be so bold as to steal it when she had such a wonderful father? Our protagonist even went up and took the man's hand and asked if he could call him his father. This behavior of our main character amused the father of the black market very much. He said, of course, although they have already closed the deal, but is he really going to leave already? Our protagonist, looking at all the money that the black market father gave him, said that he had nothing else to do. But the girl also woke up, who forced her to heal, she even asked, after all, is the death of people really some kind of joke for him? Immediately used a spell, which distinguished the girl. The name is one of the most banal, but the effect was clearly worth it, everyone thought it was a real miracle, but at the same time, the main character approached her and said that he did not poison her with something deadly, or something like that. He just lied a little and the girl was shocked, but our character only said that it was also, the girl was very upset. She clenched her fists and started screaming, because really it turns out that she was crying only from fright, or rather her Our protagonist, pouring oil on the train car replied that it was, and then immediately came back from hitting the girl who called our character who should burn in hell. But she is the same one who told her that it is on the black market that someone loses, someone remains a f 
It was the girl who was very naive. She is the main character who immediately began to run in the coal. Listening to the air of the same girl who said that they will still look, someone will remain in their hands. Next time, he would definitely not get rid of her. But our protagonist, continuing I said that next time she just will not engage in theft, but will go earn money herself. In an instant, the presence of our main character simply disappeared, only the doors that opened in an instant were visible. The father of the black market, who was already a little bit away from all the fun, then saw that the man was finally gone. He looked a little at his daughter and asked her if there was no trace of her wounds. The girl replied that it was all true, but the sharam that he left her is still with her. Was she really that mad at him? The girl replied that everyone had forgotten. But the black market father continued to think. He even noticed a strange glow that remained right in the place of our protagonist. He immediately took it in his hand and then squeezed it, now he understood why it had been doused around his finger. The aura that was left behind was sticky and disgusting to the touch, even after being hit by his bloodlust, it only left a small scratch, is he really that strong? Immediately, the black market father recalled the strange feeling he had felt in the past. He remembered asking one of the men to kill him, and the man standing right above him would ask him why he was the one who was trying to kill him, and then he would ask him to kill him, and the man would make him get up all at once because he still had the strength to fight. The man had clearly forced Black Market Father to fight in the past time after time. He exuded the same energy. All these memories caused a bit of a stir in Black Market Father's heart. He was a bit upset in confusion. A little time has passed. Now we can see how our main character is already sitting at home. His older sister is combing his hair, saying that he is no longer a child. He must let everyone know this in order to look neat. Obviously, my sister was having fun, she took all sorts of gels, patched up our protagonist's hair a little, she said that now he looks great in front of the judges. Our main character, who actually was now having an incredible hairstyle for people who sit in offices, said that he was only going to register and not take the civil servant exams. But why hadn't he told her before? Of course I told you about it, but my sister was too caught up in his work. Now we could see the very building where all the regulations were passed. Two people standing next to each other obviously sat down behind our main character. They thought that this person looks weak. Do they really want to be tested at all? That's exactly what they didn't think. But they immediately started fighting because they were both amateurs. He even now knows that it's stupid to judge hunters by their appearance. But wasn't he a patient? Why did our main character actually look so weak? He is our protagonist for a moment, slightly adjusting his hood went on, right with completely different people. However, after walking a little further, he revealed his true face, he could clearly hear the people standing right behind him, and he knew for sure that he would remember their physiognomies, faces, and the shape of their heads. He asked them to prepare, for he would be the greatest healer in the world, never healing them. As soon as our main character went to the registration window, he immediately gave his piece of paper. He thought that most of it had already healed, but was it really that bad? However, as soon as he looked at the girl who was right in front of him, it was clearly possible to see from her face that she wasn't happy with our main character's appearance. She said that they had finished reviewing the application, so she asked them to leave. Still, it was clear that our character still didn't look very good. But even so, the girl could hide her disgust at least a little. Now he was embarrassed, so the girl asked him to go through the next one, handsome handsome, look at him said that someone like not a thief is registered as a target, because if that's the case, then it's definitely not their reputation. It was Jiwon, clearly a well-known figure right in their guild. Of course, he approached the girls who were in awe of him. He asked them to pretend that they hadn't seen him, because it was a secret to everyone else that he was registering as a hunter. The girls shouted in part, but the guy immediately made a cute face, winked, said that they had to keep it all a secret. The girl said that he can rely on them, but our main character has already left the building. It is clear that he has finally finished with registration. I thought about how he only had to go home, but surprisingly, he went a little faster, so why does he need to go home for a snack now? As soon as he came out of there, he noticed how one person was standing with the placard, asking why so many of these words were thrown in the same area where his relatives were. Was it really a peaceful protest? But if you think so, then there were much fewer protests, although it was a real disaster, then it was still impossible to believe that with such people it is forbidden to hold rallies, that they are taken away by the police for all this. Well, I just woke you up earlier, then he could definitely help those very people who now they are standing on the side of the road, without a home, without relatives, saying that all the people of the weak guild could help them. This is a woman who would definitely not have come to organize a protest right now. The woman who fell to her knees asked herself, after all, why did her child have to die in that case, in that place? The woman, having fallen, immediately began to receive support from the man to run to her. He asked her to calm down, that this is already the third day. If she continues, then they will simply forbid her to appear here. But at the same time, the woman shouted that she only wanted to see the president of the association, 
even though it was possible, but very difficult, to arrange a meeting with him, the man just gave her a false promise, saying that he would try to do everything possible. At the same time, another man approached this very man with a cigarette in his mouth, he said that he told him to quietly sort out this place, otherwise he did not listen to him. Probably a man in a suit with a lot of shirt not tucked in immediately threw his employee to the side. It was a member of the Nam Kitty Association who had night classes. The physical level wasn't that high, and the skills were tricked into moving in a deadpan face. It was definitely a hunter. Most likely, he is also one of the subordinate associations, although it seems that it is not worth doing business with him. The man also approached the woman, clearly trying to poke her as much as possible, and then they say that he has already told her that they will not let her near here if she continues to caw insanely here. It's quite difficult to get along, he was definitely a difficult person. The person looking at her asked, after all, why does she ignore the words of others? He just could not understand it, does she really think that she looks at someone like her all the time? The man, having exhaled on its steam, told that it does to itself much worse, and then the guy asked to look attentively at the beginner. After all, to force the person to stop doing something, it is necessary to make it quickly and with all force, only so it will reach it. In an instant, this guy immediately swung at this grandmother. He already thought that he hit her so hard that she flew off, or even died, started talking about how she did a bad thing to him. But then noticed that his fist stopped. It was our main character who stopped the hand in flight. I asked the person, because what is he doing here? You know, the protagonist, looking into the face of the same guy, asked, because why does he not answer his question? Why does the man with the red head ignore him? The guy, despite him, asked who he was, where he came from, why he interferes with dealing with his client. But our character at the same time made it clear that I myself was as close as possible to my grandmother, to a woman, and he would immediately lose his head. Our main character was sure that he was one of the association's subordinates, so with an incredibly pained and vicious face, she said that the association's hunters can't use force like ordinary citizens, is this person standing in front of him okay or even okay? But Nam Kaidak immediately said that he was doing his job, and why does a person usually interfere in his affairs? These words about work surprised our character very much, so he said that he was just an ordinary novice hunter. But Kaidek clearly wanted as much as possible and quickly told him that he needed to disappear in a good way or not, began to harden his aura clearly made it clear that he was ready to accept the challenge. The woman who was standing behind him said that there was no need to worry about her, but our protagonist turned to her and past himself said that the victory will always be for him. The guy who was standing in front of him immediately fell apart, said that he found the main character very loud words, so he'll look how tall he is when he turns his face into mincemeat. In an instant, our main character told him that he had moved, although he clearly warned that he should not do this again, why does he ignore when others tell him to? Auri immediately looked at him and said that he had warned him, in an instant, the same protagonist approached Nam Kaidek's face, and then just pressed him to the floor. Nam Kaidek understood, or rather thought, that this was definitely not a novice, but our character, who had already calmed down, said that a member of the association, who is so called, can only scratch his tongue, but in fact can't do anything. But does he really want to become? Wouldn't it be better for him to just lie quietly in this earth? Nam Kitty got up in one second and got angry. He started shouting. But our protagonist, looking at him, said that he was very funny, calling him by his ability, Master of War. Our main character squatted down and told everyone that he could try it if he didn't have the guts, and then immediately started calling all the abilities of the person sitting in front of him, tricking the movement, chasing or I won't take your favorite face by name. It was the funniest thing. Right now, Nam Kitty was clearly shocked, because how did the person in front of him know all of his skills? But our pro Antonine, taking his badge, said that if he represents an association, then it was necessary to submit the appropriate form. What he needed to protect wasn't the reputation of the Glory Guild, but usually the citizens. The main character, standing in front of him holding my head, I ask, because why are there only hunters around who mowed down gangsters? One of the people who came out of the hunters asked, after all, there were also people arranged in the main square, why was such a thing happening in the territory of the Sacred X Association? Most likely it was the guild head who made it clear that if someone wanted to cause a commotion, but you need to do it in another place. We, in turn, understand that the highest class is the S class. The highest level of human strength, as well as the hunter himself, direct death, defeat, or despair that can be experienced when meeting him. The danger that each such hunter faces, but they are different, they are not ordinary hunters who meet at all, they do not know defeat. They are the ones who lead all the battles, telling the rest to stay behind, because they can be hurt if they stand close to them. They do not despair or give up, they only go forward, using all their skills to win the battle, they can kill the huge behemoth that stood in front of them with just one attack. While others can only stand aside and scream in pain or fear, it is they who create miracles, put up barriers so that they kill others, kill monsters, this is the highest rank. Let's say the president of the association, as well as Miraculous Maria, 
who had the rank of healer, the president immediately confessed that he left the buildings because of the noise, which most likely our main character performed a huge feat. Not not only did he raise the association's ears, but he also attacked its member. Did the newcomer admit that he can impose his opinion on others because he is strong? The president said that it was necessary to think with your head and then only do something. But at this moment our main character said that this is something did not make the president lose his temper at all. I suggest they apologize and then say the thoughts out loud without thinking. But still, if they want to recover them now, shouldn't they do it properly? Of course, our main character understood that this whole situation looked absurd, that it was possible to misunderstand everything. But is it really forbidden for beginners to attack members of the association? He probably knew this very well, but can the hunter who was standing in front of him now use his power on ordinary people? The president, as well as Maria, were shocked, but our character said that if this is allowed, then he apologizes, he would not have stopped him, I would have known that this is the norm. He only talked about whether knights were allowed to attack the townspeople. Well, if such a person as he got into this, then he should be punished, while addressing the president, who clearly tied his hands because of Maria. The president immediately said that he apologized, because he was wrong, that the person did the right thing, that the hunter, that he attacked a defenseless person. Punishment, but as for the victim, he will provide him with a vice president. This was the vice president of the hunter association. You and one here clearly chose because of his good lifestyle. The women immediately responded to the side, but the president said that he would go first, leaving this meeting for later. Our character understood, clearly choking on the appeal, that it was very lucky that everything happened too far away. But why does his head still go? Does he really not know, because that woman was from the same area that was recently destroyed, that she lost a child during that incident, that this is a monstrous waste? It was avoided. Our character immediately started climbing the stairs directly to the president. They say that the president, didn't he think that this building was too clean? He said that the association is too clean, not a single dirt, nice building, but the same area that stood behind is still in pools of blood. The president, who was looking at him, realized that most likely she would drive him out of there, which he confessed to our character. She is the main character also said that he thanks for the excellent protection. He would be happy to hear that there were not many victims, while smiling a little, while asking, because why was the association itself not there? Our character pulled a little bit because I said I honestly tried to understand him, tried to understand the whole organization, but they didn't even try to save them. Maria began to feel not very well, her hands immediately began to run around her body, she clearly wanted to run away to the very room. But the president, looking at him, said that it was strange to blame them, although they had nothing to do with it. Our protagonist, I remember the words, also said the doctor's arguments, more precisely, he remembered that even the doctor had made a video surveillance recording in the area, as he had asked, so he could say with confidence that this was not even the case, because if the glory guild was there, it would be very difficult to reduce the victims by half. As far as he knew, the boss was hard to deal with, but why did they throw away the lives of those they could have saved? Why was the president now standing in front of him and saying nothing? Our main character obviously forced the president to stop being silent. He immediately approached him. But the president only said one thing. He said that our main character is still so young. So the protagonist did not understand what he meant. But the president continued to say that he was showing emotion instead of thinking rationally that he was thinking too narrowly. So he was not able to distinguish between right and wrong, does not understand when it is worth being a freak and when it is necessary to remain silent. Of course, the president understood that he was full of energy, but still, made with an incredibly sinister face said that he should have been aware of who he was talking to now, and then calmly convey the essence of his thoughts, because he is a person, and not some belly. Our main character, the food smiled and asked, after all, does the president himself really say something about animals? Does he really have to know who the president is talking to? What exactly does the president sound like to me? Well, how can he not know what is in front of him? And in front of him now stood the number one knight of Korea, who was defeated by Kang Hyun. The president, who clearly lost his temper and began to exude an incredible aura, immediately made it clear that he was trying to be polite with our appearance. But doesn't he think that he is overreacting? Because if he is so confident in his own strength, then why doesn't he want to fight now? However, our character, having started to exhaust his aura, realized that he can continue to talk even if he is not strong enough, so why does the president himself ask if he is too confident in himself? Our character understood you understand that no one can know for sure until they test you. He wanted to check it out. He got up because he never does his head before going to bed with the president. By that time, a strange man, whom we could see before, who met from you only when you were standing near your car, they said about him that in real life he looks even more attractive than in pictures. He was fed up with fans, he understood that the main thing is not to attract attention, and then they do not tear off. Quickly I need to get an autograph and go to my own place, he immediately said that I need to give him a piece of paper and a pen. He said this several times, because he could not believe that people were going to get an autograph from him, 
or they immediately said that it was all wrong. He was very surprised to be approached, I don't even know who he is. Jiwen assured himself that he was attractive, that he attracted people even if they didn't know him. But John was told that he wasn't, and then immediately pointed to the Sai. He was sure that he shouldn't have known the hunter, there was a knight of the highest rank, they thought that they want to get an autograph from him. The resident at that time, despite our main character in a huge abyss of power, said that he was asking to educate if he apologized now, then everything would be fine, now it was necessary to make a decision that he would not regret. Our protagonist just gave him the middle finger that his left hand is not satisfied with this. The president, who was clearly getting even more nervous as he straightened his tie, said that the guy had obviously messed up, that he had decided to dig his own grave, so he immediately decided to teach him a lesson. The president immediately put his hand right in the face of our main character, said that he would be an exception, but at the same moment he was stopped by Maria, who said for the fifth time that the president's joke went too far. Maria immediately put up a barrier that reflected all the power, they say that they understand his intention, but he shows all his strength to inspire the newcomer, but is afraid that people may misunderstand him, does he think that it's worth stopping? In fact, the people who were standing in the area were just inspired, they thought that the newcomer won the lottery, you saw the demonstration of the president's strength, the president, looking around, immediately began to clap our main character on the shoulder, said that it was a little awkward to teach him all the abilities together, whether he knew for himself anything new. However, our character was too disgusted, he understood that this was a shameless bastard in front of him. The president, that he leaned right in her ear and told her to wait for the hero to build such oxygen, because now they will see each other quite often. Maria, that she still stood there and told the president to stop, because she dispersed there, but if he continues, then she will not stay away. Maria immediately bowed, said that she was very sorry that she had nothing to say about the incident with the gate, promised to make changes and compensate the victims. Characters, that she promised said that this area was under the control of the slide guild, she was obligated to protect it, even a three-year-old child knew about it, so they were leaving Maria and the others delayed their promise. Maria started to apologize again. But she is the main character, I told her that I don't need an apology for the show, because why do they need a strong shield? As well as a miracle, why these changes, as well as compensation, what is the benefit of this, when all people are already dead, they cannot be restored. The president started draining energy again, but Maria immediately told the president to stop, and everything I said to our bodies was absolutely true, that it was all on their conscience. Some might think that the main characters are possessed by feelings of superiority, but this is not so, you even despite the fact that he twirled the courtesy of these freaks, who did not even lift a finger to protect these people. He was just filled with rage when he thought of his sister who almost died because of them. Do these think they can cover it up with money. Our character immediately turned away and said that the dead could not be brought back, that the guild was weak, it was his fault. He also turned away and said that it was not worth using people's lives to thrive in his own business, he simply believed in their words. Maria, who was still looking at him the same way, stopped and said, what class did the person in front of her choose? Our character immediately turned to her and said that he was a healer, that he couldn't save everyone either, but he wouldn't abandon people like the glory guild did, he was sure of it all. By that time it was already evening, President Maria was standing on the stairs, but the president agreed that a very unusual person, because he has a very heavy ether for a healer. He will become and will be an outstanding healer, she is the main character, who is going home was very upset, he thought only then that he had he couldn't win, so he lost. He wasn't going to fight him, thinking that he would win because of the scandal he caused with the association. People gathered around, but first of all, Maria was intervened and stopped the fight. But at that moment, he felt insignificant, felt that he was facing a great and still beloved mountain, which he simply could not overcome. He knew that he mistakenly thought that he was stronger, but apparently, it was still far away. At one point, our protagonist came home, seeing the table, that the door was open, do they really have guests? He immediately went in and began to take off his shoes, where he saw that his sister was communicating with someone, some strange things were coming into his hands. Sister, on our character said that I couldn't warm my hair because he made friends with such a nice girl, it was the same daughter of the black market, who was obviously very happy to see our main character. She's the main character obviously wasn't happy with her, so you already told her to go out, pointing at the door, as we could see, but it was already evening, and the girl was immediately thrown out of the door our protagonist, as soon as he did, immediately began to close the back doors, and the girl asked to wait after all, their friends, didn't they make friends back in the alley, isn't he so heartless to his only friend? The girl immediately started wiping away her tears, pretending to come to see him, but wasn't it the boss of the black market who sent her? After all, if that's the case, then I need to tell him that if he dares to contact him like this again, then let him forget about their future transactions, 
I'm clearly threatening the girl. He said that he was probably an important salesman before him, so if I wanted to ruin my relationship with him, he'd better stick to the limits. But all at once, which was now behind him immediately sent him flying, sending him sitting on the floor. She asked him how dare he throw out his girlfriend instead of inviting her to the house. Didn't he think about how much it would hurt her, or was it? The girl immediately ran to the sister of our main protocol agency while crying. Black Market got in the car with our main character after a while asked, after all, is he really sulking? She had already apologized to him as well as for contacting her sister but said that they were not going to do anything with her. But why would he even react in such a way that they wouldn't do anything to her? But our main characters only said that it was all because of her father, Yacha. Although he is honest in his dealings, he has too many skeletons in his closet. He doesn't know about his past, his motives, what he is aiming for. If he had placed a dangerous artifact on it without your knowledge, could she claim that nothing would have happened to his comprehensive? The girl understood that this was a rather difficult question. But her father wanted to be a good partner for our main character, which is why he sent her personally, even though our character was sure that he was just following him by using her. He heard that sunflowers are getting harder to get, demand they are still the same, but the association has started not to keep a close eye on them. And at such a time someone appears with the flowers of the sun, he would also keep an eye on him, would be in the place of her father. But he didn't expect them to start tracking him in any other way, how much did they underestimate him? Of course, the girl realized that they were found out so quickly crucified one room was with a special case, and once again no one asked her to follow anyone. It was very strange, but does he know? Does he know at all? But they are relatives with her father and even growth. And he calls her father because he got such a nickname on the black market, so he is not her real father. To be honest, she is no different from an ordinary homeless person, I have no idea what he liked about her, maybe she is special. The girl was clearly glowing at this thought, she also asked the main character to stop behaving like this, you see they kind of like instead of the type of girls who think that they are princesses and all the lands, but the girl of course said that our character laid because for sure he felt, but often different from other people, he an unusual person, and the scar on her face was proof of that. To this day, she still can't understand why she did it. The day she was sold on the black market, then he looked at her and stabbed her in the face, she wanted to kill herself. She was desperate enough at the thought that she would have to spend her whole life with such a person. Such thoughts she met the next day, but her father did nothing to her and in the rest, too, the point means characters. Looked at her said that there is that is to go to the hospital, because so strong was spared that she does not remember anything. But the girl immediately began to shout that this is all not so wheelbarrow despite not touching, that she probably forgot that the last time he threw her into the wall of a wheelbarrow at all. But the girl just tried to choose the words, and then asked how he thinks the owners of this car died, what did they drive now? The main character was obviously surprised, because he had no idea he was afraid of such things, but she sort of arranged something like a psychological test. But now in our body came up with another idea, because there is so think, why does she drive cars so easily, does she really have a driver's license, or is she now just breaking the law? Most likely, the girl started sweating profusely, she obviously didn't want to answer his questions, so she decided to answer her own, she asked if he had ever heard of a poison poppy. Of course, our character has heard about it, it's a fairly well-known plant, but it looks like a normal plant, but if someone works and I drink its nectar, they will lose control of their feelings and they will start rehabilitation. It was a drug that was called strongly addictive, it was very difficult. A person gets hooked on it almost immediately. But the worst thing is that it does not harm your body in any way and everything turned out to be addictive wheelbarrow it was all very strange. But the girl realized that most likely he does not see anything so terrible in it. But if so, then he will also easily pull on it, here so the poison magician destroys human life, that is, although it is easy to buy, but it costs a lot of money, because it just costs a lot more than the product itself, when even the most dependent are broke, they cannot stop taking it, this is how addiction works, this is exactly what happened to the owner of that the car itself, everything got to the point that he was not able to buy a poison mage, respectively, could not pay her father, well, what does our main character think, what does the father do if you delay payment for at least one day? Of course, he dismembered that guy and fed it to his dog, it was her father who did not forget human feelings and compassion, only death awaits them all. The girl said this without a trace of regret, she understood that the people who were getting on his nerves, the people who were trying to steal him, and even those who would not be able to follow his orders, she hated him for this, even started to rebel at one point, stopped listening to him, tried to steal money from him, she was crying, angry, really thought she was going to die when she saw his eyes that day, but he just didn't do anything. That's exactly what happened to her, but as she said, who doesn't know why things turned out this way, but still assures our main character that I have something to worry about, after all, when he started to do it in front of him, I will ask in his place with someone else. 
then he immediately lost his head, so he likes our protagonist. This information immediately tore him to the end, but our main character was chatting. Then managed to get to the right place, where he thinks our character, she led him, of course, to the dungeon where the famous branded flower of the sun should be located. The monster there will be much stronger there, because there are silver flowers. This all made our main character very happy, and the girl said that she generally hopes that he will still return to her as a whole and unharmed. She immediately tipped a little to the side and wished him luck. Our main character also smiled in response and said that she did not wind up anything for herself and also did not care. Because it is our main character, it is our character that will become the new hero of this place, the hero and savior of all the dungeons. After a few seconds, we could see inside our character, and the girl immediately opened the bags and began to get out all sorts of unnecessary junk, and the girl completely forgot she took one potion. So the character didn't understand what it was, but I didn't understand how so many things fit in such a small purse. But the girl only said that this is the same ampoule that I recently wandered into in her family, it was perfect for attracting monsters. Most likely, our body should be in her opinion not surprised at all, but they should underestimate the technical abilities of the black market. Where she was born and raised, she only said that they should trap right on it as many monsters as possible, which they can kill and get a little thing from them. First you had to dig a hole and then pour the given liquid and was itself, and then wait for the monsters to appear and fall into the trap. They try with them once or twice, most likely our character was very surprised at this whole thing, he even had to lose his speech yes, but the girl who turned around noticed how the roll was opened, and then the sound of drops was heard, it was noticeable that our true place immediately spilled out liquid. The girl, despite him, could not believe all this, she thought that he was completely out of his mind, was he really tired of living? If he so wants to die, then you need to do it alone and not involve the girl. But she is the main character, despite her said that he should only interrupt everyone. But the girl who looked at him said that you need to ask for chatters, and then take the one that gave him the point. She, she said that it neutralizes the ego, its actions last only three hours, so it's best to keep track of the time. The girl who also took the flipped would say that once the temporarily exited, then she would get out all by herself, so he should also keep up. She is the main character looking at her from the side said that he was well prepared for such a place, but really in order to follow him, of course he is Polish. But the girl said and asked for forgiveness, but she didn't forget what he had previously done, so hope that he doesn't get caught up in the pressure of feelings again. Even the main character braids with his own behind his back said that next time you shouldn't bring him pills. The girl said that the poison would kill him, but our main character only said that you should not bring him a pill just for the reason that he feels at home in this place, while constantly inhaling the aroma and plants that stood nearby. He set off again, knowing that the black market was a place where more than just selling stuff was being done, and considering that, he couldn't underestimate it. Looking back, he noticed a lot of goblins, he had no idea that the effect would be so strong, there were hundreds of goblins around him. They were quite weak, no matter how many of them there were, but this place is definitely suitable for testing his ability, because it wouldn't change the fact that they would all become fodder for his cultivation. He also stood up, and then activated the poison step, he was able to activate level 2 already, thus sweeping through all the goblins. In an instant, the blade worked, he carried through the body of the goblins, who immediately began to run away, they clearly realized that the enemy was beyond my strength. She also played the main character with a smile and began to approach and ask them to play with him even more. He had the face of a madman, he was definitely playing with these monsters. As soon as she caught up with one of them, the other one started laughing, looking at their bodies, and then striking a pose for each of them. At first, the goblin didn't understand why he was so small at all. Well, immediately after seconds of coloring the purple connection, I started acting instantly, poisoning their bodies, and then he would go to a peaceful place, so the main character thought you thought it was too easy. See his abilities acceleration was perfect for fighting monsters low levels, but in addition to the dream changer, which unloaded enemies, there are most likely other skills of a weak ball. I probably should have asked someone else once, but his pride wouldn't have allowed it, but I think this is the most likely answer. As soon as he finished dealing with all the goblins that were around, it was him who decided to rest for a while, it seems that he destroyed all the low level monsters that were in this place. He was sitting on one of the mountains, which he distributed with the help of goblin corpses and glasses sitting in the sun, he decided that since he had nothing to do, he should check the window condition, which he hadn't checked for a long time. As soon as he called up this window, he was very surprised, because he did not level up too much during all this time. He was an unusual person, the class level remained first, he earned a little more points, it was the poisoning step. He was certain that his body leveling speed was too high level, after all, if he reached this rank in a very short time, then he would be able to become stronger than he could faster than expected. After looking around for a while, he realized that it was pointless to think about it now, and first he had to find the very sunflower that he had come for. He even doubts that all these goblins have hidden the silver flower that was lying next to him. Although there was clearly something wrong, 
because really this flower is located somewhere here, because even though this is a dungeon, but it's strange that after the forest immediately goes to the desert, it was too suspicious. Immediately descending this mountain and went towards the desert point he stepped on the sand realized that someone in the distance something will definitely appear point at the same time something started to move on the sand. Right below him, he realized that still in this place there were other monsters that can show off your strength. At this moment, right in front of him, a strange creature fell out of the sand, it had a black color, its limbs had a bright burgundy hue, elephants were huge. But it was obvious, most likely in front of him was the same dungeon that was supposed to protect this place, it looked like a huge centipede, or a centipede. Our main character, standing up a little, then raising his head at this huge monster, which was several buildings high, said that most likely he and the girl would stay in this place for a long time, there was a poisonous scolopendra in front of him, the physical level was quite high, the difficulty was fourth. Because the main character decided that no, or rather it's just not worth delaying time. He miscalculated a little, he clearly will compete with this monster a little. Now his gaze was directed directly into the eyes of the same centipede, whose teeth exuded an incredible level of venom. From the youth of potassium on its skull, and our protagonist realized that he now had to use his poisonous step with which he must defeat it. He was clearly determined to win, it could be seen from his pronounced expression, which could make it clear to everyone that he was now focused for fifth like never before. He was clearly now not afraid of the monsters he was fighting against like everyone else he had fought against before him. At this moment, the girl who could not find a place for herself was watching the peasants who ran next to her, she understood that the effect of the antidote was about to end, she did not know what to do. Because if the antidote ran out, then most likely our main character would just die, that's what she thought. But then, all I thought about was that this guy probably left her, just ran away from her, maybe hid. It wasn't a very pleasant experience for me, but you and I understand that our main character was still in that very battle against that very centipede. The centipede continued to dodge, and the carapace that met our protagonist's sword was so strong that you would think that it could not be penetrated at all. Our character didn't feel very good, because he knew it too, he thought the shell was just impenetrable, he landed a hundred punches, but he only managed to get a few scratches on it. He knew that at this rate it would never end, so he realized that it was better instead of trying to finish this task, all you had to think about was how to survive his attack. In fact, the monster immediately sent its numerous limbs in the direction of our main character. He noticed this only managed to dodge, he was very glad that he could, but looking at the destruction that one of the legs of this centipede left, he realized that no matter how strong the carapace was, but he definitely had there must be a vulnerable spot. This thing doesn't care at all because of the wound on its body, so if even a little bit of our gate didn't slow down, it would definitely turn into mincemeat. Sinking down to the ground, responding to the sand that was under his feet, he looked at the 40th leg that kept crawling right in front of him, he understood that it was a rather huge problem, understood that it would not be finished off just like that, only used the physical attacks that he had used up to this point, but it is even more dangerous to fight on top of it. The terrain also did not play into his hands, there was always sand under his foot, he understood that he would need a poison step right now. But to activate it, it was necessary to hit the ground, which was simply impossible, because now he was on a shaky sandy surface. It was clear that this fictitious ability was reduced by more than half, but even so, a little nervous he said that everyone was already lucky, because he would be able to find the silver sunflower much faster than earth. He jumped up and started looking for that very flower, as soon as he was upside down he saw that very flower, even though his weak priest, silver flower cross in the middle of this very desert, it was determined by him, however everything was going too smoothly to be true, so he just needs to get to it, but without the speed advantage, he will definitely go to this monster, he will not be able to forget about this grammar that was now behind him. After looking at the same thing, the centipede immediately went to him, it was clear that this monster would not leave him alone, he first needed to make the most out of the poisonous step. At one point, he tried to use his ability, but at that moment, his feet began to sink into the sand, which made the 40th leg act, and our character is forced to think that he is definitely at the end. In an instant, the centipede immediately swept right under the body of our character, sending him flying. The impact, the collision with the carapace was so strong that our main character's entire body opened up with blood, was very painful. It felt like all the bones that were inside him were just melted in an instant, so if the centipede hit his head, then he definitely wouldn't have survived. In this scenario, all he had to do was use healing and then think about how he could win, because he had no other choice. He even thought about how he could take the flower and then leave, but he had backup. Since his blade can't pierce through her armor, it's useless to use his ability, White Dream, right now this blade was turning into a useless pile of metal. But at the same moment, something strange began to happen to the blade, it began to unfold, which surprised our main character very much. He saw that every blade was being transformed, but the system said that now the sword form was changed and the acceleration mode was added. 
our main character, laughing, looked at it all with a smile, now it seemed to him that he was standing on a solid surface and not with sand. He realized that with the help of these boots, he would be able to break through the armor of that very monster. After looking at the monster that was coming right at him, he focused and then used the poison step again. But for a moment, it became several times faster than before. A lot of legs, even in spite of all this, continued their pursuit, it constantly collided with the ground, and our characters, constantly looking around, realized that even so everything was very dangerous. After a few seconds of running around, he was finally able to get that same silver flower again with the root, he realized that now it was possible to finish with the monster. He took out his blade, used the white dream form to accurately put the monster to sleep. It would be nice to take the core with you after killing the boss, but unfortunately, but this dungeon is under the jurisdiction of the association, you will only have to retreat. If it continues, then everything will go down the drain, even his recovery to the hunters will be threatened. It remains only to apply a white sleep, and then parasitize the body of the Scalapendra with a soporific solution. If she died, she would disappear with her on the ground, so he had no choice but to put her to sleep. But the problem was that he just couldn't hit her carapace until now, but as soon as he thought about it, he remembered how much less reacted to his words as well and futility, in other words, if there is a high probability that his will and his body are connected to each other, and he came at this moment to think. Since his physical level was quite high, he wouldn't die if they tried to pierce through his body, so he needed to form the ability to break through strong armor. He only needed to imagine it, he realized that he needed to imagine the perfect form that could pierce through the enemy's body. In an instant, his sword turned into a spear, he immediately ordered his new spear to use all its strength, and then to return it directly to the body of the centipede point he only thought about how to break through the enemy's body. Rose that it would be enough to do once again point as soon as his spear hit, then he began to spin again and again in that place, constantly penetrating deeper and deeper. The monster began to scream in pain, and then, under the influence of the poison, immediately fell into the elephant. Our main character, smiled noticed how the body of the centipede fell to the sand. I knew it took a lot longer than planned, but what was the girl doing there, since it had already been seven hours since they entered the dungeon? But the girl at this moment was preparing to S our protagonist as soon as possible. The character who didn't want to rush so much continued to feel great, as if he was currently holding the same silver flower that he went to this dungeon for. He knew that if he sold it, he wouldn't have to worry about money for a while, he'd have enough money to do whatever he wanted. As soon as he went behind one of the trees, he saw a girl, he did not understand her feelings, so with a slight hope, he immediately asked her, because he was a little late, but the girl was incredibly angry. She said that these were his last words before death, she immediately approached him and I asked him if he really thought that everything was fine, despite the fact that he was gone for seven hours. Our main character asked for my forgiveness, but the girl immediately said that he had balls since he made her wait so long. Our protagonist, looking at her hands, noticed that most likely the poison began to act on her. Although she had taken the antidote, but her body is not able to withstand such a strong poisoning, judging by the state, but she was already at the limit. Our main character just couldn't believe it, because really all this time she was waiting for him, but looking behind the back of the same girl. He noticed a lot of medicines and other antidotes, which could mean or that the girl wanted to save him, despite all her screams. Our protagonist walked a little further away, immediately activating his healing ability, which he directed at the girl, and then, with a smile on his face, while putting his hand in his pocket, he said that he was very grateful to her. The girl immediately felt the same feeling that I felt when he cured her for the first time, very warm relaxing feelings. She looked at him with a smile on her face and said that now she knew that he was not so and then immediately noticed how he was leaving, and then she started yelling at him to wait for her. Who communicated with his pet immediately asked him to that remained with the girl, because I do not interfere with your help. It took up to a month after the intense battle with the rock, the girl gave him information about 15 more poisonous ones in the dungeons, so he was able to get another silver sunflower and five bronze points they guessed. Now, he is more satisfied than ever with his carefree life. The girl constantly goes to visit our protagonist, professionally constantly based on like romance and everything else, they've become really good friends. So even when they fight, they argue about the fact that the girl didn't add raw materials, because now they can afford to buy such things. The girl, wiping if he did not understand that she simply could not believe that she had forgotten about him, they immediately continued to have fun, added more and more slices, which made all the strings of our main character smile more and more. It was already evening, clouds were gathering, our protagonists were getting dressed, sitting on one of the porch steps, and talking to their sister. He knew that the girl was already leaving tomorrow, and he was even a little sad to realize, considering that they had become so close recently. He was even worried about her, he could hear her repeating the same words every night, begging her father not to do it, asking, what is it? Why he did it, probably, but the girl herself does not suspect that she is talking at night, or that it was not, but she has a scar that she does not suspect. 
I heard her say daddy, they're the father, maybe there's no real father, not the boss of that black market, even though they're both worth each other. Even the main character, leaning a little on the floor, realized that the girl did not have a sweet time. It was already morning, our girl, also our main character was accompanied by her sister, she asked them not to hang out with strangers, not to talk, with other personalities, and then, the girl said that two months had already passed since their meeting, although not so much, but she was definitely used to it. The sister, despite all the girl's embarrassment, hugged her and then told her that she had become a younger sister for her, that the girl could visit them at any time. The girl, despite all the embarrassment but shed a few tears, was clearly pleased. However, it was clear that even though the sister says that the girl can visit them at any time, even our main character doubted that they would have free time. But now the girl just burst into tears, she said, that he would definitely be visiting his new big sister. They found themselves in the black market, the girl's house, they hadn't been here for a long time. But did it really become quieter there, because before, but there was a fight every day. However, the girl, looking at him, said that even though he sees this as a black market, it is safe to say that they do not fight every day, on a regular basis. It was at this point that two people quarreled. They shouted that someone wanted to divorce each other, asked for money back before they killed each other. But the person just said that they understand what came over him, because they have already closed the deal. She is the main character, I feel now superior to the girl said that this is exactly what he was talking about, and the girl, looking silently at it all, said that our protagonist did not say a word, because she now understands everything herself. Our friends asked, after all, whether the girl was going to separate them, because it seems that everything was completely under control, because now they let their feet into the battle. But the girl said that this is not worth worrying about, because although it is true that in the black market weaklings themselves are to blame for everything, they just do not allow themselves to be beaten, and when asked why, this girl immediately replied that only one person is responsible for the riots here, something akin to the police. It was at this moment that this person appeared, he was wearing a strange outfit, he immediately looked at the man with his cold gaze and said that if I didn't stop the fight, then this person simply wouldn't be able to stay away and just watch. The person immediately approached this man, asking him who what kind of person is he that dares to protect him. He sighed and looked up, closing his eyes and saying that he was sorry if he had confused me. Sure enough, his voice had something very similar to what he felt from Gu Gong. But he just said that his father is the only person who runs this place, and this man is just one of the team of order that is responsible for street brawls most likely he was as strong as the father of the black market. Did not even say what should be, but is so populated that he is able to fix a hunter of a fairly high level. But the girl, looking at him, asked, because how does he know that in front of him a bandit is quite such a level? Of course, our brother they didn't want to give away everything they knew, or rather have his subject pass on information to him, so he said it was kind of an intuition. However, he didn't really think that person seemed so strong, it was a member of the Tiger Guild, a one-on-one -on -one expert, and one of the special features was the Berserk skill. He doesn't look like an ordinary crook, so as soon as Kim turned to the man, calling him a police officer and said that he wanted to clarify something to him, he told him something here is the seller and divorced him for money, so that the victim here is him, and not the seller whom he beats up point then he asked if it was really the police in the walls who turned a blind eye to fraudsters. The policeman said, despite all the surprise that I am now on the black market closing the deal, it closes with the ends. Kim immediately made it clear that he didn't give a damn about all the rules of the black market. He only thought that he should beat the shit out of that very seller. But the police said that he gave this person a chance, immediately accelerated. In an instant his fingers, or rather his palms, were right next to the eye of that person the shire type himself, saying that it was Kim who was in trouble, so it was worth seeing if he had a spare life for that. Now it was clear that the man was not a timid man, and it was clear that it was bad to do business with him. Our main character, who watched all this just gaped, but the girl. That I was there for him, that I felt like I was right about that guy. Kim, who was not in a good state right now, called the man in front of him a clearly angry and dissatisfied with everything that had happened. So he immediately said that he was ready to continue taking the battle, that he was ready for the consequences. The only reason he said this was because he had a certain skill, because the more he fights, the stronger he becomes. This skill, as we noticed earlier, is called Berserk, a combat skill that increases skills at the sight of blood, but the longer this skill lasts, the faster the owner loses his mind. Our main character was surprised and shocked by this ability. After all, the ability that allows you to become stronger over and over again at the sight of blood was simply amazing, it was even worth saying that this ability was simply monstrous, which could terrify almost anyone who saw it in action. He, looking at the very aura that now appeared around that very person, realized that it was visible even from his growing ether. The system immediately began to warn our main character that his opponent had reached the highest level. Now it clearly became clear that that scumbag was now a knight of the last B rank, he was definitely higher. 
Kim, noticing that everyone was silent, thought that everyone was now afraid, put piles in their pants, so he warned that his life was precious to someone, then he should run away, or start begging for mercy, which will only be now. Judging by the amount of air, one might have thought that a monster had appeared in front of them, but it was too late, because the same person immediately started attacking the same man over and over again, saying that he would not hold back any longer, no matter how much the man asked him. Right now, his strength was comparable to a rank. He had clearly become stronger than most. But something was wrong, because Kim's attacks had stopped, and his eyes were filled with surprise, or maybe fear. He didn't understand anything, and we could see that the man was already behind him, breathing down his neck. It became clear that this person simply could not cope with this man. When I got angry, I immediately started trying to hit this man, saying that his pathetic trick just wouldn't work. I immediately turned around and tried to hit him, but as soon as one of the blows hit directly into the body of the man himself, something terrible happened. Our true Denny's just didn't he couldn't believe it. He didn't understand what had happened, and then he noticed that the same man just took and deflected the blow of the same guy in himself. How did this person do all this in general? Why does such a calm energy emanate from him? Why no matter how hard that guy tries, he doesn't succeed? Why that same boy just can't cut off the man? Why everything was useless? However, he just kept saying that the same guy just keeps punching the air, that it won't work out for him because of this, does he really see ghosts, or something like that. The man immediately said that this is how it will be, if that guy wants it so much, then the man will help him quickly get rid of the excitement, in an instant the man struck. But the same guy just couldn't notice the movement, he thought that there were now three men who were going to help us there constantly attacking him. But the man only continued to say that the guy needs to rest properly. For a moment, three columns of it were carried by the blow, the guy just fell to the ground. And the man was satisfied with such an enchanting conclusion, many thought that he rarely uses the power of this technique, apparently, but that very berserker was quite strong. The girl, looking at all this, said that it had not been so much fun for a long time, that it was worth contacting the rest of the members of the Order Squad so that they would deal with this violator. Our character, look at that very man understood that he was a real monster, and this is most likely only part of his strength, it would be a row with him through, because even after such sudden movements, he was not at all out of breath, besides, your movement, which he reflected, his physical skills like the knights, but when the illusions appeared, it looked like he was in a spur. Even the main character immediately tried to study the target, but notice that his records were deleted, that there was no access to basic data. Most likely it was a truly unusual hunter, but at the same time the system said that access was obtained, this man's name was OG1, he was 49 years old. The peculiarity of which could not be determined, most of the data was erased. Probably, little was known about him because of most of the data deleted from him, and this information that was from the system was of no use. But the system also said that he was within the physical level, he was definitely not below the ORS level of the hunter. Of course he would like to know his class, but no this is the point at which the information was given that she was a person of E-class. This really surprised our protagonist, because it can't be that someone with such a rank could cope with such a high master, because for a start the energy was definitely at a higher level. In an instant, OG1 came close to our body, which really scared him and surprised him. The man also said that he didn't want to scare him, apologizes to our protagonists for his behavior was very nervous, he screamed like a girl because he got out of nowhere, he was very embarrassed. But at the same time the man looked at him and said that he heard that he was helping the same girl, and also believes that he is engaged in sales with her father, so if you don't mind, this man wants to take him to him. Of course, our main character agreed to all this, but cannot get used to his usual excessive friendliness, who is he anyway, is there really people like him on the black market? She is the main character, who finally got to the very father of the black market began to do business with him. The boss said that yes, for this all 7.5 billion, that it was a very profitable deal, and now this person is looking, that he is now, more precisely. She is the same character rowing money with a shovel, it's time he probably wouldn't stop kissing money, it looks pretty disgusting. Despite him saying it's none of his business, the boss said he was so itchy, beat him to death, but enough of that, the boss heard that he tried to turn up for the showdown taking part in the hunter's exam, could anyone even know why? She also gave the protagonist a better look at him and said that the boss sort of found out that healing was one of his abilities, that he was different from normal hunters, and went for it all out of his personal interests, but also because he couldn't prove himself as a hunter using his basic skills, which is why that's why he decided to become a healer, and not someone else. There are of course other reasons, but cannot tell them before, if at all questions. After looking at the floor said that that was it, he decided to close today's deal. The boss was already ready to say goodbye, but our main character said that there was still something left. Bossov, perplexed, said that they understand what he is talking about, but are still ready to listen, but if he dares to f head or play a f then you need to be prepared for the consequences. The boss was very angry at this point, he clearly wanted to show his superiority over the people who were standing there, 
Our character said that there was no need to intimidate, because there was still one thing left that he did not pay him for. The boss, despite him saying that he already gave more for the flowers of the sun, which he got, on our character only told him that he needed information. He did not pay for the information just provided. The boss, starting to tap his finger on the table, said that he had already heard, and found out that everything was fine, what if he did not pay for it? Our main character, looking at him, said that the boss would not laugh, that he is the most reliable person he has ever met, and he is also an important client for him they will pay for any information, or question the relationship, what is he willing to sacrifice? The boss looking at him gave him 905 points out of 100, explaining to this thread that initially it wasn't even specified new deals, but he understands the rules of the game, and was able to turn things around in his favor, it was quite impressive, he liked this confidence in him, but with the staff communicating he was worth 5 points. The boss immediately replied that she was the main character, an ordinary brute, the real one, who still needs to be looked for, but what does the kid want, since he's so hard on him, really more money. But even the main character immediately replied that he did not need more money. He needed the same man who was standing on the street, he asked to learn in his technician. Everyone was shocked, so the question, pissed himself, looked at our place and asked again, because does he really want to teach his technique? The boss, who later said that the payment for his lessons and the information received, whether they were worth the same amount of money, something definitely did not add up, even if you take into account the 750 million that he just received, it was very small before that. Our character, Despite him, said that he thought so, although it's a little risky, but we'll still learn from him, even if you have to stand in debt to the boss. The boss looked at him and then smiled, clearly pleased with something, and the girl who was right behind him started asking him to stop doing this, because what did he even think, was he crazy? Because taking a debt from her father was too much, the father turns people into mincemeat, it's only necessary to make him angry. The girl talked about it. But our character, thinking about it, understood that it was a little dangerous, it was about the black market, and not someone else, the reaction of his daughter was expected. But the boss, despite him, only wanted to ask him one question, why would he go so far? He wasn't sure if the more you could do, the better, he'd only watched him for a moment, but it was enough. Such power was definitely worth the risk. Sela his on sides from parents was capable on many, but his skills still not enough, all previous battles his me left this feeling, that he supports victory only excellent normality, but without it nothing differs from novice, which only swings a sword is able, using the same skill him accurately stronger, as for the man's ability, it could be said that in most cases, after the hunter awakens, it is extremely rare for any jump in rank to occur. In other words, it is likely that the physical level of OGOE in about the same point but in a martial art is so strong that even the system does not maybe our protagonist put down the same box of money and said that he was doing everything possible to get the necessary amount, they didn't have much time, so we had to get straight to the point. Even the main character, looking at the boss, asked if he was ready to make such a deal. Our protagonist understood that if he could learn his technique, it would greatly help him in the future. But the boss, looking at him, realized that our main character was desperate. Which was understandable, the boss understood that he would make a deal with him. But now is definitely not the right time, however he will call him as soon as everything is ready. The girl who was looking at Jiho was asking if he was ready, because he was being dragged in without his consent. But Jiho that he follows any order of his master point boss, despite our main character saying that he can take the money, which was very embarrassing. He knew that he would get nothing from these pennies, but Boston calls the price after the end of training. After which he just got up from the chair and said that he was waiting for a counter lesson, and then asked if our protagonist would like to learn something from him. Even the main character confidently replied that no, something really stirred up the boss, it was obvious that our protagonist simply did not want to die. Finally, he was able to finish what he hadn't been able to do for a long time, only the exam remained. For a moment, someone called out to him, it was a girl who was glowing with happiness, she wished our character good luck, and she even warned that she would kill him if he failed the exam. I looked at him and smiled, and then I realized that in the future, he would be at the top of the list of those who passed. As by the time there was news, the information that the crime that was being committed by superhumans is getting more dangerous, but no one else needs to stand aside to be just an observer, who possesses tremendous strength, all commas possess a sense of justice, it is they who need hunters like them. This was the hunter qualification exam, which was held once a year and was known for its high requirement as replaceable. Everyone was more popular than celebrities, everyone thought that they wanted to see a new high-ranking person, but even though this is just an exam, the whole country is watching this event. Everyone thought it was just hopeless, thought Maria was the last person who could do anything. In such a stream of heated discussion, the annual hunter's exams began, many people gathered, many comments, but the guild employee asked nearby people if they thought that this year there would be some person who would reach a high rank. The person who was standing nearby also said that high ranks without a doubt have a huge value, 
However, even he thinks that this is unlikely. However, the man immediately began to glow that hunters exist to protect the civilian population. The guy who continued to look at his phone thought that despite the fact that recently among them divorced they are only bandits. The man realized that people need not just a capable hunter, but someone who can raise the spirit of this country. He was talking about how it was likely that there would be someone like the cute man that all the girls in the area were looking at right now. Nice looking, unassuming, one of those hunters that the entire nation was looking forward to, it was UG1. Immediately, all the reporters came up to him, asking, after all, really registered as a healer, can he explain the reasons for the chosen class? The celebrity immediately looked at the reporter and said that it was great that there were knights and other classes among them who fought monsters that attacked cities, exterminated the population, but in the end, they were the ones who were here to protect others. Now he was glowing, saying that he wanted to save people, that this was all he needed. Therefore, he was extremely happy that he had the skills of a healer. All the girls who stood around and thought that this was just the perfect person, but the guy replied that he would not be the highest rank, that he had no sense of duty, no responsibility for his own strength, no different from other hunters who call themselves Bandit Nami. Did he really want to save people? Of course, this was because for him, the status of a hunter is just a stepping stone to get a higher position. The hunter who was standing next to him was just shocked by it all, and the guy asked him to move away. It was clear that the president of the association went off the rails because Kang Haiyan is a corrupt official and there are dirty rumors around Gu Gong. Although he will pretend to be a hunter with a huge enterprise behind him, but in reality he is worthless, the reality was that people did not trust him as a hunter. Come to think of it, a long time ago, there was one person, although they had forgotten due to that very incident, the only one in the entire world who could trust everyone, the strongest huntress. They were shocked by this, but asked not to talk about it, otherwise they might be locked up in prison. Everyone only thought that they needed to find one good hunter, but they thought that they were not pessimists, because their world had long since rotted away. By the time the person who submitted the application appeared, everyone was looking around at him, and he came up to the registration table and said that he had left a request for a healer. At the same time we could see that the girls who looked at him were also shocked, just about people like him. About hunters with a huge pod as the employees said, it was today that a new high-class hero was born, for example, our young Hyasung, who began to have an incredible appearance, which he did not have before when by that time all the hunters began to take pictures in order to write down their own cards. Everyone was just thinking to get them done as soon as possible. A lot of people kept coming up to Jiwen, telling him that he looked incredible in all the photos, that he liked it all, that the photographer was not equal in this industry. The person was just happy, in fact, he understood that it was a matter of skill, and then that he just managed to work such an amazing model, this one was excellent with him only for the reason that he was the one next to him. The photographer looked at Jiwen and asked if he could use his picture for the title of the article. The guy, having asked how he would make the headline, heard the answer from the photographer after a short silence from Tom, that he had already thought up that the savior of the new generation, that he would become the successor of Mary, because how to make such a headline, it sounds brilliant. Jiwen said that the photographer is not only an excellent photographer, but also an excellent journalist, but instead of posting from everyone today, it is better to post it after he takes the first place in the superhuman rank. Therefore, for a moment our main character passed behind, but the photographer, continued to communicate with the guy, said that you need to take a couple more pictures with other concepts. But as soon as Jiwon walked away, the photographer immediately started shouting, saying that someone was right behind this guy. Jiwon dropped the comma in his eyes a little darkened, as soon as he woke up, he noticed a guy holding him in his arms, Jiwon that someone had the audacity to put him in such danger. But at that moment, all the people who were standing right next to him were there, they couldn't contain their surprise, and now they had an incredible picture in front of them. Our main character, despite him, as if in romance asked, was everything alright? But Jiwon thought he couldn't, that he was being photographed with a freak like him. You finally kept him saying that if he was earlier, then he could heal him. A little bailiff apologized, then asked if Jiwon was okay. Even the main character clearly couldn't understand why he was so angry, so if Tom needed to pay for dry cleaning, he would give him a phone number so that he could ask for a little. But Jiwon, with just a flick of his hand, immediately threw away our protagonist's phone, and then immediately fell, already broken. He said that he sent money for repairs, and if he didn't think his request was too rude, then could he stop attracting too much attention to himself? Jiwon's face visibly changed as he said that he was the center of attention today, so it would be strange if all the attention was on him, and then, after looking at him once again, he asked me to remove phrases like now for dry cleaning. I'm more like that from my vocabulary the brain of our main protagonist, according to Jiwon, was found in the trash of donations. Jiwon put his hand on our protagonist's shoulder and said that he hoped he finally got the gist of what was going on, so he asked them to stay out of each other's eyes, and then, moving to the side, his face changed as if he approved. 
even the main character, who clearly did not want to suffer such humiliation, asked to turn to him and said that he was talking too much with his rotten tongue. Do you really want to say that he knows the person who made those clothes? We, in turn, understand that these clothes were sewn for our protagonist and his sister. This clearly upset him very much, so our protagonist, taking Jeevan by the scruff of the neck, asked to apologize, calling Jeevan a dog. All the people were watching this, even the main character immediately noticed the same grin on the face of that very guy, but now it was too late. Because the first test had come to its beginning, everyone asked the candidates to gather at the device for measuring superhuman indicators. Of course, a lot of people started discussing the whole incident between our main character and then Jiwon. Jiwon, in turn, looked our protagonist in the eye and asked if he wanted to make a deal, a bet. At first, the guy asked our main character to calm down, because not only is he a healer, it was more accurate to say that Jiwon had the ability of a knight, that it was just unclean. But the guy just smiled and said that the rules were simple, because if the indicators of our main character are higher than him, then he will be the winner, if however, the losers give 10 million to the winner. Of course, if he wins, then he will give money and apologize, because does not 10 million frighten our main character. All this time, our protagonist was recording everything on a tape recorder, so he said it was fine with him. He knew that the 10 million guy with their stats was pretty cool. So he showed his tape recorder to the guy and said that he would kill him if he decided to change the rules. Obviously G1 got in touch with him, this time with the wrong person. By the time the trial started, Maria, who was on the jury, couldn't believe that G1 was having an accident. Previously, there was so much ether, she was sure that in their first meeting, he was at the level of Ranky. But the ether that now comes from him is not lower than B rank. G1 was not even an official hunter, so he would not have been able to enter the dungeon, so it definitely should not be. Maria immediately turned to the president, a guild member. The president only replied that he didn't know, he wasn't as sensitive to the ether as she, Maria. Maria, who was deep in doubt, realized that the president was avoiding the conversation again. And a couple of months ago, she understood that there were rumors that G1 often visited their research lab. She doesn't mind. I used to go there funny to look at new inventions or on a field trip. But what if he got involved in some then an experimental program? And after visiting the laboratory, he received a huge amount of ether. Something definitely fell off here. So Maria understood that she could not and would not be able to forgive herself in the future if she did not know anything. She definitely decided that everything knows something more. When by that time the candidate at number 7, 99 continued to pass, or not pass, but when Jiwon realized that our main character was now going to the test, he asked if he would have 100 points at all, because if he begged, then he could become from him. On our main character, without even turning around to look at him, it was raised that he, or rather Jiwon, glows so much, although he does not even suspect that he is digging a grave for himself. One moment, candidate number 117, or rather young, and candidate number 272 passes on, it was Jiwon. Immediately, they asked us to stand in front of each other, whose Jiwon was glowing with happiness at that moment, thinking that soon he would be receiving congratulations about his victory, that he would see the face of our protagonist, who would clearly be disappointed with his defeat. But looking at our main character, you could tell that he was not worried about this at all, he was also confident of his victory, just did not show his feelings, or rather just emotions. Now we could see the same people who were there when our character applied, they finally met Jiwon, the most promising hunter of this year, who was glowing, they all asked questions, because what will be his result, everyone put on what they are under the video, what will be able to show the higher classes, everyone will bite their elbows, looking at his skills. This time, there were a lot of weak candidates, so even low-ranked hunters would have shell casings snatched away. Jiwon, who continued to walk forward, knew that all these speeches were not about him, because these simpletons only know how to talk, so he wanted them all to look at him and be surprised, because he was ready for any challenge, he was sure of his victory from the very beginning. As soon as the jury announced the Litos that candidate number 272, UG1 is required to start checking, then this guy also went ahead. He, with a smile on his face, immediately put his hand on that very strong ball. He only thought that he would be able to show everyone who was gathered in this hall how much they were different from each other, how much stronger he was than them, that they would all bite their elbows, realizing that he was not their company, they are their friend, not their company he is. Just for a moment, the energy of this guy began to flow into the balls, the ball acquired a strange yellow hue. Candidate number 272 for all the stronger he is than they are, that they will all bite their elbows, realizing that he is not their proper, they are their friend, not their company he is. Just for a moment, the energy of this guy began to flow into the balls, the ball acquired a strange yellow hue. Candidate number 272 completed the check, everyone, looking at this, could not believe their eyes. They did not think that there could be so much ether for any person at all, 
while I was surprised even by the very light that began to descend from the ball. They only thought that it was on the a completely different level, although there were doubts, but still, as expected, he showed a result of 9.103 points, which was clearly more points on this day. Everyone started shouting that this guy was definitely going to take first place this year, despite all the other candidates. Even though it was only points, even among hunters of fairly high ranks, such a result was rare. Everyone started clapping their hands and opening their mouths in surprise, asking ourselves, how can such a person be so perfect? But G1, leaving for his place, only wanted to look at our protagonist, he thought that most likely he was just afraid, wants to run. Most likely he will not even be able to overcome such a gap in points, but why was it his own arrogance? It's not too late to retreat in fear, ask for forgiveness, or tell him that he's wrong, in other words, humiliate himself. But then our main character began to step forward, he immediately approached the ball, which surprised Yu Jiwon very much. He smirked a little, then asked if he really wanted to prove that Yunkuk had balls and also quite a bit of a temper. But Yunkuk didn't say anything, he just put his hand on the ball as well, even though Yu Jiwon was looking at him. I thought his pride wouldn't help him. Jiwon closed his eyes and realized that his family would already be proud of him for the courage that made him decide to go up against him, the most beautiful, smartest, most amazing person. But Jiwon, because he closed his eyes, couldn't see that glow, but these people who were nearby started praying. Because it was such a huge light that I was just blown away. Even the president was shocked by this energy, he saw how strange it began to swirl all over the field. Reflections, after all, does anyone really want to say that such a large amount of ether can be a candidate? As soon as all this was over, all the people were just in shock, they could not believe that now the witness, they could not even pronounce the very figure that was now sitting in front of them. Candidate number 117 completed the test, and Yunkuk wondered what kind of result he could get after all this. Immediately Jiwon started to worry, he clearly started to feel a strange sensation on himself. But the device that it was now three days old wrote that this result could not be calculated. Of course many people thought that the device was faulty, that all this is strange. This has not even happened before dot but Jiwon, who was standing next to our protagonist, started laughing. He started laughing to the point where he started crying. But he wasn't laughing at him, it's just very rare when the points are so low that they can't even be counted. But where did the glow come from? Really stage lighting. Jiwon, approach one of the people said that our hero will probably be able to pay off his debt for a year, or even that's too much. But then Jiwon was taken down, it was the same man with glasses who was talking in the lobby about how there won't be any worthwhile hunters this year, and he hit Jiwon on the shoulder, clearly not expecting it. Jiwon was a little upset by all this, but then one of the people who came forward said that he was asking everyone to step back, because with the malfunction of the device, candidate number 117 will be tested again. He only asked all the candidates to step back, it was the chief judge with the name Pio Hyaku. The next judge was Choi Gangjin, who was clearly glowing with happiness despite all this, even the main character looked at him with pity, and the judge said that he was bringing this application because of a problem, so if it wasn't difficult for our protagonist, could he even pass the test one more time? The second judge kept a strange ball with him, which glowed even more, and most importantly, the judge replied that this particular device has a higher sensitivity, so it is able to measure even low ether values. No one at that moment understood what was going on, but the person who was standing next to him realized that it was a thing, he turned to his friend and said that it was a golden core. It was a high-quality gold core that is used on dungeon bosses with a danger level equal to two stars, an incredibly valuable artifact. So most likely I know him already knows that this thing is used to measure the ether of monsters, not for monsters with low and farm, but for those whose ether is so high that it can't be measured. Of course, the chief judge did not expect that there would be someone with such a high ether, because before that only one hunter passed the test with the help of the golden core. But the result of the test remained unknown, but today I will be able to establish the result, and the judge congratulated our board, saying that he passed the test with a mark of 100,000 points. Everyone started laughing, shouting, or whatever, everyone couldn't believe it, they thought that a new hunter of the highest rank had appeared in front of him. Everyone was now running to him, reporters, people, while completely forgetting about Jiwana. He also used his step to hide from all the people in an instant, he knew that they almost ran him over, that it was all dangerous, but as soon as he approached Jiwan, he clearly made it clear that they should show the whole situation. He immediately went up to him and started trying to get the result that he had been trying to achieve all this time. Jiwan, clenching his fists until they bled, couldn't say the words, he tried to say them, but our protagonist said he couldn't hear anything. Our character, after looking at this person for a while, realized that he would not get anything out of him, so he immediately gave him a piece of paper with an account where 10 million rubles would be transferred. Jiwon, who was so angry that blood came out of his eyes, realized that our main character would be his new target. Here we have two people who are also surprised by this result, she starts to discuss with each other all this, what you saw, they are surprised by the number of points that our main character could get, it was the bishop's guild. 
The red-haired man who was standing next to him replied that the maximum amount of points that a golden core can show is 100,000 points. It was the bishop's guild master, which meant that no one knew exactly the level limit of the guy who was currently at the bottom. The same Krasnov turned to his friend, telling him that he himself knows, but they need to lure the same guy to them, to the guild. The guy immediately realized that considering the fact that they had snatched promising hunters from them last year, no matter what it was, they should do it. Just now, Navalosa was clearly a little aggressive. He asked not to even remind them about the very time when all the newcomers were taken away from them, leaving them behind. But still this year you need to be on the tee, this time they definitely won't let others take this guy away from them. Because it was clear that the guild leader himself also wants a dot he thought he was just a brat. Clutching the railing that turned into an ordinary beam he realized that the very guy in front of him was a real dragon. Which is worth catching a dot but by that time the first check was already completed. Now was the time for the second, many people put on all sorts of special fields that monsters were placed against. Our main character was already able to put in front of his own, but he did not need to defeat him. In front of him was a certain white tiger with a huge crystal in his forehead. Most likely, this beast needed to be treated because the first test evaluated your potential while the second checks in practice. The amount of ether already speaks volumes, but the next test that is being conducted now is a comprehensive assessment of people's actual healing abilities. All the targets that were in front of them are wounded monsters, so if anyone can heal the monster, they will definitely pass the test. But it was clearly noticeable that our protagonist had a test that was too obviously different from the others. They all saw that he got too huge a monster. They thought about the fact that the monster was too big. That even though she got 100.000 points on the tests, but such a monster is too much, a beginner will definitely not be able to cope. So not one person thought, but our main character, looking at all those checking him, and then at the monster, understood that the huge thing in front of him actually seemed much stronger than the very centipede that he was fighting, how was it even caught and chained up? Obviously, this monster looked different, compared to ordinary monsters, from what kind of hell did this monster come out of, our character could not even use his own body on it. Our main character realized that the very person with whom he had a little quarrel is most likely the son of the vice president, this person definitely had a hand in this, because this test was too strong and difficult. But even though the monsters of the other candidates are all niche monsters, in other words, weakened monsters, these monsters can be cured by almost anyone who passes the first test, but this test will be much more difficult than he thought. Sure enough, he immediately put his hand to his face and asked what they were all going to do and how to treat this huge thing. But in an instant, he immediately began to hear only one thing, he began to hear that the monster was addressing him, the monster was asking, after all, is this the same person who will kill him? The monster at this moment raised everything on its paws. But this is not the most amazing thing, because can it really talk why would I kill him? But the monster only continued to look at our main character. They say that all people also skillfully pretend to be f because they are the ones who destroyed its core. Our main character, I realized that he was dealing with a destroyed core, I realized that everything would be much more complicated with this, but still there is not to kill him, but on the contrary, to save him. The monster, after listening to his few words, said that he had already warned our protagonist that his core was destroyed, it was too obvious a bluff from our main character. But our character, starting to exude a bit of ether, said that he was bluffing, or not, it's up to the monster, but whether he sees that his death will also bring him a lot of problems, he must save him for his own sake. In an instant, our main character stretched out his hand directly towards the monster, a strange energy began to drain from it, which surprised the monster. People from the bishop's guild noticed that the candidate, or rather our main character, was starting out. They understood that he was really different from the others, even with his amount of ether, it couldn't be that he had any experience in healing, was he really a novice? Monsters that felt a bit of healing on themselves realized that most likely we are facing a person who uses healing for the first time, rather, the abilities of a person who worked on them day and night, so in this case, he should understand that by healing a monster, he also puts a life on the console. Our protagonist, looking at him, would ask not to worry about this, if he dies, then he will not pass the test, that's all. Monster, a little want to laugh asked, because really our main character is risking his life for some kind of test, and he wants him to believe his words, because if you don't want to lose your life, then you should stop now. Our main character, looking at him with his usual eyes, said that this does not concern the monster, why does he care so much, and even the way he says it, it seems that he is quite a good monster, so he deserves treatment. Do not worry about our character, because he is stronger than he can it seemed that all they had to do was sit quietly and wait for it to end. The monster couldn't believe that our main character would be able to heal all these wounds, our protagonist just laughed, he said that he could do even more than just heal. The monster realized that this is an unusual person, treats him like a relative, because do people respond to the hostility of monsters? Our main character said that in general, 
but he is right, usually a monster kills people to fill its stomach and they can not help but hate them. But this is no different from the behavior of people towards each other, because if you think about it, there may be monsters that can save a person in the future. Life, for example, the pet of our main character. The monster, looking at this and smiling a little, immediately received a slap on its skin. This was a blow from our protagonist on it, who said that with the healing completed, he even left him one small bonus so it should be used if he wants. The monster asked about this bonus, but the main character said that before starting, he said that he could even do more healing, he quietly loosened the chains on his body. Just wanted to try, everything worked out as it should. The monster couldn't understand how it was possible to weaken the target, despite the fact that you are only a healer. But our protagonist said that part of him is right, but he can't reveal all his cards, because when the time comes, you just need to run away from here. It was the first time monster had met a him and our character accepted the compliment, even though Monster assured us that this was the second time he had felt this way as a bone woman. The monster immediately began to exude incredible energy on everyone around. He said that he was an unusual monster. He is what he calls a spirit. He is the guardian spirit of the great spirit world, the Imperial Tiger. But what is the name of our protagonist? Our man immediately replied that his name was John. He was going to become the strongest hunter in the world. But the spirit, looking at him, replied that he was giving him part of his life. Our main character could not understand what happened, but thanked the big guy for it. The monster was at a loss because how did he call him that? Our main character only said that he is a very big tiger, so he will just be a big guy. The Imperial Tiger was too long a name. Of course, Tiger should have gotten used to such performances from our character now, but in any case, it was time for them to say goodbye. He was looking forward to the next meeting. Candidate number 117 was finally able to pass the test, which was announced by the examiner. And at this moment, the same handsome man who thought that he could not even cope with the smallest animal at the height could not understand why they did not heal early. One of the inspectors immediately approached Jivan, said that time was up, that it was time to leave, but the man, looking at the inspector, clearly became a man. More aggressively, he said that he only needed a minute to finish, it would definitely be enough, but the exam time came to an end, the examiner announced it, and he asked all candidates to stop using their skills. G1, turning around, couldn't understand what kind of freak stopped the test, but it was the examiner who said that the test should be equal for everyone, this is what the chairman often says, but only thinks that they were waiting for special treatment for him, doesn't he want to become something that he doesn't always want to be the chairman or rather, your father? The guy started shouting, saying that he couldn't figure out which parliament the man was from, because did they really want to look down on his father? John's father is much more influential than any other chairman, is everyone really tired of living like this? But the examiners immediately called out to Anjun, asking him to get Yu Chun out of there. Grabbed the guy, not allowing him to move, which sighed and said that everyone should calm down and go back to their place, because equality is one thing, but looking at them now, it seems that Juan began to deplete the ether. This is an excessive use of abilities, which leads to shortcomings of the ether in the body. Juan was clearly shocked. This was the first time he'd seen it. The man started kicking, saying that he had very little time left, but it was already too late. Our main character was passing nearby. He noticed the very guy who was sticking out money for him. When Jiwon saw him, he said that he should have a chat, but it was too late. Our main character whispered that the same person should go away from here, he realized that even with a simple check, he could not cope, but Jiwon lost his temper clearly much more than he wanted. He said that they will immediately remember the face of our main character, and then they will talk to him. We understand that now we are facing the father of the same person. He talked with the judge. He even heard that his son was awarded almost the lowest rank. The judge replied that his son showed an excellent result on the air test, but he flunked almost part of it, which surprised his father very much. He found out that it was this particular examiner who prevented him during the exam, his son told how dare this examiner so brazenly lie to his face. But we understand that today is exactly what the chairman was missing. The chairman even talked about what he heard, that it was because of this examiner that the golden core failed. Does he know how valuable it is? But the examiner kept looking at the floor and saying that he was just following the rules, that it wasn't his fault. But that didn't stop John's father from saying that this was exactly what the rules had led him to do, that the core had failed after the candidate had passed the test, that this was that gave birth to the examiner. The examiner, they show their emotions said that he had no excuse, but what would he do with the corrupted gold core? Of course, it didn't matter anymore, because everyone said that the core was damaged, it had to be disposed of, or it had to be made bowling holes, it was a joke from the chairman. But a lot of people who were now gathered around our character continued to congratulate him, they called him a high-class hunter, it was Maria who gave him the badge.
The hunter's exams were finally over as expected, he was awarded the highest rank, and that guy was barely able to get a little higher than the lowest rank. A pathetic cretin, he had too much ether for such a low level of skills, just a pathetic amount of traffic, but there was nothing to be done. Well, as soon as our character went out on the street, it was noticed by our story, who gathered around him, everyone called him Angel angrily, but he is the handsome man of this world. But how did all the people find out about this? Immediately, they put a microphone in our character's face, said that they were reporters from the newspaper people not, this person was clearly a without a topic, that a high-class hunter could finally appear. What did our protagonist feel at all? Yunkuk said that it was nothing special. But the questions were interrupted over and over again, so our main character lost his temper, he immediately wanted a microphone and told everyone to shut their mouths. Everyone calmed down, and our character said that there were too many people, so they would answer everyone at once. To be honest, he replied that he was very happy to get such a high rank, but he was not ready to give an interview yet. It was at this moment that he said goodbye, and then immediately now with the help of his poisonous but since he, despite the discouragement of all the reporters, understood that even if they were to find him, they still wouldn't be able to find him, he decided to go home. But at the same time, he ran into those people from the Bishop's Guild who introduced themselves as Na Hanchen and also Na Yelchen. Immediately, both people clearly made it clear that they would have to talk to them a little, but ask if he wants to join them, if our main character has even heard the Bishop's Guild, they will listen to all his conditions. Our main character, raising his hands, said that it seems, but everyone misunderstood him, he does not plan to join the Guild. But at the same time, the head of the guild appeared, who said that such a worthless guild as bishops, you cannot join at all, you should join the guild of glory. Now we have the same examiners who are discussing the fact that the same boy received a rank lower than expected, he was already born in his knees, even if he wants to do something, many will doubt it. Although we are very lucky that we were able to give up the glory guild with such weak skills, he if I could have done a much better result, I wouldn't have been so careless. As soon as the man turned back, he noticed that his passenger was in a good mood. He immediately said that they should take a look at the head because something interesting finally happened. A very interesting case. But why exactly should our main character join the Guild of Glory? because they are not in a position to offer each other something like this. The person who looked at the chairman said that besides, the bishop's guild first made him a suggestion that he should keep order, but the head who pushed back the person's hand said that if he didn't remove his hand, it would be very problematic to live the rest of his life with just one hand. Now the first one, with white hair, appeared, asking if the head wanted to die, but the same time these fragments burst in the air, the head clearly made it clear that he did not give his best. Everyone regretted not having Mary around, and even if his entire body was there, she would have been able to heal him, but the head had already warned when to approach the given person by hitting him. That the rumors didn't matter, because now he might have noticed that one of the humans had stopped him, but did they really think that they were so good that they could compete with him? He was clearly given to understand that they should participate in this, they both asked people to stop it all, because do they know that this is a living area? But most likely they have already screwed up the offers, so despite our main character saying that he is very bad at showing himself from such a different side that they could talk another time. However, finally already said that the bishop's guild is a little unsuitable. Immediately, both of them started shouting, because why not, maybe they are a couple of years behind, anyway. But our protagonist replied that it was just too far away, that the guild is located in Busan, that he can't think about working from home yet. But what kind of hunters work from home at all, so does that mean he's going to join the glory guild? Looked at the head said that yes, if he dies and breaks out again, then there will never be sued, but the person, more precisely the head or walked smiled, he said that it's only a matter of time, that in the end the only suitable place for him will be the glory guild. But the death of a hunter, for hunters dealing with monsters of death, is the closest friend, but what dungeon does it carry most in life? Whether it was a poison dungeon that contained me everywhere, or a dungeon that contained monsters of an incredible level, the answer was simple, it was a beginner's dungeon. These dungeons are light enough, but that doesn't mean they'll be safe. Many novice hunters underestimate the danger of these dungeons, and then die a senseless death. It was also for this reason that the Hunter Association had a special rule that from now on, they would need to clear five three-star dungeons, or below a group of five hunters, before they could go to a dungeon that matched the level alone. Thus, the hunter's probationary period program was formed, even he who has the right to officially enter the dungeon must participate there, he cannot circumvent this rule. The people who met him immediately started smiling and running towards him, not like Yu Cheng and Yu Sung, they were a spurs. Even the main character introduced himself as a healer, but does he know where everyone else is? Right now, both people who introduced themselves as Park and also as Kim showed up right behind them, they had heard rumors that John was handsome. But it felt like he just had a plastic surgery, and the jokes were over, but weren't they going to have a big meeting, because they wanted to talk about a dungeon. The same person apologized, 
then said that his tongue was too long, but is this really our character's first dungeon? Our protoka did not understand that it is better to answer that this is so, although it is true, his first dungeon, but at least officially, because there is no illegal one. But it's actually already more than 10% of the dungeon, so at the same time, the person started telling him that they can tell several things at once. But they are kind of veterans, despite the fact that our main character has the highest rank, but he's just a healer, probably, but he won't be it's so easy to deal with monsters, and they just help people with this, if you pay a little money, they will do whatever they want. But what happens if he refuses? The man looked at him, immediately made an aggression, and then confessed that they simply would not do anything, they were just trying to help novice hunters. The brothers looked at it all, they were clearly not up to it, but still she is the main character, despite them realize that in front of him were knights of rank they are very high, and if they really have a lot of experience, then this dungeon will still be sprayed to them. But why is this knight available to enter the guild, and these guys are clearing the dungeon for cheap, do they really say that they are helping them? Of course, this was a lie, it is obvious that they were kicked out of their guilds, and now they are usually vagabonds, and coloring alone is a little scary. Then they take money from newcomers that at least live on something, and offering such conditions to a hunter of huge rank is a trump card up their sleeve. Two people also entered the portal, but do they really not take our main character seriously? But it was our character, but he still decided to see what happens, because if they go over the line, he will have to execute them on the spot. Some monsters called Nutria appeared in front of us, they were quite small, agile, but still weak. The two hunters continued to deal with them, saying that everything was easy, that they needed stronger Norags, because these were too boring. The main character, looking at all this, understood that they are very enthusiastic. But why do they try so hard against such weaklings? Because if they decided to fight all their lives, you also need to do it properly, they just pretended that they were fighting hard, but they deliberately allowed one enemy to lick the comma and really all this is just because of the money. Our character, looking to the side, noticed that one monster was heading at him, so he decided to use moving. If someone else were in his place, then he could definitely get hurt, but not like this. Slowly but surely, their joke goes further and further. People, or rather brother and sister noticed how cool all the people around them were fighting, that hunters of this rank are on a completely different level than them, but are they going to join them? Our character, looking at all this, asked, after all, why did they give them a lot of money, but would still stand aside, because even though they said that they would do all the work for them, but why would they not take on weaker monsters? The girl with the yeast in her hands said that they didn't have enough confidence, it was their first time entering a dungeon. Our main character, looking at them, asked, so what did they forget there? Because they were monsters of the first level, what is so frightening about those monsters that are no different from an ordinary rat? And even if they were earlier, they most likely forgot who was in front of them. Brother and sister right there they decided that they should start fighting, they decided that they were not as weak as they might seem at first glance. He'd love to be able to motivate them a little, but that would be more than enough for the first time. The main problem was up ahead, and one of the people noticed that the rat started to fall a little to the ground from being hit by lightning. Two people immediately realized that it worked for customers, their own handiwork. Really, despite the fact that they were advised to stand aside. Well, two people and my sister said that they still need to do something, of course the hunters liked their mood, but they needed to keep an eye on it. Very soon a rodent of the same size would appear, at the same moment something very interesting would start, because some strange sound started behind one of the trees. Everyone asked for attention, everyone was already well aware that barefoot monsters are not easy, so you just need to get down to business. The person only asked to prepare to pay another one million, if he refuses, then I will be responsible for everything that happens to them. They didn't understand what they still needed to find, because the contact said, there was a clearing of the entire dungeon killing the boss, well, the hunters immediately showed their true colors, that they should close all their own, if they pay money for it, they will finish the last pennies, right in front of this voice. The bald man came forward and also said that if they were dissatisfied with something, they would have to eat the last crumbs in front of the monster, because if this person paid, there would be no problem, so will they pay. There are also hunters here, so what will our main character do? Our character's rank was much higher than the others, but did he still not understand that this is a perfect cleared dungeon? High-ranking hunters are the only ones who can avoid the attention of other people. Everyone he saw was like that, so how exactly was our main character different from others? He, who for the first time had such a huge influence and attention. It should be fueled to think that this is unfair, but even though he is a high rank, but without two knights, the damage will be noticeable. He still had enough experience and skills, so it would be quite difficult to protect the people behind him from monsters, moreover, he was only a healer who had never fought a monster face to face. The brother and sister immediately began to ask, after all, what is our main character's fault? Are they not afraid or are the consequences the same hunters? But the hunters only said that they are not afraid of the consequences, because even though our main character has a high rank, 
He is nobody until he joins the guild. What can a guy who does not have support from the outside do against him? Is she really scolding? The hunter had clearly made it clear that if they didn't get paid now, they would simply leave this dungeon. With wounds all over their bodies that he had inflicted on himself him, then after hearing that the insignificant healer had almost killed them, would they believe him? Of course, they will believe it, because if it were more accurate, then they themselves and spread rumors. This is the reason why people need a hero, but at the same time they are immensely envious of him, which is why his high rank is far from the best, as everyone thought. The time for thinking was coming to an end, and no one cared that you were just a newbie, but what our character would accept, whether it was distributed, or whether they would think it was unfair. It will be just great if the same hunter can film it in a first-level dungeon, and then sell it and raise it a little closer. If a high-ranked hunter didn't want them to reveal their weaknesses like this, the person was right, he didn't think that they would meet a complete However, our character, continuing to go in the direction of the hunter, said that when he was a child, the hunters turned out to be incredibly cool, but as soon as he matured, he realized that they were real pieces of wood, isn't he right? Immediately, some strange aura visited all the hunters, continued to say that he was watching how far away they would not find all this garbage, but this was beyond all bounds of decency. He had never met such people before, the broadcast was so huge that the hunters started complaining, but the main character continued to say that he wanted to tell a story. That on the day of applying, some hunters personally taught one guy a lesson, but the very person who taught the lesson was exactly him, which is obvious it was out of bounds. The hunters realized that they hadn't read about it in the news, but if he wasn't lying that no one would help, they took their swords in their hands and told the healer to thought that even if they finished him off, they could take it. But why didn't the hunter attack? Why did he stand on the ground? I wonder why I was so scared right now. Now our main character was asking who was really the main character at this moment, really them. But all the people were just looking at the fact that our main character was a huge monster. The hunters, under high pressure couldn't move, she, inhaled said they were just entering you, couldn't even say anything, didn't they still realize what an ass they were in? People, looking at all this, just started to tremble further, and our character says because if he became out of fear because of such garbage, no one would have received such a high rank for anything. Where did so much confidence come from in hunters? Why did they freeze? Did they really paralyze their language? Of course, the main characters are at home because this is too much, but it would be better to teach Frost how it should be. He immediately asked the hunters for one sentence, even if they are not able to answer the word. They can at least give a sign whether they understand how critical the situation is, what happened to their faces, really do they find it strange that a healer can do something like this. Our character clung to the grass in an instant, and then headed for the monsters in an instant. Our main character, along the way advancing as an eye monster, said that he is Chan, that he will clear the dungeon for them all. One hit followed the monster, the monster flew away, and our character said that the price doesn't really bite, only two million for hunters. But did he think to mock them, the hunters were shocked. It was loud, but the boss hadn't taken enough damage, and if they continued fighting like this, they would only make him even angrier. They thought that this was the reason why a healer wasn't of any use, but since when can healers move like this at all? Immediately, the hunters had a terrible thought, and what if he was deliberately trying to anger that very monster? At this moment, our protagonist continued to anger this monster further and further, simultaneously jumping and running around. The siblings couldn't believe it, because was he really doing this seriously, of course, he was probably just bullying them, but did they really think so? Our main character, approached the hunters, said that most of all he hates the quarrel of people who play with the lives of others, he doesn't even consider such as as people, but do they think that they are coming too late? The hunters only asked us to stop talking nonsense to our main character, after all, but he really doesn't see any difference between the monsters and them given by the hunters. Does he mean that if he just kills me, if I don't listen to him? So do hunters accept offers, or not? The hunters immediately opened their mouths, they kept replaying themselves in their heads the name, as our goalkeeper's places in the nets were called. A 20-year-old hunter of high rank, the second Maria who will save people, their full zero with zero experience in hunting, what kind of ability did he have? But maybe they will die, they only thought that the wrong choice was made. But now, despite all the exclamations, she is the main character immediately went and in an instant I was able to turn the boss with my kick. Everyone was shocked, but did the healer really do this? The hunters clearly understood that high-ranked hunters were too strong, officially, but our protagonist would not have been in the dungeons, so before that he could bring the bosses to exhaustion, and that's all, but now we are much easier. Because he doesn't have to hold back anymore against the background of that centipede. No, even a goblin will be stronger than this monster in front of him. In an instant, he cut it down with his sword. Hunters, looking at all this could not believe that the healers in front of him was a monster, and not an ordinary healer, but then one of the hunters felt that okay was touched by a hand on the shoulder, and then our character said that most likely they should think about everything, that he saved them from paralysis, soon they will be able to move normally again, and also let them not send money to someone but to his account. 
they didn't realize that it was so fast that it was impossible to even describe, they completely screwed up. The hunter at this point looked at him, asks, because where is he going, they are definitely not finished yet. But one of the hunters asked us to leave our main character in the country. The bald ones didn't understand what was being said, but the hunter said that he had seen it all for himself, that even if they attacked him, they would end up being just meat for him. But what the hell did they even do? These actions got into a fight, our character went to the side, directly to the sister, who was told that this performance was just amazing. That he was so strong, but does not brag about it, shows mercy to the weak, even fair to his enemies, it was very cool but what came over them at all. Our main character just said that everything is fine, continuing to laugh with them. Then, suddenly, Yu Cheng and Yu Sun received a notification. Yu Chen asked if Yun was sure about this. Yun Kuk didn't understand at first, but then he said he wasn't sure. Yun said that the money was supposed to belong to them in the first place. Yu Sun said that this money was rightfully given to Yun because it only caused problems. However, Yun said that wasn't the case. According to him, he received his share and returned what belonged to Yu Cheng and Yu Sun. So Yun asked them not to worry. The hero said that he only wants them to keep what happened a secret. Yunkuk said that he also has a lot of other ways to make money. Yunkuk smiled and said that was why he didn't need their money. The sun was already setting and it was getting darker outside. Yu Cheng smiled happily and exhaled. He said he was powerless here. Yu Chen didn't think there was any point in bothering Yunkuk with this anymore, since no matter how hard they tried to persuade the hero, he probably wouldn't change his mind. Jiangguk said that's exactly what it is. According to him, he will not accept this money in any case. Then he invited them to leave. However, Yu Chen said that he couldn't let Yung go with nothing. Yu Cheng said that he couldn't leave his savior empty-handed. He said that since Yung Kuk didn't need it, he should at least take this. The guy handed the hero some paper. Yung Kuk took it and didn't know what it was. It was written about the Umbrella Corporation. Yung Kuk felt like he'd heard the name somewhere before. Yung Kuk didn't understand why Yu Chen had given him the card. Yu Chen then said that he could see Young wondering why Yu Chen gave him this. He asked Young Kuk to look at the name. The director's name is Du Isu. Then gradually, Young began to understand what was going on and what the director's name had to do with it. Sung realized that Yu Cheng, Yu Sung, and director Isu all had the same last names. Young Kuk was about to ask the person about it in shock, but Yu Chen immediately said that it was exactly like that. Then they said it was their father. Yu Sung said that it wasn't such a big company, but they would be able to help with something. They said that Yung can contact them at any time. Yung Kuk realized that these guys had a lot of money. He wondered what it was. He covered his face with his hands because he was very ashamed of what he might have said. He continued to cover his face with his hands and he invited them to leave. Yu Sung said they were happy to meet Yung Hyasung. Some time passed. Hyasung said that he collected 14 cores this time. He said that the dungeon was level 1 so it's no wonder why the cores are so weak. Then, all of a sudden, Yunkuk remembered something and wondered if he could only absorb black cores. The black core is extracted from poisonous monsters and filled with poison. The core is forbidden to be consumed by ordinary hunters and is placed in a separate category. Then, the hero received a notification that he had no restriction on absorbing cores. It can also absorb ordinary cores. Yunkuk was happy and said that he was already scared. He said that then you don't have to go only to the poison dungeons. Then he started to absorb the cores, but something confused him. Namely, that the core has already disappeared. Yunkuk said that even though the cores were weak, he had collected as many as 14 cores. The hero called up the status window. He looked at his status window and said that the cores were weaker than he thought. There was also a communication skill. It was a skill that allowed the wearer to communicate with monsters, but it was only possible to communicate with intelligent beings. Yunkuk said it wasn't a bad skill, but he couldn't figure out where it came from. Then the hero realized that it was probably because of the dragon. Yunkuk thought back to how it turns out that he was able to talk to a huge tiger that time because of this ability. Hyasun wondered if the tiger had managed to escape. Then he decided that there was no point in thinking about it now. The hero knew that he was still weak and his progress had slowed down. He wondered if he should go to the poison dungeon on the sly. His progress stands still as he lacks black cores. The amount of ether in black nuclei is several times higher than in ordinary ones. However, due to their toxicity, they can't even be used as an energy source, let alone absorbed. At the same time, they are a tasty morsel since they contain a huge amount of ether. In this connection, many experiments were conducted on them, but they all failed. To date, black cores are recognized as waste material. However, poisoners can absorb them without any problems, thanks to which they make incredible progress. To be honest, there aren't many hunters who are engaged in absorbing cores. It takes a decent amount of money to absorb them, and the absorption rate is even lower than 50%.
Therefore, this is the most unwise way to spend money. Paradoxically, there is no more effective way to improve skills than by absorbing cores. So most hunters do not even consider this option and therefore, until the very end, they remain at the same rank that they originally had. Young Hyasung suddenly remembered Dr. Jin and thanked him, almost breaking down in tears. Young said that in short, he was very concerned about his current progress. He wondered if he should just finish his probation period as quickly as possible. Jungkook was thinking that if he could absorb something like that golden core, he was sure that he would be able to reach the next level much faster. The hero wondered if he was really that greedy. Then we see two men walking up to Jung's house. The hero heard a knock on the door. Jungkook asked who was there because they weren't expecting anyone at this time. As he approached the door, he ordered Propi to hide. He opened the door and asked who was there. The man who was there was surprised that Jung was home. He smiled and said he had seen the news. The man said he didn't expect anything less from Jungkook the first dungeon with such success. He then introduced himself as the former chief judge, Pio Hyaku. Pio reminded his companion to introduce himself as well. The other guy's name was Joe Gangjun, and he shouted his name. Young also introduced himself and said they had so much energy. Pio congratulated the hero on getting the S rank. Yunkuk asked what brought them here. Pio asked Young if he felt like he was stuck on the same level lately. Pio said they seemed to have a lot to talk about. The former judge said they seemed to have a lot to talk about. He said they brought tea and treats. Pio asked if I could come in. Then some time passes. We see them sitting and drinking tea. Jiangguk said they could sit down. He said it wasn't exactly a royal mansion, but no one was home right now, so they wouldn't be interrupted. Pio asked what Young was talking about, because according to him, on the contrary, it's quite cozy here. Jungkook thanked him, even if it was just an empty compliment. Jungkook then got to the point and said that he would like to know the reason why they came to see him. Pio apologized and said that he should have said it earlier. He reached out to Young Hyung Seong and asked him how he felt about the news of new dungeons being added. Jungkook said that he usually isn't interested in dungeons that don't concern him. He said that many people think the same way. Pio said it's okay if Young doesn't know about it. Pio said that in any case, new dungeons are usually taken over by guilds or the hunters association. Pio asked about what would happen if even they couldn't handle the new dungeon. Young asked what it was about. Pio just like he said before, Sujin Dong, Changsin Dong. And finally, Ime Dong. Yesterday, three new dungeons were created in different places at once. Jungkook asked in a surprised voice. However, Pio said that there is nothing to be surprised about yet. He put the document on the table and said that a code yellow state of emergency had recently been declared in North America. Pio handed Jung the secret materials. Jungkook was shocked. Yellow Code. Among the emergency warnings that exist on Earth, the Yellow Code occupies the third position in terms of threat level. The double gates formed in Gupadona and Jebendon were also code yellow. Jungkook asked about how many people had died. Pio told Jung not to worry, since there hadn't been a single incident yet. Jungkook asked if the code was yellow, but there were no deaths. The hero said that the warning was most likely made because of the specifics of what happened, rather than because of the existing threat. Jungkook was about to give an example, but Pio interrupted him and said that the monster came out of the dungeon. Jungkook asked about what Pio had just said. These two concepts are often confused, but a dungeon and a gate are two different things. Roughly speaking, dungeons are a kind of home, a haven for monsters. Usually, monsters live in dungeons and do not go beyond them. However, according to Kako that is, when the dungeon is overrun with monsters, the entrance that the hunters pass through turns into a gate, and the monsters begin to break into the real world. This phenomenon is also known as gate bursting. It causes countless deaths. Of course, the world goes out of its way to monitor the appearance of the gate. If the monsters come out from the dungeons themselves and not the gate, then nothing can be done about it. Pio said that's exactly what it is. According to him, the incident was not difficult, so the damage is minimal. However, if it was a third-level dungeon, it would be impossible to estimate the damage. Pio said that due to the gravity of the situation, it seems that Mozo is hiding some of the details of what happened. The World Organization of Hunters Mozo is a world organization of hunters with great power. It makes the final decision on matters related to hunters and dungeons. Jiangguk said that hiding the truth wouldn't solve anything. Pio apologized and said he had nothing to justify it with. Jung said he knew it wasn't Mr. Pio's fault. The former judge thanked the hero for his understanding and then offered to return to the case. Pio said that at the moment, the Hunter Association is experiencing a severe shortage of personnel. At this rate, the dungeons can outnumber them, and now they are also concerned about when the monsters will start to come out of these dungeons. Pio said that with all this, he got some very interesting information. Then we flash back and see the doctors discussing that the Imperial Tiger has been fully restored. The girl asked if it was really possible, 
because the tiger was in critical condition. She said it was a miracle, it was one thing to heal the wounds on his body, but it only took one session to get all the poison out of his body. They told Mr. P that they needed that hunter, and if he cooperated with the association, he would help them greatly. Pio realized that he had been looking for Jung all along. He said that Jung's limitless ether and corresponding healing skills were why Pio decided to make inquiries about the hero, but he didn't find anything. Pio said that now he wants to attract the hero to him even more. He said that since Jung hadn't joined the guild yet and didn't seem to be involved in any other kind of activities, Pio asked what Jung would say about poison dungeons. Pio said that he didn't think there was anyone better suited to the role than Jung. The hero said that it was true that an S-rank healer would be able to clear out low-level dungeons without any problems. Jungkook was thinking that there was no better job for him. Jungkook was thinking that poison dungeons were much easier for him than normal ones. The hero also thought that P has a pretty sharp eye. After all, he did such a job to find some newbie. However, the hero wondered why he would do this. Jungkook was thinking that poison dungeons shouldn't be underestimated, even by S-rank hunters. The hero hates it when people suffer, but now the question is different. He was thinking that if he thoughtlessly agreed to Pio's suggestion, it would be like being dragged into the Hunters Association by force. Jungkook asked him how much he would benefit from it. He had to make sure that he and P were on an equal footing. Pio said that of course they were not so unscrupulous as to offer a job without proper payment. Pio turned to Cho and said that he wasn't sure if Jung needed it, but that he hoped he would like it. Ganjin took something out of his bag. Jungkook was shocked to see this. Ganjin took out a gold core. However, Jungkook found it strange. P said that's right. During the check, the core was unable to properly determine the amount of Chan's ether. At first, Pio thought it was Jung, but that's just not possible. Jungkook, however, thought that it was because of him. Because Chan sees it, the dark ether inside the core. Jungkook wondered if he'd shown up during the checkup. The hero knew that if he was caught, he would become the first free employee in the history of the Hunters Association. He thought that no matter what happened, he had to pretend that he didn't know anything. P said that it was decided to dispose of the colonel, but when he was going to get rid of it, he thought it wasn't worth it. For some reason, it occurred to him that someone like Chan might have found a better use for the core. Pio said it was just a hunch, of course. Pio said that if Jungkook didn't need it, he could just sell it, or make bowling holes in it on the advice of a friend of Mr. P's. Jungkook thought that Pio was calm, but at the same time testing the hero. Jungkook knew that even though it was a golden core, if it lost its abilities, it would become useless. The hero thought that of course, he could just absorb the dark ether that is inside, but it would only harm ordinary hunters. Jungkook knew that was why Pio had asked him that question, namely, whether Chan can find a use for the core. Jungkook couldn't figure out what Pio's goal was, but one thing was for sure. The purpose of this deal is to satisfy Pio Hyaku's curiosity. Jungkook then talked about poison dungeons. He enthusiastically asked when he could start. The reward was too attractive for him to refuse. Then we see the story. A bucket of water with a willow leaf floating on the surface. A woman offers water to a passing traveler and places a willow leaf on top. Thanks to this, the traveler does not drink everything at once so as not to cause an upset stomach. The woman knew that while her own nervousness made her angry with herself, the most important thing was to avoid an upset stomach. Even though Song Ming has a circulator, he needs more time with the golden core. The power of the golden core is not a bucket of water, but rather a storm in the ocean. The core absorption rate is 2%. Then we see Young and see him thinking about what would happen if he could absorb the entire golden core. He wondered just how strong he would become. But suddenly his thoughts were interrupted. It was a man who told Mr. Hyasung that he was in a great mood today. The man gave Jungkook a hand and said that it wasn't like a hero at all because he gets distracted during training. Jungkook apologized. This man is 49-year-old Ojiho. Jiho is currently teaching Jung the instant recovery skill. Unlike everyone else in the black market, Jiho is quite kind to people. However, in reality, this guy is crazier than the devil himself. As soon as it comes to practice, Jiho starts beating Jung furiously. The hero couldn't understand why Jiho had such kindness. The hero wondered if he had contacted such a person in vain, because he was facing a real madman. Then, suddenly, Jiho started disappearing. Jungkook pulled out his knife and attacked Jiho. However, this madman had already disappeared from the scene. Jungkook thought it was starting again, when suddenly something flew into the hero from the side. It was Jiho, who hit Jungkook in the face. Jungkook realized that it was time for this monstrous training session again. However, then he realized that it was time to become a punching bag. Jiho said that he had high hopes when Jung revealed that he was able to defeat Hyena. But Jiho added that Jung completely lacks even the most basic skills. The teacher asked if Jung was sure he was strong enough to learn from him. Jungkook said he should, no matter what the cost. Jung revealed that he even made a deal with Yacha to learn from Jiho. He said that he would be extremely sorry if everything went to waste, which was why he couldn't give up. Then we see that Jiho is at a distance from Jung. The hero began to apply his technique. 
Jiho asked if this was the same skill Yunkuk used to kill the hyena. He said that without a doubt, the reception has an incredible speed. Then Jiho continued talking and dodging. He quickly approached the hero. Even as he stood in front of Yunkuk, he said that this, however, somehow made him think that Yunkuk should learn how to move properly. Yunkuk was shocked. He was a little surprised when Jiho first saw it, but being on the other side is a completely different feeling. Jiho applauded and said that he saw Yung's potential. He said that he would show the hero a couple of movements and suggested that they be honed first. Yunkuk was shocked that Jiho didn't react at all to his venomous move. Jiho said that from what he understood, it seems that Yung can use some night skills. Jiho said that in this case, Yung will be able to use a solid body as well. He told Yunkuk to try to activate it every time he practiced his moves. Solid body is a unique method of knights that allows them to strengthen their body by distributing ether throughout the body. Yunkuk said that he understood the teacher. Jiho seems a little confused by this. Yunkuk then asked if he should be called master. Jiho told Yung to call him teacher. Yung then asked permission to ask a question to the teacher. He asked how long Jiho had been honing his technique. Jiho said that the basic movements alone took about 10 years. Yunkuk was nervous. He apologized to his poison queen because he would be late today. After a while, the red-haired girl entered the room. She said is it really their grade S rank healer? She asked what Yunkuk was doing right now, because isn't it time for training? Yunkuk said that he was an incompetent hunter, so he had to practice basic moves until he lost his pulse. He said he was going to take a break when he got there. She asked if Yung was already seeing any progress. He chuckled and said that to be honest, he was crazy. He said that perhaps he would have understood if he had been predisposed to do so. However, nothing like this happens. She continued to eat her snacks. She asked how about a hint. The girl said that Jiho's technique has one special feature. Yunkuk was shocked. He said that if he knew this feature, he wouldn't have to do all this. She said that still, every time Ojiho uses his skills, he gives off a peculiar smell. Not even a smell, but rather an unusual feeling. She said she would compare it to a poison poppy. Yunkuk thought about it, wondering if it wasn't just about martial arts. He realized that abilities that resembled hallucinations. These mysterious movements, something that can't be seen during combat. The hero wondered why he was convinced that Jiho was a knight in the first place. Yunkuk was sure that such a thing existed for sure. Hunters who use powers that can't be seen. Something like psychokinesis. Yunkuk thanked her and told her that the pieces of the puzzle were finally starting to fit together. It's so rare that Yunkuk didn't even think about it. He wondered if Jiho was a knight or in a spur, and then decided it was neither. Jiho has several abilities. Yung had said that psychokinesis was the crux of the puzzle. He realized that the teacher uses different abilities. Yunkuk thought about how it felt like he finally found the clue he needed. But he couldn't understand why he suddenly had the ability to use psychokinesis. Esper's skills differ in their elements and characteristics, but the basic ability for all Esper's is psychokinesis. Although it is a simple ability, it has many uses. The knight's attacks are equally strong, but when you have to face a large group of enemies, this is another matter. Then we see some guy using 220 volts. With this move, he hit a large number of monsters at once. This guy is the rising Esper Lai Yecheng. Everyone who was watching applauded him. The girl said that he got rid of all the wyverns in one hit. The man said that the strength of S rank is amazing, that's what he is, the most promising hunter Lai Yecheng. The guy laughed and asked if he was that surprised by it. Li then asked Yung what he thought of Li Yacheng's special ability as an ascendant hunter. Li turned away and said that Yung must have been speechless, but he would have to get used to it. Li was acting weird, talking about himself in the third person, like he was admiring himself. Li said that he might be a member of the Small Shafton Guild right now, but based on the experience of others, Li thought it was better to be the strongest in a lesser-known guild than to be just an ordinary member of a prestigious one. Then he said that of course it was a little sad that it wasn't the Glory Guild. Yunkuk felt sick and couldn't keep listening to this anymore. Lai said that he was given a C rank in the exam, but instead of keeping the money to himself, he's going to invest it in absorption cores and aim for getting a B rank in the next exam. He knew that he was still far from Yunkuk's rank, but if he continued to train hard, he was sure that the day would definitely come when he would be on par with Yunkuk. Ye Cheng then wondered if it wasn't too blatant. Yunkuk's ears were starting to bleed because he couldn't keep listening to this. Suddenly, someone shouted to Yechen that there were still wyverns left. Yo Cheng asked if it was time for his glory again. He ran after the wyverns and shouted to them not to worry because he, Lai Yecheng, was already walking towards them. Yunkuk thought it would be easier this time with the guild guys with them, but he already wants to go home. Yung then asked if it was possible that Yo Cheng had the same rank in his guild as Yung. The girl said that it was, she said that Yo Cheng was quite an outstanding hunter. According to her, they made a lot of effort to lure him to them. She said he had amazing abilities. He asked if she was also from the Shafton Guild. Yunkuk asked if he was imagining it, or if she was also in the crowd of Yuchen's fans today. She suddenly blushed and said with embarrassment that she just liked Lai Yecheng. 
Meanwhile, his fans kept shouting at him that he was cool, and they were shouting for him to surpass Ga Han Chang and become the strongest Esper. They even made a poster congratulating him for defeating all the wyverns. When Ye Cheng saw this, his whole face lit up and his eyes sparkled. Then he cheered, and the fans started praising him even more and wondering why Li Ye Cheng was so turned on. One fan even said that someone as incompetent as him would never be able to catch up to Li Ya Cheng. Yun Kuk looked at them from the side and called them simpletons and laughed at them together with the girl. The girl then asked if Yun Kuk had any plans after the dungeon. She said they were going to have dinner together. She was about to offer him something if he had time, but he interrupted her and said that he had training today and couldn't take the day off. She was surprised and blushed as she asked if he was still training after the dungeon. She said she now understood why he was given an S rank. Yunkuk wasn't happy about the fact that it was all the same basic moves and not a healing skill training session. Then we flash back to the memory and see how he continues to practice basic movements even at home. We are once again transported back to the heroes. Li Yecheng called over the fans. One man ran up and asked if something was wrong. Yo Cheng said that the man would be surprised as soon as he saw it. Then he pointed to the ground and said that there was something glowing in the ground. He wondered if it was really a treasure. Lai Yecheng said that someone had told him that there were also treasures buried in some of the forests. However, the man and the girl were shocked. Yecheng asked what was wrong with their faces. This man shouted to everyone to prepare for the second dungeon. Suddenly, the ground began to crumble. The ground cracked and began to glow more strongly. The man shouted that protecting Hunter Yung Hyasun was their top priority. They were just unlucky. Then people started to fail. Yecheng couldn't come to his senses. The dungeon was falling apart. He was terrified that all the members of the guild would die. He said he had to save them. Then the man behind Ye Cheng also collapsed. Li wondered what kind of luck this was. He wondered if the members of the guild who were chatting carelessly with each other a moment ago were now forced to die because they were just unlucky. As Haiyang flew down, he shouted that he didn't want to die and begged for help, while Ye Cheng was shocked. He thought and wondered if if he had known about this hole, if he hadn't insisted on going to this particular dungeon, there would have been a different outcome waiting for them all. He thought it was all because of him, Ye Cheng just stood there and cried. Then Yung suddenly appeared behind him and asked him if he was really going to stand there while his loved ones died. Yung ordered Yo Cheng to follow them. He said that if they didn't die from the fall, they would have a chance to save them. After saying that, Yung Kuk rushed down. Yu Chen was shocked and couldn't believe that Yung jumped down. Yu Chen wondered if Yung wasn't scared at all. He couldn't figure out how Yung Kuk did it, because Yu Chen was so scared. He was really scared. However, he remembered his comrades. Ye Cheng said that one guy he met today jumped in there, and he also decided that he couldn't stay away. He realized that losing a member of their guild was even worse than that. Ye Cheng then flew after Yung. While they were flying, Yung said that they didn't have much time, so he would be brief. The hero said the good news everything is connected inside. He asked if Ye Cheng could cast a shield on the guild members. Yo Cheng replied that he could, but it wouldn't be possible to capture everyone. He said that Haiyang was already far away, so he was beyond Ye Cheng's ability. Even so, Ye Cheng's shield can only cover four people. Jiang said it was bad enough that Ye Cheng's shield could cover four people. Yu Chen asked what about Haiyang because he failed first. Yu Chen asked if Yung was going to leave him. However, the hero said that this is not the case. Suddenly, a purple flash appeared in the darkness. It was some kind of Yung Kuk technique. Ye Cheng was surprised to see this. Yung Kuk said he was going to save Haiyang himself. Yung Kuk, meanwhile, was thinking that this was a mistake. He had only heard of dual dungeons, so he reacted late, as this was the first time he had been in a place like this. Many people lost consciousness due to the shockwave after the dungeon was destroyed. Yung Kuk decided that he needed to focus, otherwise he wouldn't be able to save them. Then he said the word in. He decided that he needed a foothold to move around. He knew that there was nothing to lean on, but if there was nothing, then he would just build a foothold on his own. He decided to spread them everywhere. Then, he landed on these small platforms. Yungkuk decided that there were only two people he needed to catch. He said that you can't make a mistake. Then another purple flash. Yungkuk started walking down these platforms. We see that two people were falling. However, after a moment, Yungkuk picked them up. Ya Cheng was surprised to see this. He wondered what it was. He couldn't understand what he had just seen. Yungkuk, meanwhile, kept the two of them on top of him, wondering if they'd come down. However, Ye Cheng suddenly felt a strong wind, and he wondered where the wind came from. Then something shocked him. The atmosphere of the dungeon changed slightly after the destruction. What shocked Ye Cheng was that this place was already inside another dungeon. They landed and Yo Cheng started yelling at Yung Hyasung to see if he was okay. Yu Chen ran up to Yung, but suddenly something shocked him. Yung Kuk didn't have a scratch on him. Yo Cheng asked if Yung was definitely a human. Yo Cheng asked if Yung had found the rest of the guild members. Yu Chen was about to make excuses for landing too far when Yung interrupted him. The hero said that Ye Chen's guild members were lying there unconscious. He said they would recover very soon. 
Yeo Chang was very happy, he was happy that Young saved Haiyang and Nuna. Young Kook was cool and asked Yu Chen to calm down, he said that their touching reunion could wait a little longer. The hero said that first they need to deal with these monsters. Harmias were flying in the sky. Ye Cheng said that harpies are devious and cunning creatures, so it won't be an easy fight. Young Kook was surprised that it wouldn't be an easy fight for Yeo Chen, since the harpies were like flies to the hero. Young Kook was thinking that one blow would be enough to finish them off. Yechen looked at the hero and realized that Young was hiding his emotions, but as his competitor, Yechen understood everything. He was thinking that they had suffered a severe shock after the fall, so Yecheng decided to avoid a direct collision. Yeo Cheng turned to Young Hyasung. He said he admired his generosity. However, he asked me to leave it to him. Yung Kook was surprised and couldn't understand why Yu Chen was so turned on all of a sudden. Suddenly, someone called out Lai Yecheng's name. The boy whirled around, recognizing the voice. They were his companions, and they were awake. They told him to stop playing tough. The man said that thanks to Jung, no one died. They finally came to their senses, so they asked him to leave this battle to them. They also thanked him for his healing. However, Jungkook looked at them and wondered if they could really handle it, since they looked so frail. Then everyone started to take up positions. Jungkook decided he'd better just watch for now. Haiyang shouted for them to leave it to him. Jungkook looked at him and thought that this Asper must have a B rank. This guy threw his cards in the air and then blew them up. Jungkook thought that this guy was really strong. After the explosion, everyone started cheering and cheering, talking about how this dungeon was even easier than expected. However, Haiyang was shocked, he couldn't believe what he was seeing and thought it was impossible. Then we see that the harpies are unharmed. Haiyang said that he had put all his strength into this ability, but it wasn't enough. They were worried. Haiyang said that he needed time to build up his energy, so he needed to delay the harpies somehow. Jungkook thought that the Esper wanted to reduce the number of harpies at once, but he used absolutely all his strength. Yunkuk watched the battle and thought that they were still pretty good at holding off the harpies. And this is possible thanks to their vast vast battle experience. Yunkuk wondered what would happen after a while. After all, hunters are also people. They feel the pain of injuries and are exhausted from prolonged battles. The girls then told Young Hyasung that he had to leave. She said that they lost this fight from the very beginning. However, Young replied that he should help them. He was only watching them from the sidelines, but the healer's job is to keep people from getting hurt. The girl then asked Young Hyasung if he was joking when he said he should help them. However, Jungkook didn't understand her and repeated her words. She said he knew they'd lost this battle before they even started. Jungkook said that a strange person once said something like that to him. He also had a strange hairstyle. Jungkook said it was ridiculous to give up without even trying. If Jian had joined them in the fight right away, they might have won. Then she screamed at him. Jungkook was surprised by this. She said he was just a healer. She said that she didn't despise healers, but in this situation, they needed someone with combat-type abilities. According to her, even though Young is S-ranked, what can he even do right now? She apologized to him and said that wasn't what she wanted to say. Young said it's true that healers mostly rely on their team, as even though they are important, they are mostly in a supportive role. But Jungkook asked if it didn't depend on the individual. Then, he took out his dagger and threw it into the air. This knife swept past the heroes. He was going to the harpy. The knife cut through the harpy, and with such force that it tore it apart. However, Jungkook wasn't happy that he only managed to finish off a couple of them. He didn't think they were close enough. Jungkook said that in that case, he would be back soon. Then we see purple flashes. The guild members who were watching couldn't believe it. They couldn't understand what was going on right now. They saw the harpies die one by one. Then we see another harpy. It was coming at Chan. However, he chopped off the heads of the three harpies behind him with a single blow. It really pissed him off. Chopping harpies into pieces wasn't a problem for him. The problem was that there were too many of them. Jungkook knew that at this rate, he wouldn't be back in time for dinner. He wanted to use poison rain. Then, he ordered his knife to transform. He said that there were a lot of enemies here, so he ordered to fill up as much space as possible. The ones in the sky are the most troublesome, so a ranged weapon would be useful here. Then he said something like a shotgun would be useful. Random kill mode, shotgun. Then Jungkook started firing the shotgun. He decided to start the show. She started shooting harpies with a shotgun. The guild members who were watching were shocked when they saw Young holding a shotgun. They couldn't figure out where it came from. Then they noticed that Chan hadn't killed the harpies. They decided that they probably needed to help Jungkook. However, the hero said that this should not be done. He said that if they were ordinary bullets, they wouldn't be of any use. However, the bullets of this shotgun are filled with dark ether. Because of this, the harpies' mouths began to foam, and they began to fall unconscious. Jungkook took a closer look and said that the poison was finally starting to take effect. He realized that many of them would definitely fall. Suddenly, Jungkook had a headache. He said that although this weapon is powerful, it requires too much ether. He said that you can't use it too often. Then a harpy swooped down on him. 
However, Yu Chen was able to save Yun with his magic. The hero thanked him and said that he was really strong. Yu Cheng asked him not to worry about it, because he wasn't his rival Lai Yu Cheng for nothing. Yun Kuk couldn't understand why Yu Chen was still talking about his opponent. Yu Cheng said that whatever it was, they were in trouble. After all, it was when Yun ran out of airtime that the boss appeared. It was a monster, a singing harpy that has telekinesis. Yu Cheng was scared and asked if they would win. However, Yun asked him not to worry. The hero said that he had enough ether for another hit. Then Yun Kuk cut his hand with a knife. He made an incision just above the wrist. Yun Kuk said it would be more than enough to finish off one feathered chicken. He said it was a shame, because as soon as she arrived, he would have to leave right away. He asked her about the fact that she already understood everything. At the same time, he leaped up with incredible strength. This dark purple blob reached this singing harpy. Yun Kuk was in midair, right in front of her face. He clenched his fist around the hand where he'd made the cut. He told her to just get into his position. Then Yun Kuk hit the harpy, the impact was very strong. He felt that this was different from the time with the hyena. Yunkuk activates the dark ether that runs through his veins. His blood, filled with dark ether, is able to finish off absolutely every creature on this green ball. After finishing off the singing harpy, Chan said that they were enemies after all. Then some time passes. An unusual case report this week. Privacy level for the association, 2. Around 2, 34 on day X, a second dungeon appeared during the Shafton Guild expedition. And also, several hundred monsters of the fourth level of difficulty appeared. The estimated level of the boss is sixth. During the battle, some were in critical condition, but all were healed. No deaths, all survived. The Shafton Guild has successfully completed the expedition. Then the man sent Jian flying. Yuchen supported him and asked if Yun really thought they would agree to such a thing. Yun Kuk asked if he was asking too much. Yu Chen asked if it was obvious, since Yun had done more than all of them, but he was refusing the rewards. They couldn't understand how they should agree to this. Yun Kuk said that he really doesn't care about the reward. Yun said that he created a weapon in flight and single-handedly destroyed the enemy. No one said anything, but everyone thought it was weird, so Yun Kuk asked if it was true. Yun Kuk said he was asking for a lot. The hero simply asked them not to ask who he was and just say that it was the Shafton Guild that cleared the dungeon. That's enough for him. The man then asked why and asked how Yun Kuk would benefit from it. Yun Kuk thought about it. The guild members waited, waiting to hear what Chang had to say. The hero said it was because it was annoying. He said he didn't want to draw so much attention to himself. They couldn't understand what he was saying, because it was a ridiculous reason in their opinion. However, Yun Kuk pretended not to hear them. Then he asked them to stop and said he was going home. He ran away saying that they worked perfectly. The guild members were dissatisfied and decided to run after him. However, Chan was faster. Everyone knew that it was completely unprofitable for Yun Hyasun. However, there was something that no one knew about. Yun Kuk then received a notification that he had absorbed the core of the singing harpy. Following that, a notification came that his dark ether level had been raised to 250. Yun discovered a new ability. The lion's roar ability allows you to capture the enemy's mind by embedding ether into the voice. Telekinesis sensitivity has increased significantly. However, Yun Kuk wondered what that sentiment even meant. Young Hyasung secretly devoured the boss core, and since Young Hyasung got what he needed, he wanted to keep it a secret. In his mind, Young Kuk apologized to them, he knew it was wrong to do that, but he couldn't resist, but just like he thought, the core was incredibly delicious. Young Kuk thought about it with tears in his eyes. As he ran away, he thanked the Shafton Guild. Then we flash forward, it's been a few days since clearing the second dungeon. We see that Young is looking at his phone and looking for something, he was looking on the map, and judging by it, he came to the right place. He walked another 30 meters and finally found what he was looking for. Chan came to the Purification Clan. The hero said that there was no other place like this here. He said it was time to stop by. Then we are transported inside the building and see a large number of soda cans. We also see a man drinking them. After drinking it, the man said that the taste is simply disgusting. He said that if he had the money, he would never drink the this man is the head of the Purification Clan, Yuk Chiawan. He said he was lucky anyway. He got permission to enter the poison dungeons. He grinned and said that he hoped it would work out all right this time. Chiawan said that if he found it, he could go back to his best years, although he has absolutely no one to go with. Then, Chiawan wondered if he should call the people he had written down in his notebook. Chiawan wondered what they were doing right now. He called Yang Ho first. Chiawan said they haven't called each other in a long time. He asked why Yang Ho was so hard to reach. He replied that he was very busy in the last few days. He said that he had just returned from the dungeon. Hunter hiring services are very popular right now, so Yang Ho is always busy. Hearing this, Chiawan became nervous. Yang Ho asked him what he was doing now, but Chulwen said that he wasn't doing much. Yang Ho asked if he could ask. He asked if Chiawan was still involved with that purification clan. 
Yang Ho said that the clan doesn't bring any money to Chiawen. He realized that Chiawen was still studying. He said that Chiawen still wouldn't get over it. Yang Ho asked if Chiawen really wanted him to work for his purification clan again. Yang Ho asked if Chiawen thought the golden sunflower really existed. Yang Ho asked Chiawen to come to his senses because he didn't want to do this dirty work again. Then Yang Ho reset. Chiawen called him a jerk and wondered if Yang Ho really wanted him to believe that. Chiawen said that he just couldn't help but believe in its existence. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. Chiawen was surprised to have a client come to see him. He opened the door and introduced himself and said that he was Yuk Chiawen from the Purification Clan. He was about to ask what brought the client here, but when Chiawen saw the customer, he was speechless. Yunkuk said it was more spacious inside than he thought. Chiawen recognized Yung Hyasung. The hero asked if this man really knew him. Chiawen knew Hyasung because he was on TV. Chiawen asked if Yung was still asking. The head of the Purification Clan said that recently in Korea only Yung Hyasung is being talked about. For the first time in 10 years, there was a new S-rank hunter, a healer recognized by the Imperial Tiger himself, a genius healer who will surpass Maria, the mysterious hunter. Xiaowen enthusiastically said that Yung Hyasung is incredibly popular. Yung Hyasung felt awkward and said that it was too much and asked whose last line was. Xiaowen said that Yung can sit down. Xiaowen said he wouldn't offer open cans of beer. He asked what brought Yungkuk here. Yungkuk asked if this was where the Purification Clan was located. Chiawen said it was like that and wanted to say something. However, Yunkuk didn't let him finish and sat down on the couch and said that it would be easy then. Yunkuk said that he hates the attention and when he is restricted in something. But Yung had heard that the clans didn't restrict you if you wanted to join them or leave. Yung asked if Chiawen might have a greatest rookie of all time vibe. Yunkuk said he was doing a great job. Yuk Chiawen thought about it. He wondered if it was a dream. He decided that the beer must have knocked him out. And he often had such thoughts. Anyone would think so if Young Hyasung came to work for them. Yunkuk then stood in front of the dungeon gate and asked if they were coming. However, Chiawen got scared and asked Yung to wait for a moment. Yunkuk turned around and asked if something was wrong. The hero thought that he should show all his newbie enthusiasm. Chiawen exclaimed that this wasn't the case at all. He said that no matter how you look at it, it's too much. Yunkuk didn't understand what he was talking about. Chiawen asked if Yung was going to wear only a hoodie. He said that they were going to go to the poison dungeon. Yung Hyasung may have an S rank, but he doesn't have any protection. Yung said that he would have been right on the whole. Chiawen asked if Yung Hyasung was feeling down. The hero asked Chiawen to score. Yunkuk said that if there was something wrong with his body, it would be his responsibility. Then he shouted that they were coming. Chiawen started shouting at Yunkuk, but Yunkuk didn't respond. Then we see that Yung has entered the dungeon after all. Yunkuk said he hadn't felt this fresh in a long time. According to him, the smell really makes him feel better. Yunkuk asked if Chiawen feels this way too. However, Chiawen was thinking that now even he doesn't understand what's wrong here. He asked Hyasung if they would move on to the gathering. He said that he thought the monsters were still in that forest, so Chiawen suggested that we finish up here quickly before they arrive. Jiangguk said they'd start with pickaxes. The hero said that this is the first time he will use a pickaxe, so he is worried. Suddenly, he heard something coming. He said that now is not the time to dig, because first you need to get rid of those who interfere with them. Suddenly, strange unicorn monsters appeared behind Hyasung. Chiawen wondered where these devil horses came from. He said that usually these monsters don't attack unless you enter their territory. Yung yelled at Chiawen to get ready. The hero said that first you need to deal with them. He was thinking that there were too many of them here. Yunkuk had only seen ten so far, but he didn't know if there would be more. One thing was certain. In his mind, he exclaimed that a special black market medicine worked. The devil horses were running at him, and Yunkuk was only too happy since he took them as experience points. Then the horse ran up close to the hero, but the smile on his face did not disappear. He said that the whole herd of Pratt horses. Yunkuk asked if it wasn't perfect for them. He took out a knife and cut off the heads of the first two horses. Chiawen shouted that there was more to come. One is approaching Yung Hyasung. Yung said that Chiawen was going through too much. The hero continued to destroy one devil horse after another with ease. Yunkuk said they were almost done with them. But suddenly two horses ran past. Yunkuk was worried. He was too careless and let two people slip away. He shouted at the clan head to take care of himself. Yunkuk thought about healing the head of the purification clan as soon as possible. However, Chiawen wasn't so simple. Yunkuk was surprised and wondered what was wrong with this guy. Chiawen fights much better than Yung Hyasung imagined. Chiawen asked if Yung was really a healer because he was too good at fighting. A member of the purification clan is Yuk Chiawen. Yung said that the clan head would get less than him. Yungkuk was surprised that Chiawen wasn't even a C rank, but a B he couldn't believe that this kind of talent would go to waste in a dying clan. 
and not just in the clan, but in the purification clan, which collects offal from the dungeons. Yunkuk said that once they got rid of all the clutter, the gathering should be much easier. Yunkuk assumed there was a story behind it. Xiaowen said that he would first show Yun what he should do. He said to grab the handle of the pickaxe and try to dodge the blow, but before Xiaowen could finish, he saw Hyasung staring at something. The head of the clan asked if everything was normal. However, Yunkuk replied that the boss was watching them. Xiaowen said he couldn't see anyone. Yunkuk said that the boss is quite far away, and if you don't concentrate, it will be difficult to feel his gaze on you. Yunkuk asked if Xiaowen could continue digging alone. The clan head asked if Chong wanted to go and fight the boss alone. The hero said that this is exactly the case. Xiaowen asked if it was too dangerous. However, then Xiaowen realized that there was no need to worry about Yung Hyasung. He said that if you need help, Yung can call at any time. Yunkuk said that he would be back soon and then ran at an incredible speed. Xiaowen was surprised and wondered where Yung Hyasung's incredible speed came from. Xiaowen said that even he wasn't capable of such a thing. Then we see that while Yung was running, he could sense the boss. He thought that just a little more time and he would be able to find out. Yunkuk decided this was the perfect chance to check it out. Then we are transported back to our memories. Jiho told Yung that it was amazing. Oh Jiho said that Yung has made a lot of progress this month, so even Jiho can be envious of Yung Hyasung. The hero couldn't understand what Jiho was talking about, as Yunkuk barely touched his collar. Jiho asked Yung Hyasung not to be too modest. Jiho said it wasn't too difficult for someone to touch his collar, but that simple feat took Jiho 10 years. Jiho said that he feels a little awkward now that he said Yung doesn't have the talent. Yunkuk said it wasn't a big deal, all because he had a great mentor. Jiho said it was an honor. The teacher then told Yunkuk to get ready. Jiho said that things would get much more serious on the second level. Yung started to ask what Jiho was talking about, but the teacher immediately hit Yung Hyasung. The teacher told Yunkuk that he had surpassed that tiger in We are transported back to the present. Yunkuk decided that now he had to confirm the result of his training, and now is the perfect chance for that. Yunkuk decided that he could deal with the boss without using poison, so he shouted at the cub to attack. Yunkuk was fighting against a bleached wolf. And so round one. Before the fight, the hero mocked the enemy in every possible way. Yunkuk said that even without using poison, the wolf is no match for him. And so they started the fight. The wolf immediately hit Yunkuk and he fell unconscious. Then the second round began. Yunkuk, who was a bit beaten up, laughed and said that wolf was the kind of guy who could stand up for himself, but this was going to be different. Yunkuk yelled at the wolf to attack again, but he didn't expect the wolf to launch a series of punches. Yunkuk collapsed again. Then the third round began. Xiaowen came over and Yung yelled at him to stand. The hero asked what the clan head was doing here. Xiaowen replied that he was done packing, and he didn't want to distract Yung Hyasung from the fight, so he decided to support his training. Jian said that Xiaowen shouldn't have distracted them. Distracted, Yunkuk said he thought he was going to get punched in the face again. Then we see that the wolf still hit Yung Hyasung in the face. Xiaowen apologized to Yung for distracting him. The hero was in a lot of pain. He realized that it was still too early for him to fight with his fists. Their huge difference in levels is impossible to overcome in normal ways. Yunkuk said that just as he thought, nothing would work out without an instant jump. Yung Hyasung has an exceptional talent. For others, it was possible to reach his level in 10 years, but for him, it only took a couple of months. Strength, reaction speed, agility, balance. All this is above average for him. But he can't overcome an instantaneous leap with his talent alone. This martial art was created by that monster Yacha, a technique that was created intentionally to make it difficult to learn. Talent, the basic requirement for making an instant jump. We see how the wolf threw Yung far back and Chiaowen ran after him. He ran over and asked if Hyasung was okay. He said that Chiaowen shouldn't have come here. Hyasung said that Chulwen might get poisoned by poison. At the same time, the hero wondered what he was missing. He understood that the essence of instant leap was more like an illusion than a martial technique. A trick that combines a real body and a phantom. Hyasung wondered if he could do it without psychokinesis. He wondered if he could release instant jump. Although they, the poisoners, can freely control the ether, but still. Then Hyasung suddenly remembered that he had once received a notification that his sensitivity to psychokinesis had increased significantly. He wondered if this was the notification that appeared when he absorbed the harpy's core. Yunkuk just ignored it back then, because he had no idea what it meant at all. But in fact, this may be the key to an instant jump. An instant jump, extremely complex technique. Talent alone won't help you learn it. It is impossible to use this technique without understanding its principles. Everyone who saw her, regardless of rank, became desperate. This is a truly captivating martial art. We are again transported to the hero's memories. And we see Jiho saying that Hyasung reacted to his attack and it's amazing. Jiho said that even the fact that Young was able to notice this attack was impressive. This means that Hyasung is slowly starting to figure it out. 
Jiho said that it wouldn't be enough just to have a gut feeling anyway. Young said that he can feel the ether spreading widely around him. Yunkuk just got the hang of it, so it's not practical to hope for anything cool. He thought it was impossible. Hyasung said that no matter how hard he tries to imitate this technique, it only comes out as a weak imitation. Then the wolf growled. He started running towards the hero. Chiawen was afraid for Hyasung. The wolf still managed to walk up to young Hyasung and hit him right in the stomach. The result of the maximum expenditure of ether is death. Chiawen was shocked. The wolf was about to attack Chiawen. However, Yung Hyasung suddenly appeared from behind and asked Chiawen not to worry. Inkuk asked if the wolf looked too big for a corpse. Then he smiled and urged the slouching dog to attack him. The wolf of course immediately aimed at the hero. However, Yunkuk knew it wasn't over yet. The most important thing is the retention technique. It all starts with the basics. With complex techniques, you should not forget about the basics. Jiho taught Yunkuk to make sure that his feet moved freely no matter what. But this does not mean that they should be easy. Precision in your movements is not so important. What is more important is the combination of speed, balance, flexibility, recoil, rotation, and direction of force. This is the reverse reflection of the force. You need to outsmart your opponent and then counterattack. Jung decided to use the returning H1 and the deceptive phantom H1. He understood that the stronger the enemy's attack, the stronger the instantaneous jump would be. The wolf was already very close and swung a punch. The monster aimed directly at Jung Hyasung's chest. After a moment, his hand still passed through his chest and was covered in blood. Yinkuk was holding onto the wolf's hand. A lot of blood dripped onto the floor. Xiaowen, looking at all this, said that this can't be happening. Xiaowen said that Chud is Yung Hyasung, or even a healer who can fight monsters, but even if that were true, this technique is still beyond comprehension. We see that the wolf still pierced his chest, but the hero remained unharmed. This is how the first dungeon was completed. Of course, there were some serious injuries. As soon as Yung Hyasung understood the meaning of the words his mentor was saying to him, his mood skyrocketed. After the first cleanup, all the members of the clan, namely two people, decided to work together and conquer the dungeons with special zeal. Permission to enter the dungeon wasn't so easy to get, as expected when Yung Hyasung joined the clan, there wasn't much problem with the dungeons. The association's inspector is the only one who was able to do it. Yunkuk didn't know if he was a friend or an enemy, but until it was known, he had to keep his ears open. Yunkuk knew that he was clearly not an ordinary employee of the association. Then Propi suddenly flew up to them happily and landed on Chan's shoulder. Chiawen was moved and greeted the baby. Yung said that Propi was a scoundrel because he got out as if nothing had happened. Now the guild head knows about Propi. Propi got burned when he warned them about monsters nearby. Yunkuk asked the leader if the cleanup was complete. Chiawen said that this is true, according to him, it took a long time since there is now a lot of mining. Yung suggested we take a break. Chiawen asked why now, and then Yung Hyasung said he had a question. He asked the leader why he became a dungeon cleaner. Chiawen thought about it and said that he was a hunter but not as popular as Jian and not so strong. Chiawen asked what else he should do. Yunkuk asked if B-rank hunters were really that weak. Yunkuk said that what he also noticed was that the leader was obsessed with poison dungeons. Yung said it was like Chiawen was looking for something. Chiawen said that is expected, there was nothing to hide from Yung. The head of the purification clan asked if Chong had ever heard of the legendary flower. However, Yunkuk asked again and made it clear that he hadn't heard of such a flower. Xiaowen said that this flower has incredible properties, but only in words. The head said that this is a ridiculous legend that says that he can cure any disease. Yunkuk wondered if Xiaowen was talking about the sunflower. Yunkuk was thinking that considering that the flower cures all diseases, it really deserves the title of legendary. A flower that the average hunter can't get. Xiaowen said that he was sure that this flower existed. Yunkuk asked if the headmaster had a reason to look for him so desperately. The head said that the reason was his wife, the kindest and brightest woman in the world. Yunkuk knew that there were two types of people who needed the flower, special hunters who knew about the flower's existence, and hunters who believed in its existence. Xiaowen said that he was just a pathetic husband who couldn't save his wife. Xiaowen said that he knew it was hard to believe that a man like him would have a wife, and he didn't say much about it. Chulwen said that he just didn't know how to tell Yung Hyasung what exactly they were doing. Yunkuk noticed that Chiawen felt guilty for not being able to find the flower. Chiawen said that he seems to be talking too much. However, the head added that eventually, Yung should have found out about it. He said that he was searching all the dungeons, doing all the dirty work, because of him, all the clan members left. Chiawen said that he would understand if Jian also left. The hero asked if Chiawen was looking for a sunflower. The hero said that he knew something about him. Jung said it wasn't surprising that Chiawen couldn't find him all these years. These flowers are only available in dungeons where bosses spawn. They are called unique for a reason. The secret of this flower is that you need to collect them when the dungeon boss is still alive. Hearing this, Chiawen was shocked. 
gold, silver, bronze, the higher the difficulty of the dungeon, the higher the quality of the flower itself. Each of them has its own pros and cons. However, out of all the dungeons Yunkuk had been in, he hadn't seen a single one that was gold. Yunkuk said that it can only be found in a level 7 or higher dungeon. As far as Yung knows, it will only appear after killing the boss. Yunkuk said that it was indeed a legendary flower. Jialwen asked Hyasung to stop. He thanked young Hyasung for comforting him. However, he said that was no consolation. Yunkuk said that he was telling the truth and then took out a flower and said that the sunflower exists. He passed the flower into the leader's hands. At that moment, Chiawen realized that the sunflower really did exist. Yunkuk said it was proof of what he said. Then, Chiawen addressed Hyasung, calling him Lord. Chiawen said that he was so wrong. All he's done so far is look in the wrong place. Yung said it was true, but now Chiawen knows where to look. Chiawen was shocked. He fell to his knees and started screaming. He crouched on the ground and screamed, simultaneously punching the ground with his fists. Yunkuk's first impression of him was very different. If it wasn't for Chiawen's unique personality, Jian wouldn't even have joined his clan. Yung asked Chiawen to get up and said that the leader should not sit on his lap. Yung held out his hand to Chiawen. The hero liked Chiawen's sincerity. Pat Chong decided that he would help the head of the Purification Clan. He said that since Chiawen was already looking for the Golden Sunflower, he, Yung, would help him in any way he could. Even through the gas mask, it was clear that Chiawen was crying. He was happy and thanked Yung Hyasung. Then we are transported to the Glory Building. There was a person talking about how the dungeons had increased by 38% compared to the previous month, so it seemed like it was time to discuss countermeasures. He also said that the doctors from the Dungeon Institute expressed a similar opinion. The doctors say they have something that the man needs to see immediately. And finally, the issue of the lack of hunters. Commands 1, 2, and 3 are already failing. He also said that he had attached tomorrow's report. He said they were doing pretty well overall. The man said that for the most part it is. He told the chief secretary that there was always one but. The man asked where Yung Hyasun was. He said it had been quite some time since he had refused. The secretary said that he would deal with this issue immediately. The man ordered to bring the answer as soon as it is known where he is and what he is doing. The man then asked if the secretary was sure that the other guilds weren't ready to join. Then the man asked to stop sending people to the dungeons. He said he had an interesting idea. So for now, all they need to do is wait for reporters. If the media finds out about this, there will be a resonance. The secretary said he would pass this on to the team leaders. The secretary asked if he could go now. However, the man did not give permission and asked for something else. He said that he hadn't seen Maria lately, and he asked if she was back in that room. The secretary said it wasn't. He said she had a lot of appointments, so she was still busy. The man asked again and was surprised that Maria had meetings. He said that it was unusual. Then he said that it was time to start his move. He thought that this Maria was a little annoying, but the man was sure that everything would be fine because she had never let him down before. Then, he suddenly thought about that strange guy. Up to this point, there were many hunters who lived and did not refuse the attention of the world. Arrogant Hunters CEO Gu Gongyi was very familiar with this. In the Hunter exam last year, a total of three A-rank people were evaluated. Initially, the plans were that all the attention of the people would be attracted by one hunter and the other two would quietly and peacefully join the guild. However, the new guild members changed their minds about the Glory Guild. Although they didn't show outwardly, it was clear that the mood of the audience and competitors began to change. And it was around this time that relations between the guilds were strained to the limit. No single person could surpass the Great Glory Guild. Not a single non-entity. Gon understood that power and money were weapons that everyone aspired to. And its popularity is a direct proof of this. Pride, strength, ideologies of all, nothing will be an exception to power and money. The lack of value of a person gives a reason to discard it as garbage. This fact only proves that he has not been able to adapt to modern society. He wondered what ordinary people wanted. Suddenly something surprised him. He wondered if it could be that he wasn't like everyone else. Gon didn't think that was possible. Gon thought that Jung had come here for a reason. Gon was sure that everyone wanted to reach out for power and money, so he couldn't understand why Jung seemed different to him. Gon remembered what Jungkook had said about wanting to be strong. Gon continued to think, confused by the fact that Jungkook was already so strong. Gon wondered if Jung really wanted to reach S rank. The CEO couldn't understand why Jung Hyasung would do this. When water is scarce, the thirst for drinking increases. It's the same with power. Gon knew that Yunkuk was a strong hunter, but he couldn't figure out what the problem was. Gon wondered why Yung didn't want to go to the top of this country. He couldn't figure out what was going on in Yung Hyasung's head. Then we move on to the next day, and we see Yung Hyasung, who is confused about something. He noticed that he was being followed. The hero wondered how long this girl had been following him. She tried not to give herself away and act unnoticed, 
but her attempts look ridiculous. Then, the girl quickened her pace and started to approach young Hyasung. She came up behind him and excused herself to touch Hyasung's shoulder. However, it turned out that this was Youngkook's illusion. The hero asked if this was the Glory Guild again. He said he'd told her not to come. She said she had information for him. However, Youngkook replied that he wasn't interested. He asked her who she was. He also asked her what she was doing here. This girl turned around. She apologized and said she didn't want to follow him. I didn't want to lie. She said she would introduce herself officially. The girl took off her cap and said that her name was Maria, and she was a hunter from the Guild of Glory. Yunkuk was shocked when he saw her. He asked her what she was doing here. Maria apologized for coming so suddenly. However, according to her, she was supposed to meet young Hyasung. He was surprised and couldn't understand why she was doing this. She continued talking while taking off her glasses. She hesitantly said that she wanted to know more about young Hyasung. Blue sky, city lights, plum blossoms curled up in a ball. One thing is clear, the spring of young Hyasung's life has arrived, and the two people looking at each other's faces seem to have left this cruel world. And so summer came. They were standing close together. Yungkook blushed and apologized, reaching out for her. Chan took her by the shoulders, and Maria blushed too. They were excited as they looked at each other. But then Young, what was she even up to? He told her to stop playing tricks on him and tell him what she was doing here. Maria was shocked and it seems that she was in trouble. Then we are transported to Jebang Dong Park. Yungkook asked if it was possible that the cat had escaped. She didn't understand what he was talking about and asked him again about the cat. Yungkook said that she came to see him because he cured the cat. She said it was true, but it wasn't just a cat that escaped, it was a real imperial tiger. Yungkook recalled the image of that tiger and thought that this was basically what he had expected. He said that he was even glad that the tiger would not suffer anymore. Yungkook asked her why she had come to see him. He said he wasn't hoping to tell him this wonderful news. Yungkook asked if she really wanted to make a scapegoat out of him. She said that of course it wasn't. She said she was here for something else. Maria said that she had only seen Young Hyasung's skills once, but that time was enough for her to know that he had enough strength to repair the destroyed core. She is sure that Young is many times stronger than her. She thought that since they were both healers, this conversation would be good for both of them. Maria called it an exchange of experience. However, Yunkuk looked away as if he was thinking about something. Maria asked if Chan suspected her. The hero said that of course it is. He said that everyone in Korea knows Maria as a saint, and of course Young understands that she is different from the bad guy who is in charge of their guild. Young said that she was still part of the Glory Guild. He said he might be wrong about her. Yunkuk said that he would never know if she really tried to prevent that massacre. He said it was possible, but he wasn't going to trust anyone in her rotten guild. Then the hero asked her to look at that child. Young said that this child comes to this park every day with his mother, who sits on a bench and watches him play. She loves her child and wants to remember every moment next to him, so she always goes with the camera. Yunkuk said he thought it wasn't too hard to guess what she was thinking. The warm smile on her face speaks volumes. Young said he was curious about what Maria was seeing. She was talking about compensation. So Yunkuk asked her how she would compensate that child for his dead mother, whether she would give him money or a house or a comfortable future. Yunkuk said that if she was truly sorry, then the reason for her coming here shouldn't be related to him. Then, we are suddenly transported to the Purification Clan building, and we see Chowen getting mad at the people from the Glory Guild. He wondered if they were going to attack Young Hyasung. Xiaowen had read the newspapers that made Jian look bad. Xiaowen exclaimed that the creatures wouldn't last a minute in the dungeons they had cleared. Xiaowen said he wasn't going to take it anymore. He can't leave his benefactor in this mess. He said the reckoning was coming. Then we see Xiaowen sitting in front of the computer and writing comments that mock Gon, while Yung Hyasung praises him instead. He laughed wickedly and thought that he was a terrible and cruel person. He texted Yung Hyasung to tell him not to worry, and the leader promised that he would take care of everything. Yunkuk didn't know what he was talking about after reading Chiawen's message. Then suddenly Maria got up from the bench. Hyasung asked if she was leaving already. She said that was true, because just like Yungi said, her goal was rather selfish. She apologized for wasting Hyasung's time. The hero looked after her. Maria went and put on her cap and glasses again. She was really sorry, but she was thinking about how she couldn't apologize. Her incompetence destroyed this beautiful place. She began to hear screams begging for rescue. She realized that there was no forgiveness for her. We see a flashback in which someone screams and asks Maria to save the man. Hands reach out to her and ask her to save them, because only she can save them. The voice then asks Maria why she didn't save the man. A voice shouts at Mary and says that she is a saint, she had to save everyone. The voice screams that she is a murderer and a bloodthirsty creature. This someone chases Maria away and shouts at her to never come back. Maria thinks that because of her insolvency, a whole river has been spilled. However, then a voice speaks, which convinces Maria that it is not her fault. 
The voice says that not everything in this world is controllable. It's impossible to save everyone. However, Maria denies this. Voices continue to call out to Marius for help. She thinks of herself as a healer who can't even feel pain. A voice shouts at her and says it's Maria's fault, she killed them. Maria admits that this is true and that she killed them. She wonders just how useless she is. She thinks she deserves to die. But then Yung Hyasun grabs her arm. She turned around and was surprised. He didn't understand her reaction. Jiangguk said there was blood on her hands. Then he looked at her hand, but it was clean. The hero said that he definitely saw blood. Maria asked Yung Hyasun to let go of her and held her hand to herself. She realized that she had made a mistake because the director asked not to show anyone that side. Jungkook wondered if he was imagining it. Jungkook said that he can still see everything. He said that he sees the true nature of Mary hidden under the guise of a saint. Maria left that evening. Jungkook doesn't know what's wrong, but she looked extremely pale. She also left as if she were fleeing from an old enemy in fear. Jungkook wondered what had happened. Jung was sitting on the bench with that boy, and when the boy asked with a questioning mumble, Jung asked him to take a bath. Jungkook asked if it tasted good and warned the boy to drink carefully, or he would get sick. The boy called Yun Hyasung his brother. The boy thanked him for coming to play with him. Yunkuk said that there was nothing to thank him for since he was just bored to drop in here. However, the boy asked him not to fool around. But Yung advised the boy to keep quiet as long as he was kind. The boy happened to ask if that lady was a Saint Mary. He asked if they were dating. The boy said Chan was hopeless. He asked her why she left. Yunkuk said that he might have offended her in some way, but he didn't know what. The boy said that in this case, everything is clear because it's Yung Hyasung's style. Then they played with the sand for a while longer. After that, we will be transferred to the Glory Guild. There was a meeting of some sort. The man was speaking and moved on to the last but no less important point of their meeting. He said that the news was likely to cause quite a stir, which is why he wants to show the members of the meeting what they are about to see. He presented them with something that would elevate their guild to unattainable heights. The man introduced a poison poppy. Everyone suddenly jumped up and shouted that it was illegal. The scientist asked them to calm down and said that he was well aware of what kind of drug it was. The man that asked did the scholar decide to learn it here anyway. The scientist put down the documents. He said that's exactly what it is. He asked them if they thought they could do anything against him. The man shouted that the scientist was completely out of his mind. He shouted that the poison poppy wasn't something they could hush up. Then suddenly a cigarette flew by. She was flying incredibly fast, but she still flew past that man. Then the person who threw it exhaled. It was the girl who was sitting on the edge. She said, don't they know you can't raise your voice during a meeting? She decided to light another cigarette and called them presumptuous. The man was shocked and tried to say something in a trembling voice. Don then said that everything was fine and ordered the man to sit down. He said that he understands that he is worried, but still it is necessary to follow the rules. Then he let the doctor continue. The doctor said he'd get straight to the point. The doctor said that the most important thing is how they can use this drug for their own purposes. He wondered if the poison poppy might have more advantages than disadvantages. Then, with a crazy smile, he said that of course this could happen, moreover, he was sure of it. The man asked if there was any proof of his theory. The doctor said about strengthening healing abilities. According to him, this is a hidden effect of the poison poppy. He also said that given that good healers are worth their weight in gold, the doctor thinks they can slightly ignore the safety rules. The woman then asked if they would use it on Maria. Don said that of course they wouldn't, since Maria is the very personification of their guild. He said drugging her was too risky. The woman then asked on whom he was going to conduct experiments. Then someone said there was a great candidate for the role. The woman opposite said that she thought Yu Jiwen would happily agree to all of their terms. She immediately came up with a plan. She planned to tell the association's vice president that they wanted to strengthen his son's skills. As a PR effort, they will spread the news that they will start clearing the poison dungeons together with the association. This woman is Yoon Jisoon, third place in the Glory Guild. Then, the members of the meeting started discussing whether Jiwon would be useful to them. They talked about how Jiwon might be useless, but he was still the son of the vice president of the Hunter Association. They said it was an extremely risky choice. After all, the most important thing now is to restore order within the guild itself and not engage in illegal adventures. Then someone objected and said that they would have to scale anyway, so why not start now? Someone shouted that the poison poppy is too dangerous and they don't know all the consequences of this decision. The doctor looked at it from the side and was disappointed, as he thought, they would not see all the prospects. But the doctor didn't care about them, because the head had already felt the blood. Gon asked for silence and ordered all the poison dungeons in Korea to be checked immediately. He said that if another guild or clan had already bought a certain dungeon, it was better to just take it away. Gon said they should do it without Maria getting wind of anything. He asked if there were any objections, but no one said anything. Everyone just stared at the head in silence. 
Then we flash back to Chiawen and see that he is surprised by something. He can't understand what happened, but Chiawen was clearly worried. Yunkuk, who was lying a few meters away from him, asked if something was wrong. Chiawen said that the permits for all the poison dungeons they had were revoked. Yunkuk was also surprised and couldn't believe it, because no one needs poison dungeons. Chiawen said that it looks like those people from the Glory Guild did their best again. He wondered what they would do now. He asked if they would take care of the ones outside the city. Yunkuk wondered what the Glory Guild was up to again. He asked Chiawen to slow down, because he was going to make a couple of calls and then maybe something would come out. Chiawen asked in surprise if Yung Hyasung really had any connections in the association. Yunkuk said something like that and asked the clan head not to worry. Yunkuk dialed a number and called someone. Chiawen froze, waiting. Someone answered and Yung introduced himself. It turned out to be the former judge who asked if something had happened to Yung Hyasung. Then we see that Yung has already told Judge Hyaku everything. The hero told him that in all the dungeons that he was going to go to, they suddenly issued a ban. Yunkuk said there was definitely something wrong here. Yunkuk said that it was said that they are now under the control of the county, which further hints at the Glory Guild's involvement. Hyaku said he understood him. At the same time, he was looking at his notebook, which was written about Yung Hyasung, Gugan, and the Glory Guild. Hyaku said that he would look into the matter immediately. Yunkuk asked how long it would take. Hyaku said that once he took on the case, it would be resolved quickly. He said there was nothing complicated about it. Yunkuk happily said that then he would consider it done. Xiaowen was surprised and asked who Yung was talking to. The hero said that it was just a familiar person with a very dark aura. Xiaowen asked if Yung was confident that this acquaintance would be able to deal with this. After all, this is the Glory Guild itself and Xiaowen said it wouldn't be so easy. He said that if an acquaintance couldn't, they would just go to the outskirts of the city. Xiaowen said that if they go there, he knows a great restaurant that he once went to with his wife. Then we see that a minute passed and suddenly Xiaowen exclaimed in surprise. Yunkuk asked if something was wrong. Chiawen said that all the entry bans have been approved again. Yunkuk was surprised, he said that Hyaku really did solve everything in one fell swoop, even faster than the hero thought. Yunkuk said they were better off, and then left. Chiawen said that if that was the case, he would start packing quickly. Yunkuk asked if he needed any help. However, Chiawen replied that Yung can rest, because the clan head will collect everything himself. After a while, we see Yung lying on the couch alone in the room. He didn't sleep, but just stared at nothing and thought about something. He thought it was a good idea to have connections. Then we transfer. We can see that there is a bill going on. Jiho and Yung are trading. Yunkuk does nothing but dodge the teacher's punches. Jiho attacked Yung Hyasung. The hero saw that the teacher was making a swing. He decided that it seemed like a simple backhand. Something was bothering Nome, and Yunkuk realized where Jiho was really aiming at. He caught the teacher's fist. Jiho landed 112 punches and Yung blocked them all. However, Jiho was sure that it wasn't enough. The teacher was sure that this wasn't Young Hyasung's limit. The hero continued to dodge the attacks. Jiho was throwing a huge amount of punches. However, Yunkuk still retreated afterward, jumping back. He was very tired and trying to catch his breath. Jiho asked Young about what he was doing. The teacher said that Young Hyasung's reaction time was too slow. Jiho asked if Young wasn't going to attack again. However, the hero was tired and tried to catch his breath. Then, he used his hand to wipe away the sweat that was dripping from his chin. Yunkuk said that he could and that he still had some strength left. Jiho told Yung to get into position in that case. Yunkuk also took up a fighting stance. Jiho said he would start from the beginning. Then, they simultaneously made a dash. They struck and clashed with their fists. Jiho said that he hoped that at least one punch would hit Yung Hyasung's smug face today. And so they began to fight. Then we see that a gray-haired man came in and asked if they really still have training here. He said they had a deal coming up, and they were at it again. He said that his time was very expensive. He said there's an extra charge for every minute that Yung is late. Then he wondered when Yunkuk had become so strong. Yung and Jiho continued to fight. Jiho said that Yung made the punch too slow and ordered him to do it again. The teacher said that Yung can use his speed much better. Yunkuk grinned, determined to do something serious. Jiho said that his body is more exhausted than Yung Hyasung's. The teacher said that if Yunkuk had seen through his movements, he would have defeated the teacher long ago. Yunkuk exclaimed that he would definitely strike today. Jiho said it would be fine, but only when Yunkuk could find him. Jiho created many illusions. Yung shouted that it wouldn't be difficult for him. He shouted that he was already used to it. Yunkuk chose the real Jiho and was about to hit him. There was an explosion. Dust obscured my view, so I couldn't see anything. The red-haired girl was excited, wondering what had happened there and who had won. The man said they had a draw. Yunkuk thought that considering that the words about a draw were Yacha's words, it should be considered a compliment. A total of 178 strokes. None of them hit Yung Hyasung. He put a lot of effort into training. Yung, who identified himself in the third person, said that he was surprisingly hopeless. 
However, Jio said it was amazing. Youngkook was surprised and asked what Jio had just said. The teacher replied that he had said exactly what he had said. Jiho said that he didn't have anything else to teach Young Hyasung. Jiho congratulated him and said that Youngkook had mastered the instant jump. Youngkook asked if Jiho was just tired of teaching him. However, Jiho denied this and said that Young will continue to study independently from now on. Jiho doesn't see the point of teaching Young Hyasung anymore. He said that he would only hinder Young Hyasung's growth. Jiho held his hands that were shaking behind his back and thought about how Young Hyasung's talent was terrifying. Jiho was thinking that just like Young, he has a rare talent, but Hyasung's talent is many times greater than Jiho's. The teacher said that Young did a great job. He said that his role as Young Hyasung's teacher was coming to an end. As he left, Jiho hoped that Young Kuk would keep his eyes peeled as he ran into a lot of people, with those who want to get it, and with those who will be eaten by envy. Different people will enter Young Hyasung's life and harass him. Then Jiho thought about something else, and a fleeting smile appeared on his face. He hoped that Young Kuk would never forget about the people around him. Jiho knew it was time to go back to where they came from. Even if it wasn't for long, it was an honor for Jiho to be Young Hyasung's teacher. Jiho kept walking away. His head was pointed down, and he was puzzled about something. He walked through this hall, which was almost ruined, but still filled with memories. His steps were getting slower. Suddenly, he heard a fist strike his palm. Youngkook got down on one knee and thanked the teacher for everything. Jiho was pleasantly surprised. Young called Jiho a master. Jiho stood with his back to Youngkook for a moment. Then he turned to him and asked him to get up. Jiho scolded Young Hyasung for not calling anyone master. Jiho said that he was only playing the role of a teacher. However, Youngkook continued to show his respect. This confused Jiho a little, but then he said with a smirk that Youngkook was stubborn to the end. Jiho also greeted Young Hyasung and said it was a great time. He called Hyasung a disciple and wished him luck in the war. Then we are transported somewhere, apparently to the ward. The doctor held the flask in his hands and said that the flask contains about 7 ml per injection. One of the doctors told him to be careful, because he could break it if he was careless. Another doctor said that there was no change in the amount of ether. The one who was lying on the bed felt pain. The doctors said that there is nothing wrong, everyone makes mistakes and you just need to take responsibility for them. The guy wondered what he was doing here. Then he remembered, about some kind of experiment. The doctor was overjoyed to receive the new material. He wondered what the point was. Suddenly that doctor asked him if he was awake yet. The doctor said the drug was about to wear off. He said he was sorry to have to end this. Then he tore off the blindfold and told the doctors that they were done. He instructed them to also pull out these pipes that were attached to this guy. The doctor shouted for everyone to come over and smile. They applauded their young master for his steadfastness. The doctors were standing behind him, smiling fake smiles. They asked him how he was feeling. They asked him if he felt a huge surge of energy. The doctor said that he hoped that this guy would now be satisfied with getting such power. He looked down and wondered if they were sticking things in him. The doctor said that just a little more time, and this man will easily get in a rank. He said he'd had enough of experimenting, and he knew it was crazy. The guy said that he didn't even fully understand what kind of experiments they were doing on him. He feels only fear. He said he didn't want to take part in it anymore. However, the doctor told the young master that he needed to rest now. The doctor said that the guy is not in the best condition right now. So the doctor suggested we continue tomorrow. However, the guy asked him to stop joking. He said they were doing it out of greed. The boy had heard it from his father. He said that the doctor would have been an outstanding scientist, but always remained in second place. The guy said that the doctor's ingenuity was beyond praise, but he was thrown out of the association due to ethical issues. The doctor even tried to kill one doctor. The guy said that none of them is destined to take the place of the winner. However, he doesn't want to be a pawn of their perverted greed. The assistant shouted at G1 not to dare, saying something like that. However, the doctor kept the assistant quiet. The doctor hit the assistant in the neck because he annoyed him. He asked what Mr. G1 wanted then. The doctor asked if G1 would like to get rid of Young Hyasung. He asked why G1 says he wants to finish the experiment. The doctor asked G1 if it was all a lie. G1 screamed that the doctor was crazy. G1 was shocked by what the doctor had just done to a human. However, the doctor shut G1 up. He said he asked G1 a question. The doctor once again asked what G1 wanted. The doctor asked G1 to think about why the man had died. The doctor wondered if it was because he was getting on his nerves. However, the doctor himself denied this. He said the man was in his grave now because he was weaker than the doctor, that's all. The doctor said weaklings don't survive. According to him, this is how the world works. That's why he thinks about it from time to time. The doctor approached Ji Wen and asked him how strongly he felt about what he wanted. The doctor said he really wanted to kill him. Then he said that he just hated that guy. That hatred, he said, was enough to finish him off. No matter how hard the doctor tried, he always stayed in his shadow. 
The doctor tried to convince himself that he was a genius, but he was just unlucky. But then, according to the doctor, a realization came to him. The realization that he had to kill him. The doctor asked if it wasn't funny. An incredible talent erased from this world due to some kind of murder threat. Then the doctor started asking questions about where he was now and if he was still alive. He answered the questions himself, saying that no one knows about it. But what is certain is that the doctor is here. He went crazy and started screaming hysterically that no one even knew where the guy was right now. The doctor said that he is the only one who will go down in history as the best scientist. The doctor said that was the reality. It was creepy because there was a dead body lying in a pool of blood behind him. The doctor said that countless geniuses were born and passed away. The doctor asked how many of them people knew. According to him, even the best engineers, hunters and truths of this world remain nothing more than a memory. Then the doctor started talking about Jung, about the cheers directed at him. His face, his voice, his grin. ji Won was angry listening to this. The doctor asked why it wasn't all ji Won's. Then he started to tell ji Won not to be fooled by Jung Hyasung's grin because he was just making fun of him. Sneers at ji Won's helplessness. He boasts of his own talent. This man was a hero, but he was the one the doctor had to kill. The doctor asked if ji Won had an enemy, the villain who stole ji Won's position, fame, and everything else. He said he could help restore justice, show him the reality, and then, according to the doctor, ji Won will take Young Hyasung's place. Then we flash forward and see that the heroes have gathered in the dungeon to defeat monsters. But suddenly they both stopped being happy and just stared at B in silence. Xiao Wen asked her who she was. She said hello and called Xiao Wen Harry. B introduced herself and said that she was Young Hyasung's guardian. She Alwen wondered if she was the guardian of Hunter Young Hyasung. The hero was uncomfortable and looked at Chiawen with hostility. Then, suddenly, Chiawen bowed and greeted Lady B. He introduced himself and said it was an honor to meet her. However, Jung asked Chulwen to stop and come over. Yunkuk asked why she was following him again. He said he hoped it was a good reason this time. Then he asked if B was really a stalker again. B was shy and embarrassed, and she hesitantly said that it was possible. Yunkuk looked at her mercilessly, and a second later, they started yelling at each other. B shouted that she was already an adult, so she did what she wanted. Yunkuk was yelling at her to get the hell out of here, because his privacy was more important to him. Chiawen was confused as he watched from the sidelines. He could see that Bai Su was trying her best to hit Hunter Young Hyasung, but he avoided every hit. This was something new for Chiawen, seeing Young Hyasung like this for the first time. Xi Alwen excused himself and asked why they were here today. Yunkuk was surprised, he thought that the purpose of today's meeting was obvious to Xi Alwen. He said it was to clear out the dungeon, of course. Yunkuk said it was time to go into battle. However, Xi Alwen was confused and said that there was no dungeon here. Shulwen told Yung Hyasung that he knew Yung was unusual, but he didn't think it would be so bad. Yung asked Xiao Wen to stop and not rush things. Yunkuk said it was already 37 minutes. Yung said that if the prediction is correct, he will appear now. Suddenly, something really appeared. A dark purple portal appeared in the air. Yunkuk said this is it. Yung and B were standing in front of the portal, and Xiao Wen was standing with his back to it. And so the portal finally opened. Xiao Wen turned around and looked at the portal, he couldn't understand what it was and was a little surprised. B was confused because she didn't believe Young was telling the truth. She wondered what they should do now. Yunkuk said that the big boss wasn't lying because it did appear. Yunkuk said he didn't even know what to look for because it was unbelievable. The big boss is the head of the black market. She all went asked if Hyasung knew a fortune teller. However, Yunkuk said that this was not the case because he was just helped by a very evil old man. The one who predicted the appearance of the dungeon is Du and Su, the representative of the company that wanted to make a deal with them. B said that there are many points in the contract, but the most important one concerns the poison dungeons. They offered to predict where these dungeons will appear, and the heroes came here to check it out. She all and wondered if that was possible. Jung said that the phenomenon is certainly rare. Yunkuk said he'd go there alone first. Yunkuk said that the most important thing would be tomorrow, so he asked his teammates to take off their gear and rest. She all and said he understood, and then asked why tomorrow. Yunkuk turned around and smiled. He said that the dungeon will rise to the seventh rank. The fortune teller said that this dungeon would be of this level. Then we are transported somewhere again. We see a woman asking Supervisor H. Wang to repeat it again, because she seems to have heard it wrong. H. Wang apologized. She said enough apologies. She said she was tired of them. She said it was better if he repeated what he had said before clearly again. H. Wang became nervous. He said that some seedy clan had taken the rights to the dungeon from them. She was a little surprised by this, but she was completely calm. She was very angry and said that she understood him. Suddenly, H. Wang shouted that he would take the driver's license back. He said it was all because the association suddenly changed its mind. 
However, the woman interrupted him. She asked him if he was aware that this project had failed from the very beginning. She said it was ridiculous to lose in such a situation. She said that he was going to take back what was taken from them, so she asked if he would restore their image back. She asked him if he was completely ashamed. She said that the purification clan must be making fun of them. H. Wang was shaking with fear. He said that if she gave him another chance, he could do it. He was begging her for mercy. She said the answer was wrong. The woman said that she did not want to hear pleas for mercy, but an analysis of the reason for the loss and suggestions for solving the problem. She instructed him to think things over for a bit. She did something to him. It was as if H. Wang had turned into a shadow, and he was screaming in pain. Then, all of a sudden, it dissipated and H. Wang lost a lot of weight. She told him not to worry because she made sure he didn't die. H. Wang was very exhausted. She read the documents and wondered if the clans had gotten too bold lately. She said it meant they decided to show their courage. The woman wondered if there were really only two people in that clan, then she wondered how they even existed. She said it wasn't something to say about the ones who took the dungeon from them. She said that the sweep clan is quite interesting. Then we are transported to the heroes. Yunkuk asked his group if anyone had forgotten anything. He reminded Bai Su to remember to drink the antidote. Yunkuk said that the 7th rank dungeon is pretty full of poison. According to him, it would be weird if B passed out in the middle of a fight. Chiaolin said he was ready. Yung then asked Bai Su, she was also ready. And so the heroes were going to go beat the monsters. Then we are transported to the 7th level dungeon. Vibrations. A smoky smell. Thick poison all around. Breath. Exhale. There were a lot of monsters around the heroes, but Yunkuk only said with a smile on his face that it was refreshing. Then, that spear-wielding monster screamed. The creature threw the spear at Hyacin with great force. When the spear flew, there was an explosion and dust rose. But a moment later, Yunkuk was behind the monster. Yunkuk cut it in half with his knife. After that, Hyacin's black ether increased. Chongyi didn't know that this knife could absorb even rank 7 poison. Yunkuk knew that this was a rank 7 dungeon after all, and the strength of the monsters was different. The hero understood that there were a lot of them, if they surrounded him, it would not be sweet. However, Yunkuk is glad that they still can't match his speed. He thought it was worth it. Then we see the battle begin. Xiaowen and B watched from the hill. Xiaowen said it was unbelievable. Speed is fine, but Yunkuk fights so bravely based on the healer's skills alone. Xiaowen said he had never seen anything like this before. Xiaowen said that Yung Tak was fighting for him, and there was nothing he could do to help. Xiaowen called himself poor and blamed himself. B asked if Xiaowen was really that vulnerable. She asked him if his own impotence hurt. Xiaowen said that in any case, Yung said that he would do everything himself. B asked if Xiaowen wanted to go get in the way. She said that if you couldn't help, you'd better stay away. She said there was nothing they could do. So now we can only wait. Yungkook, meanwhile, used move, change state. He transformed his weapon into a huge sword. The monsters seemed to get scared and started discussing something in their own language. Yungkook jumped in front of the two monsters. He took aim. Then he swung his sword and killed them both in one blow. Then Yungkook noticed that another monster was aiming at him. At this point, he used decay. His weapon disintegrated into slabs. He made a platform out of it. Yungkook was able to dodge the spear with it. Yungkook analyzed and realized that these monsters are strong, but they don't know how to work in a team. Yungkook knew that if he fought to avoid their blows, he could win without breaking a sweat. Yung said that he still has some ether. Then, sitting on the spear, he prepared to charge. Yungkook wondered if he should try again, and then he ran down the spear towards the monster with great speed. The monster noticed that Chan was very close. Then Yung used a state change. He made comfortable steps for himself. After climbing them a bit, he made a huge sword again. Yungkook swung that sword. He was holding onto the sword with both hands. Then, as he spread his arms out to the sides, both hands holding a sword, Yungkook used dual mode. In his opinion, this is the perfect opportunity. The monsters stood there in disbelief. Then, one of them shouted furiously, and they all charged. Yungkook thought this was the perfect chance to kill all these monsters. Suddenly, a monster appeared behind Yung Hyasung. He hit Jian, and then he said something. The monsters didn't see Hyasung. The hero, in turn, used the return of the previous state. He landed somewhere between the trees. Chan was unharmed. He said it wasn't an illusion this time. Suddenly, there was a flash behind the monsters. Suddenly, their heads were chopped off and all the monsters started to drop dead. Then, after a while, we see Yung walking around the monster corpses. He felt something. Yungkook thought that what Yaksha said was true. Yaksha said that if there was a golden flower nearby, Chan would instinctively be able to sense it. However, Yungkook knew that it was impossible to find him on such a mountain, but his premonition tells him the exact location. Then Yungkook suddenly stopped and said that it was indeed a legendary flower. After all, its beauty is fascinating. Yungkook wondered why the flower wasn't golden in color. 
you can't even see the boss. Yongduk said that the boss is supposed to protect the flower. Then, suddenly, there was a commotion. Yungkuk thought it was an earthquake, then wondered if it was a second wave. Yungkuk realized that wasn't true, because it felt so different. Hyasung had the feeling that something incredibly huge was coming. He said that at least those monsters were also big. Then, he felt something huge approaching from behind. It hit the ground, but Yungkuk managed to get away from it. He jumped into the air and tried to see from above. From there, you could see that it was a huge rock. Yungkuk got nervous and said that it must be a joke the boss showed up, so much so that the whole earth trembled around. It was a huge stone golem that glowed blue, and there was a core in the center of its chest. It was the monster giant treasure. It is a venomous monster with a difficulty level of 8 stars. Yunkuk chuckled and said mountain after mountain. Yunkuk said that this monster doesn't look ordinary. It then asked V1 to show the monster's information. The assistant said that the giant treasure has the unwavering skill, so it can block physical attacks. Yunkuk was surprised and then asked if it was even possible for the attacks to fail. The assistant said it was because the boss body was made of franium. Jung asked about what franium was. The assistant said that this is a deformed matter created from the most toxic materials. To this day, franium is known as the most durable material. It cannot be deformed by ordinary physical force. However, Jungkook can melt it down by using his skills. Jung thought about it and said that it's lucky that the assistant says that Jung can win. The hero said that he had about half of the broadcast left. If he wasn't mistaken, Jung wanted to say something, but the boss started attacking. The attack had almost reached Young Hai Sung Woo, and he didn't seem to have time to dodge. Then the attack did arrive. Jiawen was very excited and called out to Mr. Hunter. However, no one responded from under the rocks. Suddenly, a light appeared from under them. And then Chong came out. He said the monster was terribly strong. Yunkuk really thought he was going to die. Yunkuk realized that the monster had attacked him, blowing up its own body. Yung said that the battle will be difficult and it seems that fighting from a distance is not a good idea. Hyasung then received a notification that the boss also had a technique where he used his own body. However, Yunkuk interrupted and said that was enough. Chan picked up the sword. He held two swords and said that the hit and run strategy had never failed before. Yunkuk said that no matter what rank of monster, even he couldn't survive the constant barrage of Hyasung's sword attacks. As Chiawen watched, he became more and more surprised. It was something incredible for Chiawen, Hyasung's confidence. Yunkuk then used a poison ball. The hero hit them on the monster. Chiawen was shocked that Yung didn't hesitate to charge into the fight. He was thinking that even though he was the head of a small clan, he was still a veteran. Chiawen knew that Yung was stronger than normal hunters as soon as he saw him. But this wasn't what Chiawen expected. He wondered if if he was there, he would be able to fight as well. B noticed that Chiawen was still blaming himself. We are transported back to the battle and see that the monster hit the ground. However, Yunkuk was able to dodge. Yunkuk swung his sword. The boss looked up and saw Yung flying at him, surprised. Yunkuk then shouted for the boss to taste his sword. Yunkuk then hit the monster. However, the boss wasn't killed, he did a roundhouse kick and drove Hyasung away. The hero was once again standing in a snow-covered forest. Then Chan said that the franium was very strong. Yunkuk tried everything while he was giving the monster blows, but his regeneration speed is too fast. Chan realized that in order to win, he had to destroy the franium and hit the core. But while Chan will change modes, the monster will already have time to recover. Yunkuk knew that it would be more convenient if someone else destroyed the franium, but Yunkuk decided that he couldn't ask those two people because he had to do it alone. There was also a much bigger problem. Yunkuk said he wasn't expecting this. He said his sword couldn't hold up. There was indeed a crack on the sword. Then we are transported back in time. The host announces this year's rising star. He said that this is a hunter who was awarded the B rank due to the low amount of ether. However, his abilities surpass rank of the host then called out Chiawen's name. At first, everything went great for Chiawen. We see a man yelling that a strong monster is approaching Chiawen. Another man shouts that Chiawen is already fighting a whole group. Then, Chiawen himself said that everything was fine. There were dead monsters scattered around him. Chiawen said that his teammates can safely leave strong opponents to him. For the head of the Purification Clan, at first, everything was just gorgeous. Chiawen wasn't an S-rank hunter, but everyone recognized him, and the popularity did not pass him by. Chiawen definitely had nothing to complain about in his life, especially since he had a wife that he valued more than anything else in the world. When Chiawen got home, she asked him about his day. It was the 14th of May. Chiawen said that he was being called on an urgent matter. He said that he would have to go to the city. He apologized to his wife and said that this day should be dedicated only to her. She said it was fine because he was going to save people. She told him to come and she would wait for him. It was their anniversary. Chiawen hugged her and told her that he would try to get back as soon as possible. But then something tragic happened. 
From that day on, Chiao and he started looking for the legendary flower. We snap back to reality and see Yung fighting. He hit the golem again. A hole appeared in it. Yungkook was glad that the shield was destroyed. Then Yung called out a projectile. He attacked the monster with this. Yungkook was happy and said that he had no doubt that everything went smoothly this time. But the protective layer has already recovered. Yungkook said it was his own fault for being so optimistic. The hero knew that he had two more attempts left. Not so much, so you should be more careful. Suddenly, a monster attacked him. Yungkook wasn't expecting this, so he had to defend himself with Exa. The monster attacked Yung Hyasung. However, the hero had enough strength to hold back the pressure. The monster was faster than Yungkook thought. The hero was angry that this happened at a time when every attack counted. Now Yung Hyasung has one try. He needs to find a way to turn the situation around. He wondered if there was anything he could do at the moment. After all, Hyasung's airtime is running out. And Exa can only activate the White Dream once. Yungkook wondered how he could get through the monster's protective layer. He knew better than to overdo it, or he would kill him. Then, he finally thought about how first he needed to figure out if he could even handle the monster alone. Yungkook was thinking about how he couldn't spend the last attack as an auxiliary. He was thinking of something to overcome, but suddenly Chiaowen interrupted him. Yungkook turned around and saw that Chiaowen was holding a tree on top of him. Yungkook was thinking that he was too close to the enemy. The hero couldn't understand what Chiaowen was trying to do, but Jian thought he should tell the head to get out of there. Suddenly, Chiaowen threw a tree at the monster with great force. Yungkook was shocked that Chiaowen threw the tree. Yungkook wondered if this tree could even touch the monster, or if Chiaowen is trying to change the direction of his hand, Yungkook decided it was pointless. Then Yungkook started to understand what was going on. Chiaowen told Yungkook to be patient even if it hurt. He said it was better than getting hit by the boss. Yungkook finally realized that Chiaowen's target was him, not the boss. The tree hit Yung Hyasung. The hero realized that Chiaowen wasn't trying to do anything to the monster, since it's easier to move Hyasung than it is to move such a huge thing. Thanks to this, the monster's shot missed Hyasung. Now the hero realized that the problem was that he was trying to deal with the monster alone. Yung called out to the head, he apologized and said that he thought he could handle the monster on his own, but Yung was wrong and admitted it. Yung called out that he needed Chiaowen's help. The head was determined. He said he was waiting for Yungkook to say that. By adding Chiaowen to the plan, Jian got a lot of choices. However, in such an urgent situation, he needs to dismiss all options that are now less effective. Yungkook decided that the only thing left to do was pass the Shard of Axa to Chiaowen. For him, taking damage is inevitable. Although it's a blade fragment, it's still imbued with dark ether. Chiaowen, holding this shard, felt like he was frying like a child. Xiaowen wondered if Yun was using this weapon all the time. Xiaowen decided that he could take it, because he could finally help. Yun yelled at Chua to be careful, because the boss was attacking him. Xiaowen was shocked that the blast beam was even in his leg, not just his arm. Then the monster fired. Xiaowen thought that they were clearly missing some detail. The blast beam was very strong, and it dug a large trench in the ground. Yunkuk immediately ran in that direction. He ran to the head, and Xiaowen was lying on the ground. Yungkook asked if the head was okay and if he could get up. Yungkook asked if Chiaowen was okay. The head replied that everything was fine. Oddly, it's completely intact. Chiaowen felt his whole body lighten up. B then called out to both of them from a distance. She asked them if they were completely brainwashed in battle, even though they were S-ranked. She asked what would have happened if they had died, what would have happened to the flower. She told Chiaowen that he should know how to control himself since he was already an adult. Mostly sophisticated stealth techniques are used by high-class aspers. However, it is of little use in the dungeons, so only a few resort to it, especially spies. But suddenly Chan realized something. This technique helps to come out victorious in a fight where you are highly likely to lose. Makes the weak stronger. This multiplies the ether many times and strengthens the brain. The power that turns everything in your direction. B shouted at them to take care of themselves a little during the fight. Yunkuk realized that it was all about buffs. He finally found a clue. Then B suddenly stopped talking, something alerted her. She was shocked by what kind of rainbow it was. She said she didn't like the squalor. Yungkook wondered if she had used her power without even noticing it. Yungkook thought about how this girl never ceases to amaze him. She Alwyn then addressed the hero. Yungkook remembered that the fight wasn't over yet. The monster was still standing over them. She Alwyn started thinking about the time difference created by swinging a weapon. He understood that the essence of teamwork is to make up for the time spent. Chi Alwyn realized that Yung Hyasung's movements were beyond his imagination. Yung said he would clear a path for them, and told Chi Alwyn to keep up. Chi Alwyn said it was a piece of cake. He thought he just needed to keep up with Hyasung. Then, suddenly, the monster bent down a little. After that, the monster screamed and a lot of rocks flew out of it. They were flying in different directions, and they fell to the ground, thereby interfering with the heroes. However, Chi Alwyn and Yung still ran towards the golem. 
they ran around the rocks that fell in their path. The golem had already started charging the blast beam on its arm. He shot this beam at the heroes. Jung yelled at Xiaowen to keep running and not stop. Then there was an explosion. The sky turned red. The heroes were shocked. After that, they were safe and sound. Xiaowen exclaimed that this buff has an incredible effect. He said that he never thought that an ability that he had only heard of would be so powerful. Yunkuk said that as he said before, the effect won't last long. Baisu has only recently woken up, so the heroes can't waste any time in vain. Yunkuk knew that this power could be compared to a candle. They don't know when exactly it will go out. Yunkuk thought back to the time he summoned the Red Serpent. His guesses are confirmed by the fact that Baisu's condition has noticeably worsened. Yunkuk realized that it must be because she didn't know how to control her powers. He said he could use a couple of new abilities right now. He said that we need to increase the speed even more. Yunkuk said that a poison step should be enough. Then more rocks were thrown at them. Xiaowen was excited, thinking that they were almost there, but the boulders were still flying. The boss only got madder. Xiaowen was already thinking about the bad things that would happen if things continued at this rate. But then he pulled himself together and exclaimed that nothing was known yet. Xiaowen shouted that he would try to clear a path. Boulders began to fall right in front of the heroes. However, a moment later, all of them were destroyed before they could land. Yunkuk saw it, but didn't understand what had happened. He wondered if all the boulders had evaporated at once. Yunkuk wondered if Chiawen had always been this strong. He said it was amazing and this guy definitely deserves respect. Hyasung had a strange feeling, knowing that Chiawen was trying to do everything to clear the way for them, so that Chiawen can do what he has to do. Yunkuk is risking himself for him. Xiaowen has no choice but to do so. He decided that he would put all his ether into this blade to break the protective barrier. And so, Xiaowen swung at the golem. He struck out with the sword shard, putting all of his ether into it. Thanks to this, he was able to break through the protective layer. As soon as the layer was breached, Yunkuk immediately attacked the monster. Xiaowen said it was a great job. After a while, we see Xiaowen saying that he never thought he would be able to pass the 7th rank dungeon. He said that even though he hadn't really done anything, it still felt good. Meanwhile, the exhausted bee lay unconscious, very exhausted from using that technique. Jung said that Chulwin's words were completely wrong. He said that Chiawen risked his life, so he asked him not to say that he didn't do anything. Then, Chiawen laughed and said that the boss was really intimidating. However, Jung said that wasn't what he meant. The hero said that most people die by touching this blade. He said they were just burning up. Now Chiawen understood why it hurt so much. Chiawen asked if Jung had decided to give the blade to him. Jung said that he just believed in Xiaowen, even though it would have been more dangerous without Bai Su's ability. He said they were at least done with the dungeon. Yunkuk asked what Xiaowen was talking about, since they hadn't killed the boss yet. Xiaowen laughed and said it wasn't a funny joke. But then he asked if Jung was serious. The hero replied that he was 100% sure. Yunkuk said that the one they killed was the eighth difficulty. And since they were the first to discover it, Jung suggested a feast. Yunkuk bit his finger until it bled. He spilled one drop on the boss. The boss started to change color, it started to turn purple. Jiangguk said that now the boss is dead. Jiawen was shocked and said that a boss comparable to an unshakable fortress had died from a single drop of blood. Jiawen is very grateful to Hyasung. To Jiawen, he's like a savior who changed his life. Jiangguk said it was time to get out of here because we can't let the golden sunflower wither. Then he thought about how even though he was grateful, sometimes Jian scared him a lot. Then we transfer. It's time to stop. Zhu sang -ah came to this decision after five years of thinking. We don't know the reason. Xiaowen thought it was an irresponsible thing to say, especially when you heard it from the doctors who were your last hope. It was all very clear to Xiaowen. The news was full of more dungeon monsters and other disturbances. After their world changed dramatically, doctors were unable to explain many things. This also happened to Zhu. She was conscious, but she couldn't move. She couldn't move a finger, but she could hear and see everything. She couldn't answer, but she knew. She knew about Chulwin's efforts, the plans to save her, the situation with the clan, and Chulwin's thoughts on her death. He hadn't told her about it, but she knew how much he was suffering. Ju had never seen Chulwin cry so bitterly without saying a word before. She understood that he was in such a state because of her death. Then she began to remember the first time he'd approached her and taken her number. The way they walked together. She remembered him cutting her hair, telling her that he would give her the best haircut in the country. She didn't resent Chulwin. She knew exactly what Chiawen had to go through for her. She thought that if only she could, she would like to relive with Chiawen the days when all the time in the world was in their hands. Then we are transported and see that it is night. The 14th of May. Yunkuk asked if that was all that was required of them. Next to him was Jiho. Yunkuk asked what to do if something went wrong. Jiho asked if that was why Yung had called him here. Then he said we could get started. Zhu felt like it was about to start. 
She thought about how Chiawen couldn't hear her, but she just wanted him to know that she wasn't worthy of him. She silently thanked him for being there for her all this time. Then we see a bright blue flash coming from the ward where Sana is lying. They used the sunflower. After a moment, Chiawen hugged her, he was covered in tears. Zhu still couldn't figure out what had happened. Then the realization came to her that she was alive. Chiawen started apologizing to her and said that he should have come much earlier, but this one took five whole years. Zhu also started crying. She asked him where he had been for so long. Yung and Jiho watched from the sidelines and smiled. Yunkuk said it was good that everything went well. Jiho said that Chiawen was incredibly lucky. He said that people try their best to protect what they have, but often fail in the end. Jiho asked Hyasung to remember that. Meanwhile, Chiawen and Sang Ah couldn't stop enjoying their reunion. Then we are transported to some dark place. There we see a white-haired man standing in front of a huge stone slab. Cha said he was still wondering where B was going. She asked him if he liked guided tours of cemeteries. She said he had a strange hobby. Then he looked at her. She told her father that she was back. He said something about a level 7 dungeon and asked if it was true. B said it was true. She sent him a video so he can see for himself. He said he would forgive her $32 million for this mission. Then, he took out a golden flower petal from his pocket. He said that she was doing a great job all this time, paying off her father's debts. Cha said that now she can live freely. She was surprised. Bai Su asked him again, calling him father. However, he said that he wasn't her father, he was just a Cha. Bai Su asked if this really meant the end. Cha said it was true. Bai Su is a complete copy of him, both in ability and appearance. He took off his ring and gave it to her. He said she had a long history with it. They're both buffers. She asked me what it was. She also asked why he decided to let her go. B also asked if he had found the golden sunflower. Gacha replied by asking if she had already lost her grip. He said that if she needed information, she needed to pay. Although he called this information invaluable. Then we transfer. Yunkuk lay there eating ice cream. He said that before he always ate only Desmond ice cream. But now, having tried more expensive ones, he just can't stop. Then, suddenly, a computer flew up to them. Then a screen appeared. Yunkuk said he was even a little nervous. My sister asked me if it was something dangerous. Yunkuk replied that everything seemed harmless so far. Suddenly, a doctor appeared and shouted Hyasung's name. He said that the camera was set up in a strange way. Yung's sister asked him what kind of man looked like a big dumpling. Yunkuk said it was the one who helped him last time. Yunkuk then continued talking to the doctor. He said he heard the lab had also moved to another location. The doctor asked if Yung was surprised. He said that he kept following the news about Hyasung. According to the doctor, Yung has become much stronger since their last meeting. Hyasung was very pleased, but he said that wasn't the case at all. Yung said it was all thanks to Doc and Kirill. Then Doc said it was just a video recording. He decided to get straight to the point. The doctor said they were in a bit of a hurry to create the exam. Therefore, most likely, it is about to reach its limit. He said he thought Yungkook had a lot of questions for him. So the doctor sent Hyasung his address. He asked Hyasung to stop by when he had time. If Yung wants to go to the next level, of course. Then we are transported somewhere again. A woman stands on the roof of a building and talks about how nice it is to be back in Korea after such a long time. She wondered when was the last time she'd smelled it. The police, meanwhile, were on edge. The prototype escaped, so they decided to block all roads. She said that there was no doubt that the Glory Guild Laboratory was located in this building. She wondered if something was wrong. The woman said that she is now a little not up to their problems. She wondered if Yunkuk could handle it. 